Saturday, uh, I went to see somebody who is finally uh, looking at my ankle uh, to sort out my stress fracture. So I have stress fracture updates for everybody. Mate, you've been saying that you've had a stress fracture on your ankle for approximately six months now. Yes. I said, if you, are you finding anything so far? And he goes, yeah, well, I'll tell you now, you've got one leg longer than the other. Apparently, my right leg is longer than my left leg. You can tell that. How the hell have I got to 31 years old without knowing this? I thought that was quite common. But it's no, quite, it, it's, well, it's quite common that you have different sized feet, but I thought normally your legs were about the same. I've gone, is that a problem? He goes, it's not really a problem, but... So he, he does a bit more work on it, and, and then turns around and says, I'll tell you now as well, it's not a stress fracture. No. I'm like, oh, here we go. It'll be cramp or something rubbish like this. Quite embarrassing. For six months. What it is, is I've got two things. Number one, I've got a bit of my bone sticking out, right? Yeah. Which is what causes the, the pain, mm. right? But apparently that's not too much of a worry. The fact Sounds that I've got, it. I've got, well, you'd, you'd have thought, yeah. you know what I mean? I've got a bone sticking out. You're going to have to have a special shoe. <laughs> well... <laughs> Alan, just say special shoe again. <laughs> Go on. Do you again. know what? That say was that was a favourite thing Go that on. you said all year. Say special <laughs> shoe again. I can't have laughing. Do it again. You have a special, special shoe. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan, um, kind of. You are, <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't have an orthopedic shoe or anything like that. I don't. You know, <laughs> the brown comfort. one. Special shoe. No, I'm not. You know, seriously. <laughs> not like pulled down man or anything. I've got normal size hey. feet. Well, what it is, is I'm meant to wear these... <laughs> I'm meant to wear these special things that go in my shoe to lift my foot up. Insoles, right? aren't they? Yeah. And you're back in the room, Rachel. Come on back now, right? Well, <laughs> oh, they're... they're um, are they orthotics? Is that what they call them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, orthodontics or something. No, that's, that's teeth. teeth. My dad has one. Right, OK. Let's play Car Park Catchphrase. <laughs> Mr Fish is helping out on his mate's farm in Gloucestershire. He's got lots of jobs to do. He's just deciding which order to do them all in, based on what the weather will be like this afternoon. So he's got to milk the cows, and he's got to make some hay, and he's decided that because it's raining at the moment, it's probably better to milk the cows first, would you say, Alad? I would. And then, because it's meant to be sunny this afternoon, that better weather uh, for making hay. Because when it's sunny, you, make the, you don't want to make the hay when, when it's raining. It's silly. No, you want to be making hay... Well, you know, while the sun's out, you know, while the sun's shining. True? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. It's easy. Yeah, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to milk the cows uh, while, it, you know, the rain rains. Uh, he will make hay while the sun shines. And uh, he will then shoot himself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and a pure frustration for the two thickest callers we've had since we've come back off holiday. So he'd make hay. Yeah. When while the sun shines, and he milk cows in the rain. Mm. Milk the cows. In. Oh, well, I have to give it to him because Lisa seems to have died on me. So thick, Carl. Yes. Is it making hay while the sun shining? Do you know what? No, and I'm going to cut you off because you're a complete idiot. Cut him off. Yeah. What a what a tit. I'm sorry. I can't say the word I want to say, but it's short for cockerel. You know, I, I just, I'm desperate. What, 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 what an I idiot. Um, I think Lisa's beefing. Lisa, my darling, please save me. Um, well, what about, um, ale, hail, ale, hail, hay, while the sun rises? Lisa, I've got to say, love. <laughs> you what? I've got to say, Lisa, <laughs> you're 21 years old, and if this is the best your life is going to get, I really feel for you and your embarrassed family. Where's really? your answer? Ale, hail, whale, while the sun shines. <laughs> Ale hay while the sun shines. Ale hay? What? What's ale hay? Ale hay. Am I making hay? What's ale hay? Hay <laughs> made of ale? <laughs> I don't know. Well, what? Do, well, why say it? Because it's just the first thing that pops into my head. You're a winner. You're right! <laughs> Don't applaud her, it's just sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Lisa, you won. You must be so delighted. How do you feel? Stupid. Oh. <laughs> uh, but have a lovely day. Goodbye. Sorry, to a male whale while the sun rises. So what the hell was that? Join us same time next time when we'll be playing another game of Car Park Catchphrase on Radio 1. <laughs> Say goodbye, Mr. Fish. He's waving. Edith's on her own today because Colin's off. Obviously. Stop. <laughs> Stop.
the long one. <laughs> you mean to play the long one? Yeah, I did, no. yeah. But I just... We don't normally play, I'm just, like, listening to it. Nice. Yeah. They play that game where you've got to guess where the vocals come in. Now. Or now. <laughs> Right, I need to ask a question again. <sighs> Same old question. <clears throat> My hair is the longest oh. it's been for a while. Mm. Blonde or shaven? No, no, no. It's the... <laughs> I don't know, Rachel. Well, that's, that's, after the well, show. that's the question. Eight double one double nine. Oh. Does it take part in blonde or shaven? <laughs> 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 one for everybody. <laughs> the kids are at school now anyway, oh, aren't they? Stop being so rude. You I said it, I say I'll about you bleaching it, bleaching your hair anyway, or shaving it Anyway, time off. for our brand new feature, Cuffs and Colours, right here on Radio 1. Blonde or shaving would be a good J.K. and Joel feature, wouldn't it? <laughs> We are going to see Paddy Keelty tonight. Hooray. Are you coming, Alan? I'm not. Why? I'd really like to. But do you, you the, just don't want to make the honest effort. answer? Yeah. yeah. There's a guy, you don't like him? There's a guy in town today. Oh, who, you got a uh, It's a man. A guy who's from another country that would be very useful for me to meet. And this is the only night we can do it. And he runs clubs and pubs in New York. Mm. Oh. Oh, no. And no, so, no, 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 not like no, that. No, not, no, not no, 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 no. Yeah. You are not okay, meeting up with a friend of yours who runs a nightclub no, no, no. in New York. Do you remember? And then when we go to New York, we end up going to Ding Dang Doogles or whatever yeah, that, it is. No, 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 no. You can forget no, 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 no. it. I think it's called Splash or something. Splash! Oh, I'm, I'm not a I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not a show. Right, there, is no, there is no danger that you'll get us anywhere near Club Splash in New York. <laughs> I'm telling you right hey? now, you can meet your friend tonight, right? But don't you think for one second you're going to get me and Dave for having a few pints and Mary Marys. Listen, it right. is not happening. Forget it. Cheap woo-woos. Will you just stop? Look, I'm as metrosexual as the next fellow with hair gel, but I will not be going around all the Queenie bars of New York. I may pop in for one if it's happy hour, <laughs> but I ain't saying if it's happy night. I'm like, I could get my cousins come up from um, from Atlanta. Every night's a happy night with you, Chris. <laughs> It'll be fine. Anyway, guess who? What? <laughs> it ain't the happy hour. <laughs> 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 Why don't we play some music and then we'll do my guess who? I'm as metrosexual as the next man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next We're a broad church, Rachel. Yeah. <sighs> Crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne! Yeah. How are you, Ozzy? Very tired. It's very early in the day for Ozzy Osbourne. First of all... Oh, I haven't rubbed up my bat wings yet. <laughs> First of all, let me say thank you for, A, getting up so early. Oh, oh, uh, is this a dream? <laughs> it's like a bad dream. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm, I'm, um, uh, yeah, um. <laughs> what time did you wake up? Um... I don't, know. I, I don't know, about seven, uh, quarter to seven, it's like one of them numbers that I don't really like. Yeah, yeah. You look quite fresh, though, considering. Uh, yeah. The wife threw a bucket of water yeah. open, threw me out in the street, and said, I'll see you at <laughs> four o'clock this afternoon. Now, see, now, did you have to get up? Did she go back to bed? She's still in bed now. That is outrageous. You know? Did she, she should at least support you in your hour of need. She did. She said goodbye, darling. <laughs> you, later. you support her with X Factor, don't you? She should be here. Mm. I'll say I love you. It's not one of them kind of no. <laughs> it's not a specialist station. No, it's not. I just love it. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that you come in and see us. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. You look great, by the way, man. Thank you. Keep fit. Don't, yeah. don't do anything bad anymore. I'm quite boring to go out with. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do anything. I think if I'm right, I think uh, you will have just passed 18 months dry. That's right. So congratulations. Well done, man. <laughs> Although I don't, I see now, I, I that's, I, I like a drink. 
I used to love a drink. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, I used to wake up in funny rooms with bars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, so you don't, do you, are you, do you feel as though uh, you're at a place now where you've done it and you've got through it and you now you're like, I am now cool and I'm, I'm all right? I just got fed up with it, you know. At one time, it was my best friend, then it turned into my worst enemy because I, I'd wake up in dodgy places all the time, you know. I didn't, in, I didn't enjoy it anymore. Right. You know, I, I used to have a drink and have a good laugh, but it's the laugh stopped, and, you know. I, I drank because I needed to instead of rather than I wanted to. I was an alcoholic. You know? Yeah. Well, bless you. you look, and look at you, fighting fit. I wouldn't go so far. <laughs> well, fit. I've got a bit of a bad hair day this morning. I, don't, I can never tell the difference. <laughs> I like the fact that you've... Uh, who are the guys that you brought with you this, the, uh, this morning? Because you brought a fellow who looks like Harry Hill, the comedian. Who's, oh, I don't know. Um, who's Harry Hill? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like one of the younger guys. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so... Um, how are you since the quad bike incident? Well, funny you should ask that. It happened just, just, I think it was about 18 months ago. That mm. happened or something. Mm. In, in this, the, now it gets winter, my shoulders really ache all the time. Really? I have to, I have to take them big IB profane things. To just do. And I've, I've got to set up some more surgery to get the, I've got the rods and the plates and all that. There and you're, you're like the bionic man. When I go through an airport, it's fun. I think, I think they're caught being larding, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Because you don't remember. I don't remember. You don't remember it, it at all. But you've seen it. You've seen the. the I can't of watch it. it. It's, sc it's scary. Uh, it, it wasn't too funny when I come out of a coma after eight days. <laughs> well, I'm not. But laughing. you know what I was told. You know, I went down this dip in the field, and the, uh, somebody was. He thinks he was a bomb crazy from the Second World War. So the Nazis got me in the end, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, you are, you're doing well, and you're all fine, and, and, and you're here, and it's great. Thank you. Um, now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about your family and music sure. and all that stuff mm. and the usual stuff that you everybody asks you all the time. But, but don't ask me about bats, doves, <clears throat> no. up the other one. I won't do any of that. Why not? <laughs> well, because I know it now. Well, I know. I watched the... Uh, last night, I watched the video of the ITV documentary that was on... Uh, Do you know I haven't seen that yet? I'll lend you a copy. It's very good. You're great at it. Was I? Yeah. Well, I, I can't even remember who I was. That's one thing I haven't from years of alcohol. Yeah. Your memory's gone. Well, yeah. you were saying after the quad bike thing, your short-term memories started going a bit loopy. I, 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 I can't remember what I did five minutes ago. Really? You know, I, and, and yet I can remember what I did when I was like five or six or not ten. You know. Well, I'll just just so you, you know, about five minutes ago, I lent you ten thousand pounds. Oh, my memory's coming back. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I wa and I, so I watched the, obviously I watched the Osborns, the TV show and all that and the, and Amy was on the documentary, so yeah. it wasn't on the TV show. Yeah, yeah, but she, she, up, do you mean, you're talking about the Osborns? Yeah. She opted out, she, um, didn't want to do it. No. She's cute. She's beautiful. She's very cute. Very beautiful. But she speaks posher than everybody else. <laughs> No, because but... she doesn't hang out with us, you know. Right. But, but but when we all have a family feud, she gets a bit like on posh. Really, I like that because I like the thing that Kelly and Jack have, where they when they when they start shouting and ranting and raving, they go from British to American back to British again. Their accent kind of swings all over the place. Yeah. Was your stays exactly the same? Yeah, until I go on stage, and when I go on stage, I turn into this brummy American, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, kid, how you doing? I'm far out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Amy ever regrets uh, not being on the programme? Well, no, because, well, she hasn't said anything. Um, I, I, I think deep down inside she w wishes she had appeared on something, but she just went categorically, no way, mm, yeah. my life's my life. Mm, yeah. She's fair enough. You know, which... Someone say she was very wise. Well, in, in in a lot of ways, yeah, because the other the other two couldn't could could it it happened so quickly. Mm. I, I mean, I I've got no idea about television. I, the television world is like beyond me. I don't know how it works, how they get the ratings and whatever. So every couple of days, they'd, they'd phone him from the central office on on, on MTV and go, "It's gone up to a seventeen point nine. I'm I'm thinking. What are they talking about? Earthquakes or what? <laughs> and so, and I, and I wonder, everybody's jumping, I'm giving everybody high fives, and I'm sitting like a dog, going, well, what's, what's the deal? And they go, it's a 23 point. I'm going, 
I go, okay, 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 guys, could you calm down? Make that into records. Like, if that was records, how many records would I have sold? That is, that is, it would make Thriller look like a joke. And, there you I, go. and then I'm going, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> well, the show's got, so the, sh the show's done now. You're not doing any more. Well, we 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 are, we are on the tapes. So there's a, there's a lot more episodes we could do. The, the ones they well, they wouldn't show would right. Would, they couldn't get to the uh, the board of you know TV sure. program, whatever. DVDs. But, uh, but we, we we're gonna uh, uh, Sharon Sharon will uh, de uh, no doubt do something in the in the distant future. Or yeah. Not, so when she gets out of bed. When she gets out of bed for the X Factor. Well, exactly. Do you know what I mean? I'm shit. Go on. I don't. I don't see that much of it. She, as she goes in, walks in. I'm walking out, or vice versa. Because we both are work. We're up, it's a big working family now with the kid. Yeah. Jack just did this mountain. Did you see him do that my mountain club? I've got to say, I didn't see. I didn't see m much of the stuff that he did. But that's the one episode that I saw. And I've got to say, in all honesty, and don't say this. To, please don't say this the wrong way. But I completely changed my opinion of of Jack after that episode because before. I had a view that he was, where he was whatever. And after that, I tell you what, he's got balls of steel. He looks so, great, your Jack, now. So and you know he what? looks amazing. The, 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 pro, the, t Os the Osborne's TV show hit mm. so quickly and so rapidly that, like, I went to bed w one night in one world and woke up in a completely different world. Sure. Like, like, the road was blocked up with p people. I, 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 I thought we were having a drug bust or something, you know. <laughs> how many days a week? Were, I mean, how did it work out in terms but, of when they were filming and when they four, weren't? Four or, I think four or five cameras from seven in or six in the morning yeah. till whatever time they wanted to go home. I mean, and every it, day? Every, every, at the beginning, every day. But then I said, you know, Sharon, it was filmed for about a week. They can we have one day when there's nothing. But then on the nothing day, I found out they had hidden cameras. Which got me upset. I was going to say something <laughs> else, but like I'm not. I'm going to realise I was just told not to say any foul <laughs> language. But it got me rather upset. Yeah. So he's yeah, yeah. But um, I mean, there must there must have been times though when you just thought, "What have we done? You know, what what have we done here by allowing um, everybody it's, in?" It's, it's kind of like it's kind of like okay, it, this is great, you know, for the first week, yeah. and you know, and you see, and people start recognising you that wouldn't normally recognise you. First season goes over. I mean, in the first season, I met the royal family, the the president of America. Sure. Here's where all these all these people that I wouldn't normally meet. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know. Played at the royal royal um, jubilee thing. Um, yeah. I'm thinking this is great, you know. Then then, then it's like you, when you're a kid and you go to a party and and the, and the, and the, 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 the blamans taste good. And after yeah. after half of that, you think, oh, I'm enough getting, I've had enough, and you still. Pounding it down, yeah. and you got the. It's kind of that feeling, yeah. you know. And, and and then you go from that to resentment, and you go from that to you feel like a, a caged animal in the end because you, you you can't go in because mm -hmm. the cameras there, and, you, and everywhere you go, the cameras follow. You. I mean, I was in a shop one day with a camera, and it's, if you want to get attract attention, have a camera follow mm -hmm. you. In about ten minutes, you got like five hundred people going. Oh, it's him! It's him! <laughs> I just, I just like the fact that then, and obviously, if you want to go to the shops, they need to bring their film crew with them, get Everywhere. permission to film, get there before you get there so you can then film you getting you out of the car yeah. and all that. Oh, yeah. Every, every way, you start selling your soul to the devil, but, but, but saying that... Well, I was, I was, I was, I bet the money was great. The wife took care of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, got a, I got a picture, a signed picture of, of something. In the... <laughs> you should put your foot down. Tell her you want some spending money. She says, she, my wife's the best spender. She can always beat me. <laughs> I don't go, I don't like shopping. I don't like spending. I'm not tight. But if I want a pair of blue, blue jeans, I go and buy a pair. She'll buy 500 pairs and pick, you know, unless they'll be in the, in the wardrobe next year till they go out of fashion. They'll go into an Oxfam bag and she'll go and buy some more. Well, women, women, women have got it down to a fine art, you know. Oh, it's it's a it's a it's a job for women shopping. Oh, I it's a job. I, it's a hobby. I, 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 sometimes I go, oh no. I'm in a department store with my wife, you know, and it's like, it's like, beam me up, Scotty, get me out of here, you know? Does she, I hope, does Sharon do the same thing with you that every other girlfriend and wife does with their man? Do you end up sitting on a chair outside a dressing room? Absolutely. Going, it, it's, yeah, They one, now that, have, they now have these stools for men in, in, you know, girls, ladies' clothes shops and department stores. They have stools outside the dressing rooms where blokes like you and me can sit there, normally mm. playing with your phone, because there's something to do, isn't it, while they, they try on six different colours in the oh, same yeah, top. 
I get I get so bored shopping with my girlfriend, and I can't. I don't know what it is, and I can't help it. I yawn all the time. I can't help but yawn. Yeah. And she's going, "Do you like the black one or do you like the grey one?" I'm like, "They're both really, really nice." And <laughs> I, I'm just, and I don't mean to be yawn, but I just. And then they're thinking, they're, they're thinking, oh, look, look, I can't even ask you a question. And my wife does this to me. I go, she, she, we're getting dressed to go out somewhere, and she go, I go, what shall I wear? She goes, how old are you? <laughs> how old are you? You're 50, what? And you have to, have to still ask me? And I go, okay, I'll go and pick So I'll, I'll, I'll go in and get, oh, I'll wear that. Everything's black, but I wear right, anyway. Sure. So I'll have that black one. And so I'll come out, and she'll go, you're not, you are joking. <laughs> And I go, well, I did ask you. And she goes, well, come on, baby, I'll pick daddy some. And I go, well, I did ask you. <laughs> <laughs> right, Ozzy Osbourne is here. You're going to hang around for a while and just chill yeah, out with yeah, us? Yeah, cool. Don't forget that £10,000 you owe me, by the way. That's <laughs> no problem. Right, Ozzy's here. We'll do Dave's Tedious Link next. It's James Blunt. My life is brilliant. 8.56. It's half time on the show. It's a bit where Dave always says, <sighs> Let's get ready to rumble. Check that out. Yeah. <laughs> He's like our performing dog. Hey, <laughs> have you got a, pit, a set of lungs? Was that impressive? Very impressive. Well, thank you very much. I'd well, take a deep breath. Well, my hair dry, dried my hair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Hey, if you just switch radio on, by the way, Mr. Ozzy Osbourne is here. And uh, we played the record earlier in my life, which is out December the 5th. Two days after my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. What would you like? Um, anything. I don't know. All right, have a thing, let me know. All right. Obviously, £100 limit. I'm not loaded. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's say a car. You don't can't afford it. Do you still save presents for Christmas? I mean... Well, I hate Christmas, I hate birthdays. So you don't... I mean, because obviously, you've been, you know, a wealthy man. You can pretty much have what you want. He's not toys, wealthy. Toys, Sharon's toys, wealthy. Sharon's... Ozzy gets pocket money. But do you, do you must kind of think maybe in October, November, think, I really want one of them, but I won't get it now. I'll get Sharon to get it me for Christmas. Uh, no, I, I mean, she gets it whether you want it or not. Right, OK. I, I mean... I, 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 I'm one of these guys that goes, oh, it's middle of no August. Sharon would like that, or one of the kids. Yeah. I hate to feel that I've got to go and buy a gift, yeah. you know. But I've got to go and buy a gift. I don't know time. And do you have to first. do the shopping as well? No, no, no I, don't, I do not. I, go, I give him money and I can go shopping. So you don't, you don't go to the shopping centre no, and they, get they, Kelly no, and No, when you're at my status, the shops come to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's more worse again. It's Marks and Spencer's outside again. <laughs> Bring it in, I'll have uh, a look. Come in, British home stores. <laughs> so you're not a big fan of Christmas? I hate it. Why? <laughs> it, it's just, you, I, I hate to think, you, you know, you've, you've got to buy gifts. Yeah. But don't you enjoy sitting around the dinner table with a with a rubbish party hat on pulling crackers? Yeah, it's all right when I had a few jars down my neck. I was there. I'd, I'd be still there from last Christmas, you know. But when, when the... The wine goes away. It's like it's boring, you know. Sit there holding hands like morons and singing these silly songs. But it's when it's like the twenty third. It's of for kids. It's when it's the twenty third of December and you're stood in the middle of Brent Cross or Mary Hell or, or the Arndale Centre or something, and you think you've got this list. You don't know where to start. You haven't bought presents for anybody. That's why you buy vouchers for everybody. Well, I know it's that's the gift, a, that's the, a, the, the gift of choice. That's, that's what, what he does. Thing. The gift that's of choice. He, he buys vouchers. Yeah, but you know what? I I put thought and effort into my presents. Which is, I don't buy many, but uh, you know I put thought and effort in. You buy vouch. Tell Ozzy Osbourne, right? Look him in the eye and tell him, tell him what you bought for me one Christmas. I bought you a Satsuma. That's right. <laughs> but you, you always that's my kind of guy. Wrapped it up. <laughs> didn't know what it was. Didn't know whether it was an apple or, or, or a Satsuma, did you? Oh, the, the, the oh, it's so exciting. I wonder what it may be. Is it an apple? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a plum? Oh, it was a Satsuma. Great. <laughs> See you next year, Dave. 
<laughs> well, mine, I, bu I bought my villa, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know what I bought you, but it was something great. Yeah. That when we started doing on the show, when we started before we start the Christmas before we started doing the getting up early to the breakfast show, I bought you all clocks, really nice alarm clocks. Yeah, and I still use it now. Yeah. What did you get me? I don't know. I must have got you some. I, I got you something good, didn't Two I? Two sad sumas. <laughs> yeah, and a pair. <laughs> no, I bought you nice presents recently. I can't remember what. But... You're getting better. Anyway, I don't want to have a go at you. This is like, almost like a moment there, wasn't it? So, Jack. Yeah. Uh, lost a hell of a lot of weight. Yeah. And now climbs mountains. Yes. Now, his next thing is, I, I think it's insane. He wants to run across the Sahara Desert. That's ridiculous. Why do that when you can do it in a car? No, what, get aeroplanes. That's why he invented planes and camels. And why would you want... <laughs> exactly. That's, you know, why... why he jumps out of planes, sky, free fall, sky, skydiving, and I go, who, what, what do you want to dive out of a perfectly good plane for? I mean, I, you, you, I, you'd never get me doing that. No, I mean, it's crazy as I am. So for those of you who didn't see this, Jack went through, um, he lost a load of, sh he shed a load of weight, didn't he? And he started training. He, uh, he, he, he got into drugs for a while, then he thought that was a bad idea. He went to rehab and he came out and he says, Dad, I'm going to, I'm going to lose the weight and I'm going to go, I'm going to do this television thing. He, oh, Jack, I, I don't know what, he, I can't remember what the show was called. He went, he never done, he never had a fight with anyone in his life. He mm. learned how to tie box. He beat an, a, a, a guy up in, 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 the, in the ring in Thailand. Matt, Sharon and I went there to see that. Then he went running with the bulls. Then he climbed this, this um, a sheer cliff thing of mm. 4,000 feet. And then he back, backpacked down the other side, you know. And Sharon and I were there to see him come down. Mm. And it was so emotional. I mean, uh, one guy went out the door. And a different guy came out. Oh, it's completely, completely different. And by the way, to be, you know, that story doesn't even do it justice. You didn't see this, did you? No, I didn't. That, the mountain that you climbed, by the way, it was four thousand feet high and took five days. But I mean, incredibly, and slept on ledges on the mountain. Now, personally, I think it's nuts. If it was me, no, I would. If 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 that was me, and I'd lost all that weight and I looked better, I'd, I'd be out getting laid rather than climbing mountains. Well, I mean, he's addicted to it. He really loves it. The credit where credit's due, there's one thing saying to you, you know, when he came up to you and he said, right, Dad, I'm going to sort myself out and I'm going to lose the weight and get off the drugs and blah, blah, blah. But to actually have gone through what he's done yeah. and do all these things, and, you know, he looks fantastic now. He does. Although on his TV show that he did for Channel 4, he said that he was going to put me in the electric chair. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, for that, I'm not happy. That'd be a good half an hour's entertainment. Well, what do you mean the electric chair? Yeah, it's With one, a one show in your mouth. Yeah, one show only. <laughs> no, it won't, there won't be a second series. No, I'm cool. Well, they could do celebrity fry up, couldn't they? And they could have a different one every week. No, Dave. No, we're not frying people right. on on television. You know, I think that would be a good. You get a good uh, audience. And the audience could vote on who they wanted to go <laughs> to the chair. You know, a bit like X Factor, but kind yeah. of the other way around. Yeah, let's put Chico in the chair. Yeah, it's frying time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, uh, obviously you've met other, a lot of oh, yeah. the expats at Chico is in your, in your swimming pool with a live microphone. I, I mean, I, I'm sitting there and he does that back flipping, oh, and I go, Sharon, you, you've got to have this guy. Because <laughs> I mean, if they start throwing things at him, he's, 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 I mean, uh, but actually, he's a very nice guy. He, he's, he's, a, he's a good party guy, yeah. you know. He's a, he's a great guy to have at a party, but whether he's going to win or not, I wouldn't put money on it. No, he won't because he can't sing. That's my opinion. But he's very, very don't you, think that, don't you think there's more talent this year, better, better talent this year than there was last year? In all honesty, right, and I've said this before, I, I, I really like X Factor, but my favourite bit are all the auditions when oh, all these it. idiots come on who oh. haven't got any talent. That's my favourite bit. When it comes to the live show, I couldn't care less. However, this year, I'm, I love it. I'm so, I'm absolutely hooked. And they're all great. Well, mm. you know, the majority of them are great. You, you, can, you can kind of predict who's going to go. But I'll, I'll go, I mean, I'll ask Sharon, I said, I'll go to her. You know, it's kind of worked out, really. You, tell, you can tell me. She goes, I don't know. Mm. So if it is worked out, she's keeping stum about it. Yeah. You know? I think that the, uh, the the black guy, the bin man guy, Andy, oh, he's, he's great. Got beautiful, he's effortless. And that Brenda, the mm. big, what a voice. She's great. She's a super oh, chick. What a voice. And then Chico... He dances well. But he's a great performer. He is a great performer. No, I mean, you know, there's the people... What time is it? It's frying time! People have different <laughs> skills and he's a great performer. I think we got him on tape somewhere saying it's Chico time or something like that. Anyway.
love me or hate me, you cannot take this away from me, and you cannot deny me. And all I can Thank say you, is this. Go on. What time is it? It's frying time. Frying time. And the wheel on a big electric chair, yeah. right? And we plug him in. That, that's television. I tell you, it's the way forward. Hi, I'm Kate Thornton. <laughs> Who will fry tonight? Find out after the break. Brilliant. Will it be Chico? Will it be the fellow who looks like Craig David? I don't know. Still to come, who will fry tonight? Find out in Execution Factor. Sharon, who do you think should be executed? I don't want to execute anybody. Oh, this is so difficult. Oh, oh. Oh, but I, it'll have to be you, you know. And then Ozzy's got to be the Grim Reaper, haven't you? You could do the big plunger. <laughs> yeah. All dressed in black. All right, Sharon, I'll pull this. <laughs> <laughs> Hold him down. We've got, we've got a show there. Hey? Get on the phone to Simon Celebrity Cowell. Celebrity fry-up, execution factory or chairway to heaven. One way. <laughs> <laughs> We've got something. Share away to heaven, by the way. Sparky the magic singer. <laughs> oh, that is funny, man. Oh, dear. Ozzy Osbourne is in the studio this morning. Thank you, gentlemen. The double album Ultimate Sin is out November 28th, and In My Life, the single is out December 5th, a couple of days after Ozzy's birthday, where he will be 40 years old mm -hmm. this year. What did you just say? The double album was? Well, the double album Ultimate Sin. That's wrong. What? Is it? Yeah. Oh. What's it, it, what's it called? Undercover. Oh, it's, it? not, it's not a double album. <laughs> Do you know what? It is Undercover as well, because it, it, it's the... Why I thought the ultimate sin was done when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> maybe somebody's re-releasing it and trying to make some money out of you. Yeah. Or maybe we've got it wrong. Maybe something from the electric chair factory, whatever it is. Yeah, Do you know what? That's what it was. I got so excited with our TV show ideas. <laughs> The, ult the ultimate sin was like 1982 <laughs> when I said dressed like Liberace on acid. So, sorry. I apologize. I must admit, I did think it was an odd title for your new album. Uh, anyway, there's, there's some That's kind... That's it now. They're all going to go and lie. <laughs> oh, whoever wants to buy it and say, can I have that double album, the ultimate <laughs> din? They could buy both. Yeah. Yeah. It's Christmas. It makes a perfect Christmas present for somebody, or you know, in your family or a loved one. <laughs> and a loved one. Anyway, um, and Chico. Uh, and Lisa, yeah. You should do a duet with Chico. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, seriously, that would kill Ozzy's career forever. Ozzy and Chico. Yeah. That'd be good. If both of you have to have a double chair then. <laughs> what, what time is it, Ozzy? Oh, shut up, will yeah. <laughs> it's three o'clock. <laughs> it's Chico time! It's, it's slap Chico time if you keep shouting. Oh, dear. <laughs> Chico will be up for that, definitely. I think I was in Chico works. Really? Yeah. It's very flamboyant. It, it is. It's a new direction for you. Oh, yeah. Where's the exit? <laughs> <laughs> and what are the girls? The Conway sisters? Yep. Yeah, they can be back in vocalists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to go this week, I reckon. What do you think? The Conway sisters or Chico this week to go from X Factor. And uh, uh, my tip, my tip for the final three, I still stand at Shane, uh, Brenda, and Andy the Dustman. They're they're the final yeah, three. Yeah. That's what I say. You said that from the start, didn't you? Said that from the start. Okay, I'm always right. I can't help it. It's a gift. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, there you go. Right, we have some questions from our listeners, if that's all right. All right. Um, what happens is I will play. Uh, they will they will introduce themselves to you. They're all on tape, and then uh, you can decide whether or not you want to hear their question. So you don't, if you don't like the sound of them, you can say no. I don't like the sound of them. Oh. Okay. Right. Where are we? Uh... All right. Here we go. It's the first one. Then. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ozzy. My name's Liz. I'm from London. I'm a management accountant. Okay. Yeah. All right, here's Liz's question. My question for Ozzy is: What did you think when you saw Sharon kiss Simon Cowell on X Factor? I wondered, I wondered when she stopped throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, it's showbiz, I don't care. It's not real, is it? It's all pony. <laughs> Hi, Chris and Ozzy, it's uh, Paul. I'm a telecoms engineer from Harrogate. Not oh, from Harrogate, no? Next one. OK. <laughs> Next one? Mm. All right. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ozzy. I'm an IT project manager. My name's Duncan, and I'm from North London. OK. You sure? Yeah, go. OK. I think mean, you might regret it. Ozzy, what does bat taste like? Is it like chicken? Boring. <laughs> I told you. 
this is a very random one. Hi, Chris. Hi, Ozzy. My name is David Atkinson, and I work for a quarrying company based at Workshop. All right. Yeah. My question, Ozzy, is have you ever been mistaken for Ozzy Idealis? Who? <laughs> Aussie Ardealers. Who's that? The footballer. Used to play for Spurs. He's just oh, another Puffin famous Ham. Aussie. No. <laughs> Don't look anything like him, actually. Can I just say, the look of disgust on Aussie's face where he's got no, like that. <laughs> uh, uh, now, this is nice. You like this. All right. Hi, Chris. Hi, Aussie. I'm Clayton. I'm an electrician, and I'm from Birmingham. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. sorry, man. On a scale of one to ten, individually, how proud are you of your children? And remember, no swearing. Well, uh, uh, they're all a ten. I mean, ten being the best or ten being the... Well, ten, <laughs> ten be, the, be the best. They're all a ten. R even Kelly? Yeah, yeah. I'd put her as a nine. No, she's great. I mean, I, I, I don't think any different of any of them. Oh, well, I do. I, well, I well, you're not being asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> you're not their father either. Well, that's... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 we're getting a bit personal here. <laughs> He's my son. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah. Don't make, don't don't have a go at my dad or me. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Are you the new Prince of Darkness? No, no heir to the Prince. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Does that hang on? That would mean that uh, Kelly was my sister. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. You into a bit of incense? Oh! oh. I, I'm, I'm into lots of candle burning and, yeah. and smells. Yeah. Oh, I love, you, I love you, incense. You get plenty of that in my house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And your sticks. I like that as well. <laughs> no, I, I, Amy, though, since I saw Amy on the tavern, she's a cutie. She's beautiful. I like it. She got a boyfriend? I'm not saying. Okay, that. all right then. Yeah, but I'd be good. You know, if I'd send up on your doorstep, I'm, I'm a presenter. Well, you, 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 my Kelly comes home every other week with somebody, some tattooed face freak from. <laughs> <laughs> she comes home with all. all you, you never know what Kelly's going to walk in the house with. Three legged men. And, <laughs> or or, or, the, or the, the guys oh, extra specially. But you know what? Don't worry about that. It's when Jack starts bringing the same men home. That's when you've got to start worrying. Oh, yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? Dad, this is my new fella. Oh, you doing, Ozzy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's my new girlfriend. Excuse the beard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, here's. Uh, we're missing one? No. Okay, here's another one. Yeah, we are. Morning, Ozzy. My name's Chris. Uh, I'm from Birmingham, and I'm an account manager, and I have a question for you. Go on, then. All right. I'm a Lord Aston Villa fan, and I'm curious that when you lived in Aston, did you support them, uh, and do you still support them, uh, as we could do with uh, some financial help, i.e. a few million, if you have it? <laughs> right. Well, I lived just up the road from the Villa ground. I wasn't a great fan of football in general, but if I, if I was asked to I support any team, I would have to say Aston Villa because of the, they're my home team. And as far as giving money to football p p people, they, 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 I, I should be phoning them after this Christmas and my wife's going Christmas shopping for a few extra balls to sell or something. <laughs> While we're on the subject, by the way, um, obviously uh, Sharon is the, you know, keeps all your money. No, it? no, she, she uh, spends. <laughs> <laughs> spends. Well, on that subject, when you get home today, when you see her, can you ask her, I'd like a car for Christmas. Now, I've worked it out that you're loaded and you wouldn't miss 35 grand. Well... Now, I've, uh, you know, and I'm, I've gone for a mid-range convertible. I haven't gone for the over-the-top one. I think a mid-range 35, 40 grand car is... is well, what? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a phone number mm -hmm. and have a conversation with her. <laughs> and you, I was told before I came into the studio, Ozzy, if you could please mind your language, she would make me look like a saint. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'd be too scared to talk to her. Well, I am, and that's why I'm here. What's the going I'm so early in the morning, <laughs> Paul. <laughs> well, do you know what? Uh, I've loved having you on the show today. I could talk to you all day. It's been great. I'll have to do this again. It's been a fun to laugh. Do you have to go? No, because I've got, I got this gentleman with his hand around my neck dragging me. Well, I'll knock him out, Dad. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll get rid of him for you. Well, look, if you want to stay, you're more than welcome to stay. I've got other things. No, you don't. All right, I'll stay. Yeah! <laughs> well, listen, you're a legend. Taxi's upstairs <laughs> waiting. Uh, In My Life is out on December the 5th, and uh, some album of some kind will also be out with covers on it. Yeah, that's all right. There you go.
But the back catalogue is all is still available. Just make sure that uh, Ozzy has writing credits so that he gets the money. Right. There you go. And uh, Osborne's DVDs, that gets money and too. And if you want to trip down memory lane, pick up... Old yeah, which is a great hey, album. That's the worst album I ever made. That's the, I don't buy that one. Which one should we buy, Reese? What? Give us an album. Reese. Reese. Uh, Reese. I think he died. Oh, he has he's, up first. he's selling your autographs. Sabbath, bloody <laughs> Sabbath. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah. Well, why, not, why not treat everybody in your family to a copy of Sa Sabbath, bloody Sabbath? Make this a black Christmas. I can't believe it. We've had Ozzy on for the last hour. I'm the one who swore. See? I the curse of Ozzy's getting you. That is outrageous. <laughs> See what I did there? Beep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ozzy, thank you very much, man. God and, bless uh, you, man. Thank have you. Have a, have a, although I hate Christmas, have a great time, guys. Thank and you. have an extra fag for me. Hey. <laughs> Osborne, legend, legend, legend. Thank you. Uh, right, get back into it then with uh, the Will Young record coming up and Car Park Catchphrase and all the other stuff after some news of sport with George 932. How are you, Mr. Carr? I'm really well, yeah, really very well. We're very pleased that you've come to see us. Well, thanks very much. I'm, I'm slightly scared, I'll be honest with Why? you. Why? Because it's quite, a, you know, it's a combative sort of show and I feel like... You might no. You might tear me a new one or something. We don't book any guest that we don't like. Oh well, God bless you for that. No, that's true, because we've we've had our fingers burnt before. Mm. So now we only book people we like. <laughs> well, that's yeah. It's very wise. Easy. See these new things that, that that didn't exist before. They obviously did, but we didn't know what they were. Mm. It's like you know, I was talking the other day about my mild OCD. You're and, mi you've got mild OCD. Yeah, and Every Sophie, my girl. Mild. Well, no. Ha <laughs> oh, You've got that. <laughs> That's his rim shot. Sophie was saying, she was, she was, we were out the other night and she said, you'd love to have OCD, wouldn't you? You, you really would. And I've got to be honest, there's a little bit part of me which would. I've got it, it's very mild though, but I can't talk about it because Dave always thinks there's something wrong with me. What have you got? Can you not step on the cracks? <clears throat> it's not that. It's it's to do with if I if I do that with my hand, right? Yeah, uh, right? It's, uh, you're flicking your nails flicking on your palm. Flicking my nails across my palm. I had to go back over it. Oh, yeah, otherwise bad things will happen. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, all, yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, you're not insane. And a friend of mine who used to come around to my uh, my uh, my flat and on the breakfast bar, I'd have my loose change from the night before, he'd have to turn all the coins over so their, oh, so head, their heads, up. heads were facing up. Do you know what? If anyone's got one of those, send those in. I love those. Really? Like the weird things that people do. Yeah. Uh, I have to have the volume on my CD player as a multiple of five or somebody will die. Well, of course, and the the graphic equaliser, you have to have it entirely equal across. If you've but still you see, got one of those. There's really? no point, though, if you have it like that, is there? I put all my clothes pegs on my washing line together so none of them feel lonely, says Barry. Yeah, it's one on the end, that would be terrible. I can't drink a full cup of tea. It really, just, <laughs> it really distresses me. <laughs> <laughs> These are great. The great thing about them is when you share them, like everyone else goes, yeah, I've got one of those. I'm not crazy. Everyone's I'm quite particular one. about parking. I don't like parking wonky. And actually other people are saying that on there as well. Really? Yeah. Here's parking this wonky, yeah. Mm. That's... I think the tea thing actually comes from, a, from an old-fashioned thing that people used to leave a bit in the bottom because yeah. the tea leaves. Yeah, so that's that a habit that people still do. Because my these mum are, but does we've, that. We've had so many. I just can't. These are great. I could. You could read these for hours. I race myself every time I bathe, and I try to beat my own times. But there are rules that I have to abide by, such as must be full wash, shampoo, and nails done. <laughs> it's <laughs> all true. And it's just. And someone's gone. Do you know what? Chris Moore's better know. <laughs> he has to know. Sometimes I can't be bothered to stand up and have a pee, so I sit down. But I always have to wipe my bottom, even if I hadn't had, had a number two. Oh. Is that weird from Cy from Kent? Yes, yes, it is. You're a freak. I can't open a crisp packet upside down and it annoys me when somebody else does. Oh, and another one like that is the people that eat their burger upside down. So Women, you do, you do that as well, because I've seen you. Opening a crisp packet upside down, though, I mean, you may as well be calling up a demon but you know, But you know when you have a particular burger or something, and the picture has it like that, when people turn it the other way and eat it the wrong way around. Lindsay, I find that mildly irritating. Lindsay from Bedford has a proper one. I have to put on and take off my socks four times each morning and night. Has she considered not wearing socks? Well, this is it. She'd have a much more productive day. My mate can't look at barcodes. Also, if he touches someone can't, with his... So I can't look at barcodes? <laughs> yes. Why that's, can't he look at barcodes? That's a visual impairment, surely. Know. <laughs> you got to love them, right? They're fantastic, aren't they? Send in some more. We're loving these. I'll print some of these off for you. Because <laughs> I know that you will take them home. They're great. Good morning. Hi. I've got a bit of a present for you. Are you leaving? No, I'm not leaving. Hang on, this is the music for The Apprentice. Am I, have I been fired? Uh, no, you haven't been right, fired. Right, okay, good. Whew, big deep breath. 
I'm actually very excited about this little present for you because okay. it's quite a big deal. I have something here which you will spend a lot of time with, I, I predict. I think you'll really like this. Is it a blow-up doll? No. Sure. Yeah, you're not funny. <laughs> Is it a blow-up doll? No, no it's not. No, right. It's going to become your new friend. It's very difficult to actually Is build this up more than I can. Is it a puppy? No, it's not a puppy. Right. You won't be able to, you know, you won't be able to... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Back Hello? up there. Hello? Sorry. Hey? Bit random. I meant through neglect. <laughs> well, I thought you'd be good with animals or babies. That's no better, Alad. Okay, well, this one is fine. This'll, this'll keep going without any food or water. Right. I don't know that I know you Get ever have. <laughs> anyway. Morning off, Com. He didn't mean that. No, I didn't, didn't mean, mean that. You would. He meant as in it's not something you need to look after. Exactly. With food and water. It's going well, Al. This is released at the beginning of December. Right. It'll probably be one of the biggest selling things this year. And you... No, is it, is it are about Girls Loud Christmas single? No, no. And you're about to be the first person in the UK to have this. Right. A full two or maybe three weeks early. <laughs> Research is good. Sell it! <laughs> this is the new Xbox 360. Wow! Look at that! In, especially for you. Wow! We even have a box. Basically, this is so brand new. They brought in the only copy they have. It's wow. not in the stores yet. Wow! Wow! We. Wow! That's wow. a new video games machine. That's a new computer games machine. Yeah. So well done, Dave. This is a very, very big deal. Wow! And I showed it in the office yesterday, and everyone in the office was like, "Wow!" Do you not get a joystick with it? Yeah, you do, but it's all upstairs. Oh, it? I see. Fiddly to bring it all down. Can I touch right. it? You can touch it. Do you want to touch it? I'd like to, I'd like to hold it. Like a puppy. Should I really pass it over? Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. Oh, no, drop no. Is it heavy? No, it's actually not. Oh, actually. my God. It's really light. It's so much lighter than the I current um, model. It's all uh, light grey and... Nice colour. It's quite sexy, I thought. Do you know what? That's great, because it'll go on the side of the telly. Will it'll, it? It'll sit rather than... Because at the moment, as it sits in the corner with all the wires over it. Now it'll just sit at the side. It's very cool. And I like that. That is very cool. Let's have a look at your new machine. Now, Dave's look. been asking questions, but he sounds so thick when he asks these questions. Dave, oh, Chris, don't hold it like Let me that. Feel I'm like... not going to drop it. Oh. Let me feel how heavy it is. It's very, very, very light. Have you got it? Uh, yeah. Oh, Dave, I tell you what, he it. grabbed that quick, didn't he? God. Right, what does it do, Alice? Yes, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> you oh, are God. kidding me, Dave. Dave. You are kidding me. <laughs> You can't even buy these for lovely money! And you just dropped it! I'm sure it'll be okay. Dave! Dave. Shake it, is it rattling? It, it's in a robust case. I'm sorry. That's the brand new, the brand new number one Christmas present this year, which you can't even buy yet, and even if you do want to buy it, there's a huge long waiting list. We've got one. You just dropped it. Yeah. Oh my have we gotta give it back? No, this is Chris's. Oh Great! Sorry about that. I have the first ever broken <laughs> Xbox 360. We don't know that it's broken I'm yet. I'm sure it's fine. I can, I'm, I'm genu- what is wrong I'm, with I'm, you? I'm, it slipped out of my... I'm genuinely sorry. Do you think it'll... There's a crack. Why do you hate me so there's much? I don't... Why are you crack. jealous of my computer gaming skills? I don't hate you. That was nasty. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> what have uh, you done? The front has come, come here. off. The front has fallen off come it! Come here, right? It's, it, it just goes back off. What kind of a present is this? What have I done wrong for, to you lot? <laughs> Why do you all hate me? I thought it'd be really nice. That's a big deal that you've had that, like, a few weeks ago. Dave, the bit's falling off it! Yeah, but it just needs a bit of glue. <laughs> it's brand new! I'm sorry I dropped it. It slipped out of my hand. I just wanted to see a new computer games machine. Well, now you've seen it. And the insides, because the front's fallen and off. And now, I'll be honest, I wish I hadn't bothered. Sorry. Sorry, um, Xbox I'm also sorry to the, yeah, the, the people from the computer games company as well who might be listening. Brilliant. Didn't mean to. Here we go. Better give them a call. Hey, we'll have it. Well, have, I know. Well, let's go. Let's go into the Chris Moore Show on Radio 1. That'd be great publicity for us as it bounces across the studio floor. <laughs> oh, it's not funny. No, it's Tell him it's not funny. It's not, not funny, funny, Dave. It's a big deal. Sorry. A lot of people have been saving up a lot of money for this, and you've just thrown it across the studio. You've thrown it across the studio. You tell him. <laughs> so rude. You're getting some lovely comments on the text, Dave. Aren't I just? Pillock. God. I apologise. You better get in and check it, Alex. No tell, tell him he's an arse. I can't say that. Yes, you can. It's a bit rude. Oh, you're fired. You're fired. No, yeah, he's fired. You're fired. No, I'm not. Oh, so I was pointing to Dave. Right, right. technically, I'm fired. Is it rattling? Shake it. Is it rattling? Oh, it's rattling as well. Do you want a hug? 
Tell him I can't hear him, Alan. Chris says he can't hear you. cry. I think, I, th flash. I think that'll work fine when you plug it into the telly upstairs. Really? Okay. Mm. I'll go and do it later. Who are you, who are you talking to? Oh, um... Let's have a look. Come here. Who are you talking I'm to? Not again. No, don't, 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 don't let him touch it! Don't let him touch it! Give it, give it back! Give off him! <laughs> <laughs> Dave, put it back! The front is... Put it back! The front... Put it back! Listen, I... Dave, put it back! I can tell you're getting upset. Dave, put it back! I can tell you're upset. I swear I will dive over the desk and I will put your face through the door. I can... Put it back! I can tell you're not happy. And for that, Rachel, ta Rachel, right. get it off. The front okay, is supposed right. to come off. Yeah, right. the front of your you know, face will come off in a minute. The front is supposed to come off, and in fact... It's not meant to rattle when you shake it, and it's not meant to bounce! Ah, but this one is. And do you know why, Grip Mate? Because this is little more than a... Ah! A pretend ah, one. You gotcha! Oh, you see? <laughs> this is the real one. In a box. You crazy guys! <laughs> There we go. That's the full thing. Right, give it me, and I'm going to take it round. No, don't give it to her. No, let me have a look. I she'll, sell it, she'll sell it and buy one. Ironically, this is in a box, right? And as I was holding it, the, the actual handle's broken, so don't hold it by the handle. But this is this is the one. That was a review copy. Let me come round and present this to you. No. No. Actually, let me pass this one over. I don't want to touch it's it. straight to Chris. I don't want to touch it. I'm okay. scared. There we go. Oh, oh good Surprise. God. Surprise. Yeah. Good that, God. That one's a bit heavier. Whoa. That is very heavy. Wow, it's the new Xbox 360. You are literally the first person, so I'm congratulations. I'm putting it over here, away from Dave. So you have to take it home today and, and then review it tomorrow. Well, I have a lot of work to do today, Dave. I haven't, uh, uh, Rachel, rather, sorry. Uh, so do you today. Oh, you're I'm talking saying. to me again now, no, are you? I'm talking to Rachel. Huh? <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know oh, anything. Now you're not going to jump over the desk what and was that? rip my face off. <laughs> uh, Chris, he says, now you're not going <laughs> to... No, what did you think of my acting? Well, I didn't hear anything then. What was that? I was thinking of applying to radar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very good. I did think. I thought you snatched it out of my hand very, uh, you know, quickly. What did you do that for? What are you doing, Alad? What's wrong with this oh, mic? Oh, don't mess with it. Why does your head? mic have to be the one which oh, droops? He comes in and he just starts fiddling with everything. <laughs> good morning. It. Joe Wiley looks gorgeous today. I've been in Say Hello already. She's wearing a little can of black dressy thing, but she's wearing like a red bra. Is she? Which? How do you know that? Because it's hanging out, you can't fail to see it. Little tart that she is, she looks lovely. Anyway, I mean, in a nice, warm way. And her hair's looking nice. And she's got another pair of kinky boots on. Has she? Yeah. She likes her boots, Joe. Since she started working in the studio right next door to mine, is it just me, have you noticed, she's been putting effort into those outfits? Yes, of course she has, Chris. Thank you, Rachel, mm. see? <laughs> Only the other day she was saying, oh, you're going to New York. I can't wait for you to go to New York. Horns at the ready. <laughs> <laughs> Press the wrong button. Sorry. And then she said that, actually. That's what she said. Horns at the ready. Yeah. I went, Joe, leave it. You're on the air now. <laughs> hey, Joe, baby. Yeah. Uh, Nina Mishkov. Ooh. Richard Maidley. Ooh. I'll go. Judy Finnegan. Nina Nana. <laughs> Debbie Harry. Oh. Tony Danza. Tony Blackburn. Alan Freeman. Carol Thatcher. Nice. Robbie Williams. Adrian Childs. Gary Barlow. Howard Donald. That's what I was going to say. Mohammed Al Fayed. Oh. Gary Lineker. Norman Lamont. Sean Paul. Davina McCall. Joanna Lumley. Matt Lucas. Terry Gilliam. Fern Britton. Fern Cotton. Dr. Hilary Jones. Rolf Harris. Paul Smith. Philip Schofield. Noel Edmonds. <laughs> Don French. Paul Daniels. Sarah Kennedy. Debbie McGee. Ah! Ken Bruce. What? Bolo Zenden. James Nesbitt. Brian O'Driscoll. Terry Wogan. Chris Moyles. Terry Venables. Johnny Wilkinson. Yes! Come on! We rule. 
Now, you make I'm noise. Did, did we double up there? No, because somebody said the exact one I wanted to say. I Devin McGee? Uh, yeah. I was right. going to say Devin McGee. That was Rachel. <laughs> wow. I feel exhausted. I, oh. I, I need a cigarette. <laughs> It's clapping. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. How's that? That's nice. Yeah. It's like one of those Dave Pierce mixes. You sing something though. Really? Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Sorry, Dave. Is that better? That's better. Right. Quality stereo radio around the world. When you get here, without giving too much away, mm. and I want to give out all the security secrets. So you get you first of all, you have to get past the guy downstairs, right? Yeah. And there's and so we've come into this building now three or four times and seen four, three or four different security guards. Mm -hmm. So nothing helps you, right? Mm. And there's 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 so many floors in this building that it's not like you go, oh, I'm here for this, and they go, oh yeah, the BBC guy. They haven't a clue. <laughs> they really haven't a clue. And they take your photo, so it goes on your photo ID pass, which is temporary, by the way, and runs out at midnight. So if you get in. <laughs> If you go out for a cigarette at 5 to 12, then come again, they won't let you back in. What do you mean your photo runs out at midnight? You're not going to change well, no, from day to day, are you? What's that Because mean? the pass, the pass <laughs> runs out. Oh, ID. Oh, you see. Potter, you walk off. You get a the pass picture, for the day. The picture does change, though, depending on um, how good the skills of the photo. Do you know what? They don't uh, warn the you they're taking guard. the photo either. What they've got... Well, <laughs> Alex... So yeah, all angles in there. Only you would care about that, really. I do care about that. I haven't shaved at anything. <laughs> <laughs> What they do is they've got like a little webcam, right, which they have on a wire, and, yeah. and they they hold it up and they take a picture of you, they capture a little photo of you, and it appears on this pass. Mm. And when we first came the other day, the guy's kind of lined up going, just left it, uh, okay, just stay still. <coughs> All right, lovely, got it. Tonight, right, I swear on my life, the pass I have to get to this building is from my nose upwards. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, mm. what I'll do, I'll have to show it to you. It's like a man peeking over a fence. Yeah. <laughs> Can he stick it so online? I uh, will try, but I expect that they will. I'll be walking down the corridor, and these guys will turn up with guns and helicopters and sniffer dogs, <laughs> and then all of a sudden they'll cover up the bottom half of my face. They'll go, "Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Miles. We didn't realise it was you. <laughs> we weren't aware you had a mouth and a chin. <laughs> I've got several chins actually." <laughs> but then you get, and then you get here, and then this morning, Reese and I come in just after everybody else, and, and you get. So you're in the building, get out of the lift on on the, the, the floor where Sirius Radio is, mm. and there's a big glass door, but we don't have a, a security thing to get in, and there's a desk for a security guard, but there's no security guard sitting there, obviously. Because the security guard, I've now worked out, is in its own secret, secret hiding place. And the reason we know this is, we're kind of standing there, so I, I have to ring Alan in the studio or whatever, and his phone's off, so I'm trying to get hold of someone else. All of a sudden, we hear, we're in a corridor, we just hear, what's your name? <laughs> and I'm like, who the hell, what was that? Did I just say that? <laughs> what are your names? <laughs> and there's, there's no camera that you can see. There's no speaker that you can see. So Reese and I turn around randomly <laughs> like something out of the prisoner and go, Reese and Chris? <laughs> and then 30 seconds later, you just said, open the door. Like, okay, okay. Thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> randomly shouting to the ceiling, thank you. Reese and Chris. <laughs> Carrie, what did you get up to yesterday? I met David Beckham yesterday. Wow! Get you. Yeah, so it was all over the, the news. You've probably seen windy it. Day. He was opening a, a, a football academy in Greenwich in London. In terms of going out to Germany, I also had a chat with him about what kind of food they might eat out there. Do you like sausage? Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently they, they, that's all they eat out there. In Germany? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love sausages. <laughs> And um, Christmas, what are you up to at Christmas? That's put you off there, hasn't it? It has, yeah, you made me laugh. <laughs> um, I'm going to spend Christmas in London. You know, I'm going to come back with the kids in Victoria and we're just going to spend the time in London. What was that all about? So, yeah, Germany, yeah, do you like sausages? <laughs> oh, 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 God. And you know that in her mind all she's singing is, I want to sleep with him. I don't care what he's saying. I could give I could give him his own county. I own four of them. We could run Berkshire together, the king and queen of 
Berkshire. Yeah, I really like sausages. <laughs> it's one of my favourite foods in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> one of my most favourite ever. <laughs> yeah, to, together with uh, bacon, <laughs> eggs, bread. Hey, we saw somebody driving around on a Segway in New York. Did you? Yeah. We still, we still need to get one of those. I know. I don't think you can take it up the M1. <laughs> no, 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 what are you going to say then as well? <laughs> That'll be Chris taking yes. up the M1. Do you, yeah. do you remember what? Do you remember when Werther's? Do you remember? Were you sitting with me outside the pub when Werther's was on his scooter and he went up the hill? Yeah, <laughs> it's doing about two miles an hour. Happy birthday, by the way, to Werther's. It's, Happy birthday, uh, Chris! It's uh, a special day today. I mate had a scooter, right? I was sitting outside the pub having a beer, and he's on the hill. <laughs> And we suddenly hear beep 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 beep. He had, and it had like it was like a three cc. You get more power out of a hairdryer. <laughs> <clears throat> and he waves like this. <laughs> and we've got hey, how are you? Are you coming down for a drink? He's like yeah. Just a bike home, and I'll see you in a minute. All right. <laughs> he was still there for two minutes. <laughs> he could have stopped for, for a pint without getting off the bike. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye bye bye. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> no, Do you want a push? I'm all right. Gotta love him. Anyway, Alan's really irritating at the moment as well. <laughs> but he is, though. Well, more than normal. It's just on Friday, because he's, cause he's not used to working early hours anymore. You walk in, he's like, he's like blooming Snow White. He's prancing around, he's wide awake. Big dress on. And he had that jacket. Morning! Up. Shut up. That buddy. jacket that he bought in New York. Yeah. You know, Which is disgusting. Tough one, yeah. like, It is, and he needs to be told. It's some, like a fellow in New York, right, seriously, you couldn't have sold a worse-looking jacket to Stevie <laughs> Wonder. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Take that. Hooray! Look. Morning. How are you right. all? Right. All right. Good to meet you. This is great. This is very exciting. Can't believe you wanted us in 1995 and didn't get us. Thinking we didn't get you. You know what I mean? I'm gonna That's tell you. Yeah. Well, we were you were very busy though. To be fair. Where were you working? 95. Uh, is it Signal? Signal in Stoke. Signal in Stoke. And then Luton. Why don't you have a house? Me? Oh. I do have a house. It's, I'm moving into it in about well the week of Christmas. Monday. Say. That's the house which was on the telly. Yeah. 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 Mind you, on the TV show, Jason doesn't have a house. You just have a car and a beefer that you just... <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason has a beefer. You Jason randomly just kind of drive round and round in circles up a mountain for no reason whatsoever. That's what we thought for it's ten years. Sp about. Spent all this money on yeah, petrol. So <laughs> <laughs> what? I thought you spent all you take that money on petrol driving round a beefer. <laughs> yeah. Everybody Where do you live, thinks. Jason? Oh, actually, no idea. I just... <laughs> I go all the way up. I sleep in the car. I go all the way back down again. <laughs> but you know what? The weird thing is that documentary is plodding along quite nicely, and it's obviously very pro, you know, take that, and that's what it's all about. And it's not a dodgy documentary, and it's not, you know, kind of trying to catch you out or anything like that. It's all for, and then randomly, they show that clip of you, which makes you come across that you're a little bit loopy. <laughs> Does it? Well, you, you were there because I don't explain that you hear, you know, I hear, I'm just, I'm not voices, but don't get me wrong, I'm not mad with anything. As you go round and round and round in circles, <laughs> off a mountain, <laughs> which never got explained. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> National Radio One. Holy Slay. What the Is hell that a is remix? going on there? Whoa. Oh, the jingle machine is going mad. Let's try it again. Oh, huh? What? National Radio One. It's the guy who does the tracks on X Factor. Yeah. Holy Slay. Whoa. Whoa. Hello. Presents. He... Now, when I wrote that, I'm sure I wrote it in order. Yeah, I would have thought so. It's it's one of them. It's one of them new ones where you just move the end around. Right. Okay. I think we'll be all right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to, to explain what it is? Well, basically, right. somebody is, has rearranged all the studio overnight. Right, yeah. Two years of working in this, in a, or a year rather, mm. working in this brand new state of the art studio. Everything's perfect. Somebody decides to come in last night and change all the buttons around! I'm there going, what's... I'm trying to re the CD thing to start. And I'm like, what's it? What's this? And Rachel goes, you press the wrong button. I'm like, excuse me, love. I don't think so. Because you press the wrong button, they've moved all the buttons around. They haven't told us. Hmm. Just moved everything it's around. It's done it. Come on, Dave, let's rock! Right, start. That one. Ricky. It's going to be good today, I think. We are off and running. Seriously, how difficult can it be? 
Rachel's got instructions. Right, 6.58, I've got it now. We're off and running right here at Radio 1. Ah, oh, tits. Calling all the stars to fall And catch the silver sun If you need help with the instructions, Dave, let me know. Apparently, right, here we go. in order to use the above button, I, I got that. left I a got massive lead here as well. Look, look at that. What is that? Five what? meters of cable. What's that wire? I don't know. It's just hanging out the desk. <laughs> what day was it? We came in the other day, and you went, "What's that under the desk of my foot?" And you kicked something, and not... it was the backing yeah. of the desk, which which contains which is the bit which keeps all the electrical wires in place. It's just fallen out. <laughs> just hanging down. <laughs> Why now? Why all of a sudden now is the whole thing falling apart? It, I reckon you know what it is. It's the same with the first. Obviously, the guarantee ran out. Doctor, there was a man last night at the radio and Christmas party and dressing me with his eyes. You know, I mean, that's all right, isn't it? I can't get pregnant by a man undressing me with his eyes, can he? You know, no, of course you can't, unless he's cockeyed. That's the guy. That's the guy. I didn't think it was that bad. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't funny. I think you were right to sort of hold back. I think you've been a bit harsh on yourself. Oh, dear. Hey, roll the tape on that, Colin mm. Burgess. Absolutely. Oh, it was an interesting day at the doctor's the other day. I said to him, do you know, doctor? There's more. I said to him, doctor, <laughs> I've got, I've got <laughs> jelly and ice cream in one ear. Mm. Yeah. And custard and hundreds and thousands in the other ear. I know this one. And I'm, I'm having trouble hearing people. I'm not he eating said, he you're a trifle deaf. <laughs> Oh, no, it's not that one, is it? <laughs> You're not eating properly. <laughs> that, was... <laughs> that famous joke with trifle in the air. <laughs> Oh, you're not eating properly. You're not having a balanced oh, diet. Isn't, isn't there another one that does? You're not doctor, eating? doctor, I've got roast beef and Yorkshire pudding uh, all, all in my hair. I've got uh, jelly and ice cream all over my face. And I've got custard and chocolate all the way down my shirt. You're not eating properly. That's the gag. That's you see. the one. <laughs> I knew there was one of them that was, wasn't eating properly. That's the gag. Yeah. Oh. I do like the trifle death. I don't know any jokes at all. I also went to the doctor. I said to him, Doctor, Doctor. I can't believe we're doing these gags. Yeah. Doctor, Doctor. I, d I really think there's something seriously wrong with me. Um, I think my whole body is is is, is just collapsed. Mm. Why? He goes, well, look, it hurts when I press my shoulder here. Oh, this really is good. Hurt. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It hurts when I press my, my stomach here. Uh, it hurts when I press my leg. It hurts when I press my knee. It hurts when I press my face. I think, what's wrong with me? He goes, you've broken your finger. That's, that's what he says. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Get that one. Dave oh. went to the doctors one day. He said to the doctor, doctor, something's definitely wrong. He says, what's wrong with you? He goes, sometimes I feel like a wigwam. Sometimes I feel like a teepee. What did he say to you, Dave? You are too tense. That's what he says. Kyle walks into the doctor says, he's got a mince pie stuck up his bum. <laughs> doctor says, I'll give you some cream for that. I do like, I like that one. <laughs> what? Mm. You know that? Mm. It's kind of clean, but not. Yeah. Like it. That's not clean at all. Well, you know what I mean. It's not really grubby, nah. but... The fellow walks into the doctor's. He's completely naked. He's wrapped in cling film. Next mm -hmm. toe. And the fella says, I think I'm going mad, Doctor. Am I going mad? And the doctor says, well, I can clearly see your nuts. <laughs> Isn't it good the way he tells them? Because you think it's a story. You do, don't you? It's a yeah. joke. <laughs> Just comes Brilliant. and bites you at the end, doesn't it? It's amazing. 8.53. Mm -hmm. What? <laughs> what? That's not the record. You're playing Enya. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in Put it for a joke. <laughs> oh, no, I know, and I was going to just play it. Let's play it anyway. We're educating, educating the nation about fresh new music. National Radio 1. <laughs> that noise there? What's that? <laughs> That's Judy Finnegan laughing at me there. <laughs> sounds like a sounds like a joke. I know, <laughs> but it's not. It's Judy. She was very giggly yesterday, wasn't she? Well, it's my mission. I wanted to make her laugh so much that that she actually weed herself a little bit. That was my plan, but it didn't really happen. It wasn't the longest television item I've ever done in my life. I've got to be honest with you. Oh, one stage, as I was, I was thinking, is this on till six or seven? <laughs> as I was looking at the clock time, because you, you went on about what ten to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a little drink after the show. Right. Uh, let's move on then. National Radio 1. Rachel didn't see 
uh, Rich and Judy last night, OK? So she has no idea at all what the donkey references on the text messages coming in is all about. You missed a belter, Rach. <laughs> all she knows is that I appeared on Richard and Judy with a donkey. Now... <laughs> with Judy laughing hysterically. <laughs> <laughs> Such a bad laugh. You wouldn't recognise that as <laughs> you wouldn't Judy at all, would you? would you? So no, that was it was it was interesting. So have you any idea what might have happened on the show, Rachel? Um no, not really. I don't really want to guess. See if I can give you a clue with this. <laughs> Mama Mom, Richard and Judy riding a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing the donkey wasn't real, but it might have been a toy donkey. Do you know, that's why he wasn't saying much last night. <laughs> In the car all the way home. Would you like some more wine? Mm. Donkey. It was a very weird item. The <laughs> lovely, lovely Chris Moores is keeping the skiing Santa and not helping the Bolivians. Well... He's keeping the Christmas hamper and doing nothing. What was that for, Judy? It was for the For dogs. his lovely dogs in the Batsy Dogs home. And he's not helping... Somalia. Yeah, Ethiopia. yeah, that's Ethiopia. true. But look at all the lovely stuff that I've got. <laughs> By the way, I read the, the laugh montage from uh, Richard and Judy from yesterday. If you put a bit of music at the end of it, it sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> the gorillas, isn't it? Judy riding a donkey! <laughs> well, it took up 30 seconds of the interview tickling Judy's chin. Mm. You know? Anyway, so your show, great. Here's a donkey. Bye-bye. That was it. That was the whole interview. I mean, I'm not moaning. It was very nice. They're very nice to you there. You should have come along. Let's rock. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a brand new year. Cause Chris is back at breakfast, so let everybody cheer. We've kind of changed some features, but that really shouldn't matter. The only thing that's really changed is Chris has got much fatter. Chris Moyle Show, a fatty bomb bomb, international radio one. Good morning, it's Monday, it's the 9th of January 2006. Scary, eh? Yeah, we're starting our third year of the show now, which is great. You know, we're one of the longest running radio and breakfast shows already. We are now, aren't we? <laughs> We've outlasted uh, Kevin and Zoe. Mark and Lard. Sarah Cox and Rajesh Merchandani. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, we'll have a team of people uh, doing journalism all the way through the night. These bulletins every five minutes. Woo! That was a success. Sarah saved that one. God love her. And, uh... We're about the yeah. longest since Mayo, aren't we, now? <laughs> no, Sarah... Sarah did, like, uh, I think just over three and a half years. She, she did, yeah, you're right. Which, you know, I didn't realise it was that long. Pish, is what we say to that. <laughs> yeah. Off. No, pish, that's like... All oh, right, OK. Oh, sorry, be I off what with you. Yeah. Dave's face was a picture to them, by the way. <laughs> Dave, you've gone bright red. <laughs> oh, I just wasn't expecting that, Dominic, at 8.15 in the morning, prime time. Yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Because it's not like you're saying... No, I'm not saying... Double S. It's no. like you're saying SH. Yes. Di a different meaning. That's right. Well, that means the same as Scotland, is it not? But he's not... It might do. But he's not, well, no, I mean, that's, that's what I was thinking of. Because... But he's not Scottish. Exactly. Well, that's all right, then. Yeah. You know... So it's not, you know, that's like saying, you know, I don't know, a wooger mm. might be in Cantonese, you know, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know. Oh. I think this is my favourite link so far. It is good, isn't it? A wooger could be... <laughs> could be. You just don't know, do you? Yeah. You know? Pish. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> tomorrow on the show, by the way, Steve Coogan and Rob Bryden are coming into the studio. They're filming around, uh, 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 cock... Oh, dear, Ooh. I'm sorry. Hello. Cock <laughs> and bull. <laughs> cock and bull is the name of the movie. <laughs> Steve Coogan and Rob Bryden. Hello. 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 Welcome. Good morning. Thank Good morning, Mr. Morning. Bryden Good and Mr. Morning. Coogan. Good See, we walk you in. It's just like doing Letterman. It is. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's exactly what he was saying. Yeah. So, good morning. Um, we have some questions from our audience. 
which I'd like to throw at you. All right. Okay. Right. Hello, Chris. My name's Tim. I'm from Long Sutton. I'm a lorry driver and I deliver steel. Oh, got to be for the big man. Yeah, yeah I'd love to hear his okay. question. Rob, can you do your impression <laughs> of Ken Bruce? It's even better than Dave. Uh, Radio 2. Uh, thanks to Terry. Support master now, Radio 2. Uh, it's, it's by Beverly Craven and woman to woman. Or as I like to think of it, girl on girl. And if that way, it's Radio 1, it's early morning. Good morning, pop master. Me, I'm like Terry, but not quite. Uh, it's a shame Dave, that that's wasted on their entire listenership, really, isn't it? Well, no, because Dave and I do yeah, our but... Wogan and Ken Bruce impressions. Oh, really? Oh, oh it's one, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Steve, Steve, they're being postmodern. We can't compete. We're not no, being it's postmodern. It's just very. It's been crap. That's all it is. Many <laughs> people think we're, we're surreal and postmodern. We're just. We're, we're not. We're just poor. All right, but go on then. Do your do your Terry and Ken. You start. No, I'm not going to. I'm not, because I won't. I can't embarrass myself. In, I can in do two, Terry. In front oh, of Terry. Steve does do, a great. Steve you, Coogan does a very good You do Terry. Go on. The thing about when you do Terry Wogan is you have to do it. Oh. I like that one, well, and then go right down there. Thank you. <laughs> right, so, okay. You can see it's going round and round. Oh, okay, so yeah. say, that's right. Terry Wogan there. Thank you, Terry. And uh, we'll more from Terry later. Oh, no, I'll hand it over to you there. It's great to see you looking there. That's very nice. Ah, uh, well, Beverly is Craven coming out. Is that cashmere you went there? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's cashmere on delivery, Terry. <laughs> Cash on delivery. Cash, cashmere in hand. Uh, <laughs> Chris Rear, road to hell. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, what I even liked about that impression was the fact that when you said Chris Rotel, you moved your hands over his hips. I saw that. That's commitment. That's, me that's method impressioning. Thanks very much. Hey, <laughs> hey, Rob, can you do your impression of Roger Moore? Sorry, that, I just added that at the end. Steve's favourite actor is Jack Lemmon. Uh, oh, hang on, he's doing an even deeper one. can you do Roger Moore when he shouts? I mean, everyone can do him when he's uh, being calm and collected. I can't do him when he shouts. Perhaps you'd like to illustrate. <laughs> well, when he shouts, perhaps someone's about to throw a dagger onto a bed where he's lying with a beautiful woman. He might say, move! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the yellow kitchen, Suzanne has cooked up a remarkable... You, you can't just start doing your Lloyd Grosso unless you've been invited to do it. <laughs> I started doing my Michael Caine instead for no reason at all. Well, I <clears throat> you've got the mother Michael no, has no. got a very no, destroyed no, voice. No, no. When you do Michael, you have to speak very, very quietly like that. And then when you get angry, you get very, very bloody angry and speak like that. But nowadays, he's got so old that the back of his mouth has gone and a lot of the voice a lot has gone and a lot of the form of the words has gone and he just made a noise like that. You sound like you've got... You sound like you've got... This is Michael Caine with a stroke. Okay, God forbid. Please, please, let's not let it happen. That's terrible. No, 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 that's an incapacitated Michael Caine, which not many people do. Have you got a cleft palate? You're so outrageous, yeah. Rob Bryden. I'm a, I'm a bit like um, you're, you're, I'm a bit like Howard Stench, aren't I? You're, you're you're the most, you're, he's the most outrageous person that I've ever met in a V-neck sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Did I disappoint you? Is this really the song we need to be playing? Are yes. you sure? Yeah, yeah, this is good. At ten past eight in the morning. At ten past eight. Yeah. He we want... very quickly. <laughs> This is, according, according to Dave, uh, this is what the kids want to hear at ten past eight in the morning. This is what the youth of today want to hear, is Telling it? You, this to is, get them out of bed. This is cutting edge, this. Mm -hmm. All right, here it is, then. Did I disappoint you or let you down? Should I be feeling guilty or let the judges frown? Because I saw the end before we'd begun. Yes, I saw you were blind and I knew I Yo! You have been the one. You have You have been uh, thank you to Danny Robbins from the One Click Comedy Show. That's his. It's good, though, isn't it? Very good. James Blunt never sounded so good. Booyaka, booyaka. Right, 12 minutes past eight, Coldplay at Radio 1. Oh, brother, I can't, I can't How many people mumble in that house?
I'd like I'd like one of us to go in just for a couple of hours. I, I could see Dominic Byrne in there really easily. Hello, I'm Dominic Byrne. <laughs> I saw them, Dominic. So, I'm sorry, I didn't understand a word you said, Mr. Tall American Man. <laughs> Can, can somebody can somebody translate for me, please? What what he just said, Barry Moore? Can you translate what Dennis just said? Oh, so are you saying what? Again, I'm sorry. What the hell is going on? I can't understand a word you're saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa easy, Tiger. Yesterday on the show, Max Beasley and Comedy Dave did a beautiful bongo off. It's dueling bongos, dueling bongos. Mm. By the way, if, if you hear me re say anything again, we want to use this bit in the podcast. So, um, bear with me if I, if I stumble. What they did was they were playing the bongos uh, against each other, like dueling banjos, okay? And, however, on the podcast, we can't actually play the banjo music. They were bongoing along to the track, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the podcast rules of the BBC are we are, we're not allowed to put any music on there that we don't have permission to use. We right. don't have permission to use the banjos, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a shame. It's a good piece of music. It was brilliant. So, um, I can play it to you now, which is just their bongos from the microphones, but without the, the banjos in the background. Okay. I mean, for example, when we did it on the air, it sounded like this. <laughs> and it works, right? Doesn't that work a trick? Lovely. Okay, but take away the banjos from it, and it all sounds like this. <laughs> kind of loses something in translation, yeah. isn't it? It's like tribal, isn't it? It is, isn't it? You can't really tell who's who. You're just no, bashing just away without a... any kind of tune. Oh, yeah! Oh, come on! <laughs> that sounds rubbish, doesn't it? That sounds rubbish. <laughs> but honestly, with the banjo music, I, it sounded a treat, it's trust me. That. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. And there's nothing worse. And you realise this when you're off the drink. You, you know, all your friends who don't drink, if you have any. It's just how boring it is. When you, especially when you go into the pub at, like, I don't know, half nine on a Friday night. You stick your head in. I'll stay, I'll stay everyone for half an hour. And everyone's drunk and you're mm. sober. Everyone's... Irritating. And now you understand when you're in the boozer and we've had a good old drink and a mate pops in and kind of looks at you all weird and goes, yeah, whatever. And you're like, what do, what do you mean, whatever? <laughs> because what you've actually said is, well, whatever. Because you're drunk, but everyone else is drunk with you on the same level, so no one realises. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Have you ever gone to the pub? Me and my mate Martin in the pub at night, we had a great old laugh. And then the next day... I saw somebody, you know, walking down the street who was in the pub, the same pub, and they went, ho, 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 but you had a bad head this morning? What? Uh, well, yeah, I did, actually. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> what do you mean, hoo-hoo? What are you on about? <laughs> so I rang my mate Martin, I went, I just bumped into somebody from last... He said, well, I had a phone call from someone going, ha <laughs> you two last night. He said, well, were you drunk last night? And I went, I go, you seemed all right. He went, yeah, so did you. We were obviously exactly the same drunk on the same yeah. level where he seemed fine to me. Um, right, so listen to this. Saturday night, uh, Saturday, well, I went to the Spurs game at White Hart Lane and um, I went with Sophie and Sophie's uncle Trevor. And, we're, and I'm driving to the game. We're driving through a little area of London and um, it's one of those junctions, one of those awkward junctions, you've got to take a right. Mm. Uh, but right at the junction, you, the road you're pulling into, there's a crossing. So if a car takes a right and then someone's crossing the cross and they have to stop, mm. meaning you can't cross and then yeah. kind of hold the traffic up a little bit if you're halfway across, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's a woman crossing the road with a dog. She gets about a quarter of the way across the crossing and stops while her dog has a crap. Right? Mm. So there's traffic building up and I'm like this, but, be put, but go, go round it. You know, use it as a mini roundabout. Go! And she stood there like this, looking at the cars, while her dog is having a poo on the crossing. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So eventually she moves on, and the guy, you know, in front of me moves. Mm. So we start driving down the road. And then someone else is pulling off at uh, uh, turning left, so we have to slow down and let them pull out or whatever. And the woman uh, comes level with the car. So I wind the window down and I shout out, 
Dirty cow! <laughs> and I drive off. However, there's some temporary traffic lights about 100 yards away, right? So I'm stood at the lights. She comes running up the road, <laughs> pelting up the road, comes up to the window, and I swear on my life, shouts... I'm not the dirty cow, it's the dog! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I start laughing and I think, well, I, well, I, can't, I can't deny that. Chris, yeah. tell them the rules mm -hmm. to our new game. Right, in front of you is the alphabet board. It contains questions from A to Z. It's up to you to be with news in your home. Anything you know the answer, the person who gets the question right takes control of the board and chooses the next letter. Each question correctly answered scores you a point. It's the first one to three that goes through the golden round. Are you both ready to play the game? I'm ready. All right, let's play Beep Beep Busters. The board is sitting there waiting. So let's play Beep Beep Busters. Uh, all right, uh, Abba, you're our reigning champion. You get to choose letter first. Off you go. Uh, can I have an S, please, Chris? An S? S. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Amy, you can buzz in if you know. Good luck. What S is what you'd have to do if you were drinking liquid through a straw? Suck. Suck. Yes, it is. Well done. What an unfortunate time for the phone line from you on the, on the letter S there. Suck. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good luck. I'm only off come. Right, what you got for us then? Okay, I've got a feeling you might not like these, but here you go. There you go, Dave. Feels like a book. Katie Price, Jordan, Jordan a whole new world. Wow. Because mm. Katie is going to be on the show next week, and obviously this will, will fill you in with her whole life. Sussex, February 2006. I don't love you anymore, Katie. I stared at Peter in total disbelief, unable to take in what he'd said, the words cutting into me like connives. It's not true, you don't mean it, I cried out. You do love me, I know you do. This couldn't be happening. I felt the room spin round and a feeling of dread gripped me. Look at me, Pete, I begged him, believing that if he saw the love in my eyes, he could never leave. But he turned away and started walking toward the door. I've gone into a bit of Frank Spencer. <laughs> I tried to run to him, but I found I couldn't move. I was paralysed. He reached out to open the door. I summoned all my strength and screamed out, Oh my God, no! It's okay, baby. You were dreaming, says the next line. Oh, oh shove it up your ass. Are you having a laugh? I screamed at him, no, don't leave. And besides, you can't go because the dog did a whoopsie in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> What's that shimmy, Dave? <laughs> he can shimmy. Nice. Yes, sir, he can shimmy. <laughs> and that'll do. Right, I love it. Right, we're out of here. That's another show done. Yeah? Yeah, that's another hundred quid earned. Right, Joe Wiley is next. Have a good day. Goodbye. <laughs> It's half time of the show, it's a bit where Dave will say... <gasps> Let's... Oh, I'll fix the echo. I'll fi I'll fix... I'll <laughs> fix the echo. For you, uh, That's Mom. very scouse of you. Hey! <laughs> calm down! When you text the landline now, Tom Baker, a BT landline, Tom Baker's voice speaks it back to you. I spent the whole of about two and a half hours in the studio yesterday uh, making BT a fortune by doing things like this. Hello, Scott. It's Tom Baker speaking. I'm very sorry to call you at home, but I just wanted to say a bit... 
I can't remember what that's broadcastable or not. You know, I think it is, but don't risk it. Okay. Yeah. We've got him doing station identification. Radio 1. Right. Uh, we also have this. Now, I'm going to play it to you. It's, it kind of doesn't work, but kind of does work. This was Allard's offering uh, to Tom Baker for the show today. Tell me what you think of this. You're listening to the Chris Moyle Show. Jugs. Right. Jugs? Jugs. Because he wanted Tom to say something rude and childish. Then Tom continues. Oh, you're so childish. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the but... same delivery as Paul Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly wrong inflection. You laughed at that, didn't you? Will he? There you go again. You really should go up. No. Okay, then. Boobies. <laughs> Happy now? There's another one which I did, and uh, Will Kinder was in the studio at the same time, and he said, I want to hear him say this word. Mm. It's, it's, you know, it's a bit rude. So I put it in. Alan hasn't edited it out, right? Well, so it's in the computer now. Yeah. Do you want to hear what it is? Is and it you Well, you tell okay. me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> take this headphones then. Okay. All right. So I will. I'll play this to just Dave and his headphones, mm -hmm. right? Now, can you hear that? No, I can't no, hear right, okay. thing, No. Right. Ready? His. Turn the music up just in case. Right, that one. Now, I don't think you can say that. Well, that's what I thought. Do you I want mean, to hear a rage? Okay. <laughs> I, I would say that that is um, on the outskirts of okay. offensive. I'm now going to play it to Rachel. Rachel is now listening to it. Here we go. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe maybe closer into town then. But Alan didn't edit that out. I'm like, you know, that, that was just for us. Leave the rest in. Uh, can you all hear me? What was that? What was that? Oh, sorry. Sounded like Barry White. All of a sudden, I can hear sorry. Barry White. So sorry. Can everyone hear that? Yeah, I yeah. hear Barry White. Sorry. What the hell was that? My fault. I'm so sorry. Was my news sorry. computer playing Barry White? Is that somebody's profile <laughs> on MySpace yes. and Barry White plays? Yes. Thank God it was only Barry White. Mm. I, pre I started pressing loads of buttons. I'm thinking, what the hell? Why am I, why am I hearing Barry White? <laughs> <laughs> that could have been really dangerous then, Alex. Oh, just a yeah. bit. Whose site was that? I don't know. I had a few of them. Well, put it this way. Somebody who likes Barry White. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. Because I thought it was just me hearing it. I thought it was going a bit insane. Anyway, move on. <laughs> Look at that. We finished Beat Beat Busters and we still have some time spare. That's because Reese had a word with me yesterday and asked but if we could go to it early. Play a song. Really? Yeah. Okay, all right then. After all the broken stones that were thrown. That's a new one from Simon Webb. Good, I like that. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, thanks for listening to the show. I'm playing everything here, yeah. With us playing the game is our defense. Yeah, that would be right. Let's get it all out, shall we? Right, thank you for listening to the show today. We're back tomorrow. God bless you, one and all. Joe Wiley's next. Have a good day. Goodbye! Tomorrow, by the way, is the Chris Moyles Retox Special. I will be drinking live on air and eating pasties from 7. What two tracks we have coming up? And don't forget, go listen now for the non-British track. If we end up playing, you know, I don't know, Kylie Minogue. She ain't British, you see. No, it's not. She's not bloody British, you see. <laughs> uh, that's when you phone up, innit? You can get... Stop that now. That's when you phone up, innit? When we play a track, that's not British. You got... Oh, Dave, man, seriously. What's Bratash? What's that? <laughs> I think you'll find. Many Welsh people now text and go, actually, Chris got, got British. Bob on. <laughs> Like Cardiff International. <laughs> Tom bloody drones in it. And I gotta tell you, I be reading about Sienna Miller, you see. She moaning about all the photographers and paparazzi, and then she tells them to take my photograph in it. You went slightly Italian then. Well, you did. So she's a moaning <laughs> about. <laughs> <laughs> right, West Country to start with, and then we. we yeah, we went right across Rome. Europe, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Look, you two are just... All right, Dom, straight in, uh, uh, into the deep end. Let's see your Tom Jones. Tom bloody Jones, isn't it? This is what I would have done, boo. <laughs>
<laughs> He's not from Guernsey. That wasn't bad, actually, I think. You're f- Tom. Yeah. OK, so be Tom. Hello. Right, Tom, what do you think about the Sienna Miller story? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know but... What? All right, bud. That's like Dexter That's just Kenmore. a <laughs> I can't do Welsh. You can't well. do Welsh. Dave, let's see you. Hello, Tom Jones here. Tom Blimey. Hello, it, Tom. Did that sound? Did that sound winch? Uh, it's out, well, because you, you, well, you said, hello, Tom Jones here. It's hard to tell with the four words. The thing is, I'm not Welsh. No, I know, Dave. <laughs> and, and neither am I. Tom, what do you think about the Sienna Miller story? I think she's got a point, really. <laughs> she's got a pint? Point. <laughs> All oh, right. Okay. I think she's got a point. Do you think the pe- uh, the uh, paparazzi uh, rules need to be looked at? I think it. Uh, oh, that sounds a bit more <laughs> like Sven. <laughs> well, uh... Tom, who will you be picking for the next England game? Rain kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Rain kicks. He never gets an England side. Oh no, I'm not surprised. Right, let's get back to the Brits. Plus, this yeah, I'm getting really paid off. Seriously. I was looking at Miles World the other day, the unofficial Miles site, and aren't that all these whiners and whingers are moaning on the message boards about, oh, the show's not as good as it used to be, oh, I don't like Slope to Tarzan, and I'm like, what? God, switch it off. If you don't get it and you don't like it, don't listen. But I know that there's a lot of people who do like it, and what we do is we give the audience what they want to hear, it's what we, it's what we do. And I, it just it really annoys me when you get these people going... Oh, BB Busters isn't funny. Blah, blah, blah. Switch it off then. Don't listen. I don't care. Because uh, it's funny. Slampsy Tarzan is great. There you go. If you disagree with me, then uh, fair enough. But you're wrong. And I'm right. Chris wins. <laughs> I'm going to drop, drop Slampsy Tarzan because some uh, anoraks on a website are going... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's too much like local radio. It's a parody of local radio, you idiots. That's what it is. And we give away good prizes. And every time we do it, by the way, we have a full board of phone calls. That's right. Every one of the nine phone lines we have lights up instantly. What, all nine of them? All nine of them. So is it essentially the show policy that we don't care what you think? No, do you know, it's just those people who just go, uh, you know, I'll tell you what it is. All the, it's every single one of the people who moaned about car park catchphrase. Oh, car park catchphrase is boring now. Blah, blah. All the same people are going, I don't like BB Busters, they should bring back car park catchphrase. In fact, they should never have dropped it. Uh, okay, right. We need to talk about the Paris Hilton interview, and I'm glad that you're here for this, Alex, because oh. you, I think, were a bit disappointed with me yeah. last night. Yeah. Paris Hilton was there, and we discussed whether or not we wanted to interview Paris Hilton, and I came out with the funny idea that Dave and I, for the whole interview, should pretend that we're gay. Actually, right? camp as well. Yeah, no, yeah, no, well, you, you know what I mean. American kind of fashion stylist yeah. camp. Yeah. Now, um, I haven't heard this, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm slightly worried because I think this could be cringeworthy. Right, well, let me, before I play it, I have to explain. I bottled it. But from what I remember, you actually did start like that and then lost it very quickly. I lost it. So I think at the worst, my voice is normal, and at best, it's ever so slightly American. But, but, but it's rubbish. At one point, I referred to Dave as he, and then she <laughs> in the next line. I don't want to hear this, I don't think. Oh, uh, God, it's funny. Right, so this is me and Dave. Well, Dave did a better job than I did at being camp. I was rubbish. I apologise. Uh, this is us with Paris Hilton last night. Backstage at the Brits, 2006. Radio 1. Chris Moyles. Paris Hilton, ladies and gentlemen. You look gorgeous. Thank you. And I was going to wear that. <laughs> but I was going to wear that. At the last minute, Dave said, don't wear it. It's pretty because heavy. I don't think you could have worn it. I'm pretty heavy. No, this is a 10-pound dress. It's made with, like, all crystals and diamonds, so it's really heavy to wear. Wow. <laughs> this is made with cotton <laughs> in a sweatshop in Amsterdam. I don't sound, I don't sound at all camp, no. but my hands were like this. I was waving my arms around. And you can't get past the fact that throughout all this, as we said before, you have your shirt tied yeah. in a sort of, like a crop top. So I look camp, but I don't sound camp. That's hot. So welcome to the Brits. Well, well, welcome. And I'm sorry you didn't win anything, because you should have won something, in my eyes. Thank you. Well, I, 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 <laughs> we I both didn't mean agree that. on that. My album's we? not even out yet. Well, I don't care. It'll be out in May. They should have given you an award early. Thank you. You know, and then they could have given you another one next year. That's what I say. How long are you going to be in London for? Actually, I leave tomorrow because it's my birthday on Friday. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Are you having a party? Yeah, I'm going to Las Vegas. Can we come? 
You want, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> what kind of party is it? It's Las Vegas, so it'll be pretty wild. Great. Mm -hmm. I love Vegas. And you're leaving tomorrow? Yeah. When are you going to come back? I'll be back, I think, in a month or two. You've got to come back and see us. I definitely will. I'm here every summer. We'll go so. shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't got any money. Whereas you and I, we, we could spend. Yeah, we do. All right, well, it's beautiful meeting you. You're gorgeous. You're even more you. gorgeous in real life. Mm. Thank oh, you. God, sick and uh, have a great time. And come back with the album. Come and see us on the show. I will, definitely. And we'll see you on Friday in Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you, Paris. Thank you. See you at the parties. Backstage at the Brits, 2006. Radio 1. Chris Moyles. I, got a, I thought I was camper than that one. We would be rubbish as gays, wouldn't we? The picture's oh. good as well online. But the, the picture just looks like I'm a little bit ill because I was trying to put my hand out like I was a bit, ooh, and it just doesn't work. Mm. Dave's pose is great, though. Yeah. Have you seen it? Do I pull off being gay? Oh, no, not really. <laughs> I want to play the Madonna interview from last night. Uh, we've left it late in the show because um, there's some swearing in it, which we've beeped out. So you won't actually hear any swear words, but you'll hear the beep. Um, so if you, anybody listening to this who might be offended by it or feels they may be offended, please switch off now. I'm warning you now to switch off. And turn on again at 10 o'clock. Yeah, well, turn on again in like three and a half minutes. I don't want to patronise the rest of the listeners, but we have to do it. And um, I need to give you the option. If you, want, if you don't want to hear it, turn off. And if you've got little kids around, turn it off. Again, there is no swearing in it. It's just beeping. But your mind, you know, and all that. This is Madonna with us last night at the Brits. Chris Moyles backstage at the Brits. Radio One. Radio One. Hey, up it's Madonna! Woo! Yeah. It's good to see you. And you don't, don't. <laughs> All of you. Well, can't well, miss it. <laughs> Seriously. No, c c don't say that. Don't talk to your co worker yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> off. So, I'm sorry. I'm Edit sorry, point. Madonna. Alad went to your video shoot. Oh, you did? Yeah. And you, and you met him. And I, I, I have, heard it all before. I have, a met, I have a bet that you wouldn't remember him. And I win. I do remember him. Yeah, you please say you don't. <laughs> you f off. You said it. First. All right. But yeah, but we have to bleep it out. So it's just the more you f swear, the more f editing it is. Oh, well, good for f you. For two, I don't have to f edit it. It's f Jocelyn has to sit there and edit it. <laughs> so the poor girl now has to work till two. And if I say f it, it's three. Poor f girl. I know. <laughs> Alad? What? Nice to meet you. <laughs> See, she doesn't remember you. No, I do. So, Alad, you can f off. <laughs> My special project that I've been working on since before Christmas is that I, Chris Moyles, have decided I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write an autobiography. I'm 15,000 words into it. Really? Yeah, and I plan to publish it later on towards the end of the year. And it's about me and the show and all of you. And uh, it will hopefully come out possibly October. Wow, that's good. Blimey. And that's my news. An autobiography all about you. Yes, a book about me. Well, I thought I'd write about my favourite subject. What? Me. It was either that or chips. And I thought an autobiography about chips would be ridiculous. Do you know that with those random texts? I was going to say, is that, that, yeah, that's why you texted to yeah. ask how long I'd been here. Or Same something. with Long Man. I had to ask him some random text messages. Um, and uh, I've written about all of you. Alex is brilliant. <laughs> uh, You've so written 15,000 words. How many? 15,000 words I've written so far. How many do you need to write for a book? You know, 70,000. Is it? Is that proper book length? Yeah. 70,000 words. Wow. And uh, it's. Yeah, it's very exciting. Will it have pictures? It will have pictures. In the middle or all the way through? Well, I'm hoping about all the way through. They will be black and white. The reason for that is it's cheaper. Mm. I, I, I can't tell you how much I know about books now from the uh, last couple of months' worth of meetings. But, um, yeah, it's very interesting. Very good. So have you got, like, a major publishing deal or whatever? I plan to get a major publishing deal. Ah. And is there a title for said book? Yes, there is a working title, but I don't want to talk... I don't, can I say what the working title is? Me. I don't know. Is it me? Is it me? Just me. Just me. me. No. The working title is uh, The Truth, The Half Truth, and Nothing But The Half Truth. Nice. Because the idea originally was it was going to be a fake autobiography, and I started writing, and I wrote about 10,000 words and realised they're all true, there's no <laughs> lies in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that I will just uh, keep it going. But I'm going to put things in there that I haven't talked about on the air, and uh, just it's basically emptying my head onto paper.
It's very therapeutic. Mm, so I believe. They say that about books. However, I need I need to keep going back to write because I'm here's what I might do. I might make it half autobiography, half diary. Because depending on what mood I'm in that day depends on what I write about you. Mm. So for example, if you knocked me off one day, you're a scumbag. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, you're a lovely father and uh, loving uh, colleague. But it's good. There's lots of things in there. Already. And photos. And I plan to do some more uh, things. I might do a, a Q and A session with the listeners, but I'll only put the answers in the book. So we read the question out on the air, and then we choose which questions we're going to have. But I'll only put the answers. Nice. In the that's book. That's good. Do you like that? Mm. Yeah. So there you go. That's my book. That's good, isn't it? Is we get to have a book launch and everything. I've asked for it to be in Vegas, but I don't know if they'll uh, if they'll go that far. They said they said. Jersey. Hardback to start with, or hardback to start with. Yeah. Pro mate, this is proper book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, start saving your pennies because this this fellow ain't going to be cheap. This is your eighteen ninety nine. This will be, well, it might be cheaper. It might mm. be sixteen ninety nine. Sixteen ninety nine. But yeah, and out for Christmas then. Out maybe October. I have a deadline. I've got it. The reason I wasn't I wasn't going to announce it until it was one hundred percent. And I now have a deadline. Well, I've got to finish the damn thing. Mm. Wow. So my secret projects have been me sitting there every day on my laptop going. Um, I started, no. When I start, no. It all began, no. When I first, no. To me, no. Oh, balls, I'll put the kettle on. So that's pretty mm. much how it's been going so far. <laughs> hey, if you, if you want to buy it, 81199, say yes, I'll buy it. I just need a, a, a mm. rough estimate. If I don't get 100 text messages, I might chat the whole thing in. Oh, yeah, hello. Yes, that's the killers there, all the things that I've done. Uh, sorry about that. I was just uh, writing a few more chapters of the book. The end! How many chapters is 15,000 words? I have no idea. You haven't <clears> split it up? No, it's all over the place. I've no idea how to write a book. We'll talk about it later, but I just sit down and write whatever. It's in no particular order at the mm. moment. It's like, in the beginning, I was born. Now I work at Radio 1. Um, I like Dave. Um, once I did hospital radio. Um, Allard works on the show. And it's just so random. It's boring if it's in chronological order. Well, it, though, might, it? it probably will be. You know, I wanted to write as much as I could before the book people got their claws into me. But uh, but let's talk about it later. But okay. uh, I am writing a book. 70,000 words I have to write. I tell you what, it's amazing how much padding you do. You know, instead of once upon a time, you write. Do you know, I remember way back when, once, I don't know, possibly, I'm not sure when the date was, but it was upon a time, but that fills out more words. Do you do the thing, though, where suddenly you've been writing all afternoon or something, and you know, you know that when you started, you'd done, let's say, two and a half thousand words. Yeah. And then you go, blah, 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 and then at least every two minutes you go, word count. Yeah. And then you go, <laughs> I've, done, I've done 2,622. And then you do another five minutes, you go, word count. It's a, it's a bit ridiculous. But when I'm on a, uh, I haven't written for a couple of weeks, because I, you know, I took a break for a while, but I wrote, I'm average about just under a thousand words a day every mm. time I sit down to write, which is why that time, remember the Jodie Marsh question when I, w I wanted Alan to ask how much you wrote? Yeah. And she said she wrote 90,000 words in a week. That's why I'm sitting to myself, yeah, in your ass, love. <laughs> no, let's not play that. With us playing the game is our defending champion, On Line One. Line One, what's your name and where do you come from? Hi, brother. From another mother. It's Donna from Newcastle. Hey! Hey! How's the How are you? I'm good. How's the family? They're fine. Yeah. Chris, can we be friends and can I come around and bring you sandwiches in the style of Chris Martin? Uh, well, no. You sick of fans? That's fair. What? You know, the other day when Chris Martin was on, you were probably stuck buttoning him. Please, can I come round to yours and I'll bring you sandwiches and your life will be empty without me in it. Yeah, because well, I, I want to be friends with Chris Martin. And I want to be friends with you. Yeah, well, it ain't going to happen, you weirdo. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but you and Chris Martin, you're not in the same league, love. He's the front lead singer Whatever. of one of the Whatever. greatest bands. Shut your face, I'm talking. You shut your face. Right, how many albums <laughs> have you had out? How many singles have you Are you married to a Hollywood superstar? I don't think so. you got three kids from some fucking room. Oh, pardon my language. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. I'm sorry. 
and came out. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. That's a fine for you. Anyway, I'll tell you what. Yes, yes, we can be friends. That'll be just nice easier. Other, I love you. We've, we've missed you, I love, Donna. I, I love you too, I've Donna. I you too. Don, can I be your peer, please? Just say yes. Yes. Whatever you <laughs> want. <laughs> Jolly well, yes. Give her whatever she wants. Come round to my house, Donna, as well, OK? All right, you, excellent. Come round and wash my mouth out with soap and I water. Will. We'll send you some CDs. <laughs> I am so sorry. I apologise. I'm just... Oh, my God. I've, and I never use bad language. Stick that one in your book. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're joking. Are you going to buy my book, by the way, Donna? Of course I will. Yeah, good. It's not actually written yet, but uh, when it is written, you can buy it. i tell you what, why don't you send us a signed copy? Yeah, OK. All right. For free? Anything you want, love. <laughs> <laughs> the world's your oyster at the moment. <laughs> it's like Green Day all over again. Thank God there's only five minutes left. Yes, <laughs> what I mean. Take it away, please, Roy, please, literally. So, till next time, from all of us to all of you, goodbye. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. Right, let's go home. Uh, Scott Mills is on at four o'clock this afternoon. More flirt divert messages from the weekend. Colin Edifer at one. The brilliant Zane Lowe, who is on top form at the moment, is on tonight at seven. And Joe Wiley with Jack Johnson on the show today. What a good. I love Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson. Give him my regards. Uh, show's next. Have a good day. Goodbye. See you on Wednesday. Andy Parfitt's here, actually, and he wants to uh, say... Oh, and Ben Cooper's just brought down as well. Yeah. They'd, they'd like to I'm see you, Chris. I'm double packed, love. I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we should do him again soon. Which changing one? Changing the beep words to something else. I enjoyed that. Are you having a laugh after yesterday's show? I think we're probably... Talking about nice, fluffy probably, words. Well, like Quince, I think we're probably best to avoid it at the moment. In the I, used a nice, I used a nice, fluffy word yesterday. I've got to mention that thing in the paper, Rach. I know you don't want me to, but I've got to mention it. It needs pointing out the hypocrisy of the world's media and somebody has to make a stand against it and it should be I. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Right. This is the fine world that we live in today, Dave, right? Sun newspaper, one of the biggest selling newspapers in Britain, mm. right? I see you've made page three, by Page the way. three, yeah. Dream come true. <laughs> I've made page three. It's the closest you've ever been to that bird on the right. With that horrible picture of me... Uh, shout into the microphone on our first day uh, over two years ago on this show. Um, and it's a story about me uh, letting slip with a rude word, or as the papers say it, stunning fans um, by using bad language. His foul mouth outburst, blah, 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 blah. Wrapped by bosses, blah, 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 blah. Th taking the moral high ground of going... Well, he did say naughty word, to be fair. It was a bit naughty. You know, there's, there's no place in this day and age for swearing on the radio. Here's Dominic Byrne. Hello. Hi, Dom. Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Hey, what's that in your hand, Dom? Dave, let's your... Not bite. I went to watch a film yesterday, Dave. <laughs> it's called The Matador. Is it? And it stars... Pierce Brosnan. You are going to go and interview Pierce Brosnan today. That's right. So, questions for Pierce Brosnan then? Yes, please. Why don't you ask him if he who oh, he yeah. thinks will be the next <laughs> James Bond? Yeah. Who 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 would be his choice for the next James Bond? Do you want it? But do you want to really go for? It? Do you want to go? Are you going to do any more Bond movies? Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not doing James Bond anymore. <laughs> All right. Who do you th who do you think should replace you? And when he when he says Daniel Craig, go really? Do you think that will be be the next one? <laughs> yeah. Is that is, for that hot tip? Is that a bit of inside information? Yeah. I can run out. Go. We've got a scoop. Straight down the bookies. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually. Uh, it's actually Daniel Craig. Da Daniel. No, you're thinking of Craig David mm. Pierce. James Bond. Double O Seven. License to kill. <laughs> no, that would be brilliant. That would be great, wouldn't it? Would, it wouldn't it? That's a good idea. If you have any questions for Piers Brosnan, Rachel will now tell you how you can get them into us. Check <laughs> out what she's done here. Send in your text with your question and your name and where you're from and start your text with the letters PB. 
Is it eight double one double nine? That's right. P B. That's the letter P. Yeah. And then B, not P E A. Not we. No. Or B E. It's P B. P -B. No space required. For Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. P B. Yeah. P -P. Eight double one double nine. It's early. I thought I'd make it simple. Yeah. The uh, the guy uh, taking over from me as James Bond will be uh, Craig David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's time for Celebrity Tarzan. Oh, it's the most talked about game we've done since King of Tickets. <clears throat> Here are the prizes then. Uh, albums from Gorillaz, Jack Johnson, Coldplay, Madonna, Kaiser Chiefs, Ordinary Boys, Will Young, Hard Fire, Rich Dascroft, Archie Monkeys, James Blunt. Today, Katie Tunstall, Eye to the Telescope. Did you ever have a telescope? Um, no. I didn't. Although, I've always had a thing about binoculars. Yeah. I mom, don't know why. My mum's got some binoculars. I've always loved binoculars. She likes to watch the ducks and the birds mm. out the window. If I go to someone's house and have binoculars, I have to pick them up and use them, even if they live somewhere where there is no view. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I'm, it's I'm true. telling the truth. You do have to pick them up. If you have a pair of binoculars, even in the studio, I'd have to go, oh, here's a go. What am I looking at? I can see. Oh, look, there's Rachel's nose really close up and blurred because she's too near. It is amazing, though, isn't it, how they work? Yeah, I've always been fascinated by binoculars. Mm. Yeah. I've got to admit, I'm not fascinated by them. I just really like them. I'm not fascinated by how they work. I kind of mm. know how they work. It's a combination of lenses and stuff. Yeah, but... yeah it's magnified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. It's 6.55am on Wednesday, the 22nd of February, 2006, and this is BBC Radio 1. Today is no ordinary day because it is on this day that we celebrate the life and works of the disc jockey Chris Moyles. We, the show team, are currently located in a top secret location somewhere in central London and the DJ Chris Moyles is blissfully unaware of the surprises that await him. So without further ado, let's cross live via the wonders of telephone technology to the main reception of our secret location and talk to the saviour of Radio 1 who should be arriving right now. Hello, special friend. This is Secret HQ. <laughs> I'm blindfolded. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so talk us through. So you're outside the okay. secret location I'm outside now. outside in the rain. I've no idea where I am. And Alad has is, um, is got his arm around me. Okay. There's a start to the day for you. What am I doing, Alan? Am I moving? No, you're standing here. Okay. All right, well, listen, I think it's about time that you took off your, your blindfold and told the nation what you can see in front of you. Okay, so you want me to take the blindfold yeah, off take now? take the blindfold off. So I can see. Okay, you ready, Alex? Can I just say, Alex got his hand on me and he's shaking. Okay, go. You... What can you see? <laughs> oh, I know where we are then. All right, okay, all right, fine. Now, is it, fair to, is it fair to say that where you are now is somewhere that you've wanted to do the show from for some time? Yes, because am I saying where I am? Yeah, say where you are. We're at, we're at Peppermint Hippo. No, we're not. To put. No. Um, we're, at the, we're at the BT Tower. How weird is this? So, it, this is great. So you've wanted to do the show from here for ages. We are currently, as, as I speak to you now, Chris, we are on the 33rd floor of the BT Tower in London. Okay. How's the view? The view is absolutely phenomenal as we watch the sun come up over London. It's amazing. Well, you know, the irony of me arriving here at this time in secret is the fact that I will actually miss then the sun rising over London. I know. We, we did try and factor that in, but the timing didn't work out, so we just thought we'd go with it. <laughs> and Richard, who's the uh, good morning, can you just do a good morning, everybody, for us on your own? Good morning, everybody. See now, see how it goes like that. <laughs> so when we're in the recording session, right, Sandy, who, who does it, always goes, what's the phrase you use? Relax. Yeah, all right, so because good morning becomes good morning. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get the gravel out of his voice. It's good though, isn't it? Good morning, Christopher Moyles. There you go. Let's all be upstanding for it's the Saviour's Day. Cause he's the one who wakes us up and gets us on our way. Chris, Dave, Dom and Carrie and there's Rachel who's the boss. And don't forget there's Alad and Tash and Irish Pixie Jaws. Lovely. Chris Moyle Show, like the Beachy Tower, International Radio 1. 
More stuff uh, still to come on the show, but I can't tell you what because I have absolutely no idea. But uh, let's play some songs from uh, Hard Fire next. Do you fancy about that, yes, Dave? Yes, please. All right. After we get some news from Dominic, it's just gone 8.31. Radio 1. Rangers take on Villarreal at Ibrox while in the Premiership, Newcastle hosts Charlton. A massive blow for Welsh rugby fans. Their influential captain, Gareth Thomas, is out for the rest of the... I was saying, uh, it's hard fight and uh, uh, and cash machine. All right, what was that last bit of sport, by the way, Carrie? I'm blaming your moon. Because you did that. Carrie, why, why did you play hard fry in the middle of the sports <laughs> bulletin? I just wanted to have a breather. Do you know what the funniest thing is, though, Carrie, is what? that even with that interruption, we're still in sport earlier than we are normally. I know. <laughs> it's still only 8.39. Let's talk about the weather again. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit clearer now than it was earlier, but it's cold and cloudy generally, with showers across much of England, brighter in Northern Ireland and Scotland. Beep, beep. New and improved. One road travel. Fabulous Dominic Burke. And it's time to say hello I again. Love, I love how we just carried on as if nothing happened. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, you know, it's professional team. Beep, beep. New and improved. One road travel. Fabulous Dominic. Go kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely, Mike. Thank you. It's now 8.40. Beautiful. Right. Do you know what's so, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. I didn't, I didn't have the jingle. I keep forgetting that the jingle singer's alive. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, you, you three. You two and Richard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, We have live jingle singers if you just wish the radio was. brilliant. I think we got that already. Are you ready, guys? Yeah, okay, okay, after ready. three, four. I'll just sing that bit again. The rich is getting more and more cocky as the month goes on. Stop by. Like. All right. Shall we proceed then? Yeah, okay. Well, basically, uh, to set this up, you've been up to the top of the tower before, have you not? Yes, I have. And what was the occasion when you were last here? It was children in need. That's right. Is because. It, is it Pudsy Bear? <laughs> here he is. <laughs> It is Pudsy Bear! It's Pudsy Bear! This is going to be a brilliant interview, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Pudsy... Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa! Pudsy... Whoa, 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 Oh, Pudsy's kissing me. Okay, so he, he wants to come and say hello and to welcome you back to the tower. Yes. Because he thought that'd be good. There's somebody in the suit, isn't there? Well, um, Chris. Yes? What time is it? Uh, oh, no, please, no. <laughs> it's <Yes>. the quarter! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was thinking, I was just thinking, I was thinking he's a bit animated, this Pudsy, isn't he? Knocking things over. Uh, how are you? Pudsy, you are right in my eye. Chico, <laughs> Chico, you are Pudsy Bear. How are you, I'm very well. How are you? Thank you very much, man. Oh, Can I just no. explain, by the way, the minor panic that we just had five minutes ago backstage? <laughs> because, literally, as that record was finishing, we couldn't find the Pudsy outfit. Really? Chico was upstairs trying to fashion something else by way of a disguise. How do you, co how do you convince Chico's agent that dressing him up as Pudsy Bear <laughs> is going to be a good career move for him? It's half-time on the show. It's a bit where Dave will now say... <sighs> Let's get ready to run! <laughs> I laughed on Do you know what? It's difficult. Do you know what? If we'd have just pushed you out the window, you wouldn't have needed to fake it. <laughs> and I reckon oh! 33 floors is probably the exact length before the drums kick in. Oh, oh man. Funny, funny. Should we have some more fun then? Ah? Huh? Should we have some more fun? Uh, okay. Some more half time style fun? Yeah. Okay. By the way, if you just switched the radio on, it's my birthday. Uh, and we're on the BT Tower, on the 33rd floor of the BT Tower overlooking London. It's beautiful so far. Longman was our first guest. Morning, Longman. 
he's having a chuckle to himself. I don't know why. <laughs> what was that? That's Logman's laugh, by the way. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Really? OK. Well, my, my next surprise. <laughs> Am I not, oh, you know, I've just seen what your surprise, <laughs> surprise is, and, and it's brilliant. OK, well, that's a good reaction from Logman. Okay. Chico is here dressed as Pudsey Bear for no reason whatsoever. Now, the thing is, what we're going to do is play an old game, but with a twist. OK. OK? Yes. So if you just stay there, allow yeah. me to bring in one of today's star guests okay. for a very special game of Guess Who. <laughs> now, the rules of Guess Who normally involve you not being able to see who the person is. Right. So in order to get round this in a live studio environment, we have put today's <laughs> mystery celebrity in a costume. Describe to the people at home what you can see. OK. Um, dress him for, dressed as... A, well, a special celebrity dressed as Darth Vader, but they have one hand on their hip. Are you wearing motorcycle gloves? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? How are you, Chris? I am, I am very well. So this, you have a Darth Vader mask on and you're dressed as Darth Vader. Yes, uh, I, I am I, your daddy. You, well, you what? I'm your daddy. You're my daddy. <laughs> this is so wrong on every level. Uh, let's try and guess who, who you are now. Yeah. You'd hear this person every day on the Chris Moore show. Ah, uh, it's Roy Wayne! <laughs> now, can Thanks, I, I, I seriously, man, I never a clue. Pal. How are you, Roy? Good, good. Happy oh, birthday. mate, thank you for coming to London <laughs> for this. Now, are we going to do um, Big no. Busters today? We're not. Oh, wait, OK. We just get Roy to shout out. You're right! Can't right, be any more right. random than the rest of the show, can Right, it? right, give us a catchphrase. You're a catchphrase? Well, any, or any, anyone, any one of your lions. Okay, one of, one of my lions. I was, on, I was on breakfast TV yesterday morning, and we were talking about the London Palladium and, and the Grand Theatre in Blackpool. It's designed by the same architect. Right. And the, and the chap who's presenting the radio show on breakfast said, Oh, he said, my house. He lives in my house. He designed my house. You know, I said, Oh, has it got a balcony? And he said, no, but thank God I changed it. I was going to say, have you got a royal box? Right. See, I need to explain. We, we go for breakfast with Roy. <laughs> Roy is full of these random stories <laughs> that don't really go anywhere. <laughs> but, but honestly, if you book him, he's a lot funnier in real life. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. You need a couple oh. of drinks, bro. Uh, Roy, give us a... Give us it. If you see it, say it. If you see it, say it. No, oh, that doesn't do. We'll right. just keep dressing and guess. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic. Hello. Car actually, Carrie. Yes. Because we have a bit of an audience here today. Can we show them what happens when you get tickled? No. Okay. All right. Just hey, Dom. I didn't touch you. I, I actually didn't touch you. Then. That's amazing. Uh, just once. Please don't. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Go on, Dom, after three. No, no, she said, no. please don't. One, two, three. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you all right, Carrie? You... Oh, Carrie, you okay? Oh, I just hit my hand on the window. <laughs> oh, I'm... do you want to kiss it better? Yes. Sorry, right. I was just really? following order. No. Okay, all right, fair enough. The Chris Moyle Show. International Radio 1. Good morning, Britain. Hello. Mo there's something wrong with this microphone, mate, I'm telling you. Your mic sounds dreadful. It sounds as if you're not here. What do you mean? Well, it sounds as if you're not in front of me. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like phone quality. It sounds as if you're still in your bathroom. <laughs> it does a little bit, doesn't it, Dave? <laughs> At 6.55, hey. as, as if you're not even in the building. <laughs> oh, you, that's why you're comedy, Dave. Oh, you're mad. Well, that would mean I'd be late, Dave. So talk me through this, um. What do you mean? Well, talk me through the scenario. Uh, well, I'm stood opposite you, and my microphone has been put on, um, making him sound like he's late setting. But imagine I couldn't see you. Yeah. And I was sat opposite Rachel. Right. Who was deputising for you. Yeah. And you weren't here, and you what? were perhaps still at home, or maybe in your car. How, how you there, aren't you? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. 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 Have you got your shoes on yet? No, shut sure. up. Yeah, but anyway, so that just makes make believe scenario. Mm. Yeah. What are you trying to say? What would happen next? Yeah. Right. Fine. Well, as I kind of run through my, uh, well, as 
my microphone is set to sounding lake, you know, quality. So it's really good. It's, it's a NASA design microphone. It he, even has, like, me putting on my trainers in the front of the house and all that, even though I'm not late. I'm stood opposite you, great mate. But it's as if, great mate, uh, you were doing a sort of, you know, late birthday party last night, we're in the pub with some mates and had a few drinks and blah, 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 and essentially just sort of overshot the whole show completely. No, no, of course not, great mate. I wasn't I wasn't in the pub with you last, last night, so hang on. Okay, that's the front door. Um, right, no, so what happens now is I'll play a jingle <laughs> and then we'll play a record and then, um, well, probably you'll, you'll intro the news, I would imagine. Do you know, the only positive thing out of all of this is the fact that I can now hear that you're outside the house, which means that you're slightly closer to being here than you were when we first started this link. Why don't you just play the engine with a record and shut up? All right, mate. OK, bye-bye. Bye, coming soon, bye-bye. The Chris Moyle Show National Radio 1. Can I just say, mm -hmm. I'm in bed. And I'll tell you why, because it, after that first link, I actually thought, that sounded better than yeah. most of our opening links. Mm. So I may as well just stay here. Because I've got all my mates here, and I'm nice and warm, and I can still do the show on the phone. How awake do I sound? I never sound this awake. It's fair to say, actually, we've done worse starts of the show, haven't yeah, we? I mean, significantly true. worse starts. Oh, 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 oh. What was, what was that? What was that? I don't know. Uh, hey? Where are you? Hey, what do you mean, where am I? Where are oh. you? <laughs> <laughs> because I just heard you on a microphone somewhere, but the thing is that I haven't got enough... In, you what, my darling? I haven't got enough lead on my headphones to see where you are in the studio. Oh, that, that, yeah, that would just help ah. me from looking too much, wouldn't it? This is freaky now. Morning, Morning Dominic. Dominic. Morning. Where are you? Well, I'm quite blatantly uh, stood opposite you because I'm on quality microphone. Well, I'd like to think you're there, but you're, you're looking like Rachel, to be fair. Well, it's a brand new diet I've been working on. And you've dyed your hair and you've become a woman. It's called Rachel Watchers. Yeah. Where are you? I'm, I'm in the Studio One. Oh, are you? Yeah, I slept here last night. I had a row with the missus. <laughs> Do you know, this is far too weird. I, I can't cope with this. Because I could cope with you being late, I could cope with you being on the phone, I could cope with you being, like, putting your shoes on. Hmm. But now, you're somewhere different where we can't see you on a quality microphone. Oh, well, shall I, do you, do you want me to come in? Just, just yeah. walk in, will you? All right. I can, if you go back to the phone, I'll be in in a sec. Okay. All right, good Lord. So there you are on there, on your... Do you it's know, amazing, it's... This is great, though, but what I love about being one of the most creative broadcasting shows in the country mm. is that even when I'm late, we can turn it into a gag. It's theater, it is theatre of the mind, isn't it, a little bit? It's theatre of the mind, and it also means that it confuses the hell out of management who don't know whether to tell me off or not, so they don't genuinely know if I'm late or not. Hello! Hello! Hello. Hey. Yeah, as I was saying, so, um, it's just a very clever... Kind of radio. <laughs> do, you know, do, 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 do you know the irony there is the fact that you just walked in and having done the whole link on the phone from your house and then from uh, the other studio, you then walked in and you didn't fade your microphone up. Well, I thought it was, I thought it was on already. No. How are you it. feeling anyway? Because you, you you look fine. Do you, look, do yeah, you look all right. No, you look all right actually. I know, just slept in. So is that, as I said before, when you sleep in, I have more sleep. Mm. So you don't sound. Good morning. Um, I'm actually feel better than ever. You sound perky. I sound very perky. That's what. Oh. Um, um, oh, gosh. Hey, I'm here. The Chris Moyle Show. Call off the dogs, I'm here. International Radio 1. But I'll tell you what I did here yesterday as well. I had a bit of a geeky two hours on the computer yesterday afternoon, on the internet. I found the Bare Naked Ladies new podcast. Okay. Which is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's Ed from the band The Bare Naked Ladies. So I presume it's not just music. I, I, they're it's kind not of, music at all. They're talking in between and doing nope. their whole sort of Bare Naked Ladies. Very surreal, nope. slightly Canadian comedy act. No, nope. no. Nope. Nope. It's Ed talking into a microphone about what they're doing that day. And that's it. Right, and it's the geekiest thing I have ever heard. It literally goes like this. Uh, hello. Uh, this is, uh, the Brain Naked Ladies, uh, podcast. Uh, we should really have a bit of music on the beginning. Oh, do 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 Brain Naked Ladies podcast. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm Ed, by the way, and, um, I'm doing this podcast myself. Uh, we're in a studio at the moment. Uh, I think I can put up a picture of the studio. There it is. Okay. And, uh, I'm recording this on my, on my Apple, uh, G4 
book or whatever they're called. And, um, oh, I, uh, I lost some photos the other day. Here's a funny story. And he tells this really long story about backing up his photos and having to ring a mate to find out where... And I'm... It's like you stood next to somebody in a bus queue overhearing somebody else's boring conversation, right? This is the number two podcast in America. And how long does it last for? This particular episode, yeah. about 10 or 11 minutes. Okay. And also, you get to hear what happened when Dominic met Piers Brosnan. That's right. No, that but, was rubbish. Uh, you do? Uh, and, oh, that's right. Get, <laughs> why have you gone all <laughs> Irish? Hey, Devin went Cornish. Uh, Hello, Dare. You went Cornish, Devin you? went Cornish. <laughs> that's, uh, Sorry, is that I'm, that video you can lend me? Dave went Cornish, is what I meant to say. But here's the best present I ever got. Now, this is what happened then on Saturday. So I'm in, I'm in one of my local boozers. Paddy killed his mad friend, John, from Ireland, who I've never met before. He has no idea who I am at all. I'm just a friend of Patrick's, and he therefore says to Patrick, who's this... He calls everyone John. John, who's this John whose birthday it is? And uh, Paddy goes, it's my, it's my mate Chris, he's a good lad, we know, we're, we're good friends. Is he a good lad? Yes, he is. Right. What does he do? And he calls all the girls Mary. Ma she was talking to Sophie. Mary! Mary, what does John drink? What does John drink? And Sophie's going, uh, what, who are you? What? Um, Carling, lager. Carling, right. So he goes up to the landlord and buys me a keg's worth of carling, which is 88 pints of lager, and pays the landlord for my next 88 pints as a birthday present. He got you 88 pints in the 88 pub. pints. Don't tell us you drank them all on Saturday night. I haven't had one. I have a, I have a plan. I'm going to drink in there for free for a year. <laughs> and I've, he said to me, I bought you, I wanted to buy you a keg, but he wouldn't give me a keg, so I bought you the equivalent, which is 88 pints of Carlin. Happy birthday, John. Now, can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Did he sell the 88 pints at face value? Oh, or I don't know, but of course he did. Yeah, I would because he won't, have sold, he won't have sold it no. at discount, will he? No, you I know, buying so. in bulk, or, or indeed the price of a keg. To be honest, I don't know. He might have done, I don't know. But all I heard was, because Tony Byrne was at the bar when the exchange was taking place, and because I thought it was a wind-up until Tony Byrne went, who was your mate who got out a wad of money and paid the landlord loads of money? What was that all about? And I went, oh, my God, he really has... He bought me 88 pints of lager. So, what a great night. So, I didn't have any of them. I've decided to keep them uh, for special occasions, like, you know, when you've got no money or whatever. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that they all get ticked off one by one. Are you going to have a little card? I might do, yeah. 88 free beer toast. 88, I might make you one. 88 free pints of carling. Now, is that just not the best birthday present ever? <laughs> From a man that I'd never met before who permanently called me John all night. The Chris Moyle Show. International Radio 1. Good morning. Is that new? That's yeah. A new one, yeah. We, have, we have some new music. Nice it's a bit Terry and June. <laughs> it sounds like how, Terry how and June. How dare you? Is that a bassoon? <laughs> That low one. What? Is that a bassoon, that low one? Ready? Oh, I'm not doing that's it now. trumpet. Not yeah. that. But that's got one of those little thingies in the end of it, you yeah. know? It's got to make a, that um, noise. Whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Just trying to say what you're gonna, how you're going to describe it. Hmm. Cat Gary. What? It's, it's called a mute. Ah, no, it's a mute. No, it's not. Well, it's just something say. else, I think. The, the, right? the bit on the end of the um, trumpet. People are saying Alex in Brum says it's a tenor mute. The little black. Ah, thing. Now, you're thinking of muffler. What are you laughing at, Carrie? I can't believe, <laughs> Carrie, you just laughed at the word muffler. <laughs> Good lord. Somebody says this sounds like Sesame Street. It does. It, it sounds like a cartoon. It sounds like we're all in a cartoon. <laughs> This show is brought to you by the letter C. <laughs> and the word muffler. <laughs> do that what you will. <laughs> you wouldn't get Big Ben saying that. Let's bring in an absolute legend to the show. <clears throat> the man that they call... The man they call... Les Dennis! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Let's meet the family. Oh. Hello, Les. Hello. Hello, Hello Les. Chris. Chris, where are you from? And, and introduce us to your family. OK. Uh, hi, Les. Uh, <laughs> my name is Chris, and I'm hi, from Chris. Leeds. Uh, this is uh, this is my uh, team co-worker, Dave. Hello, Les. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much. How are you? I'm this, very good. This is uh, our producer, Rachel. Hi, Les. Hi, Rachel. Nice <laughs> to see you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Oh. Uh. Hi, Les. Hi, <laughs> Chris. 
I might get the hydraulic desk. Well, yeah, well, well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. This is normally an indication that your time is up, and, yeah. and that's not the case. Well, I'm... I was listening the other day, and you see, you guys think that we don't listen. I know. You? you think the guests are coming on are not listening, and I was listening, and you were saying it was a bit of a private joke, the hydraulic desk. Yeah. Yeah, if, the, if the guest is... It's a new rule now. If a guest is not working, yeah. we're going to say to them, have you seen our hydraulic desk, which goes up and down? And then the listeners know, oh, good, they're off. <laughs> <laughs> 60 seconds and they're out. But you think we don't listen, you know? You think we listen to some kind of I am a celebrity no, I just radio. Think, I, just, I just think you don't get up till midday because you're too rich. <laughs> Seriously, on your money, I won't get out of bed till noon. Now, listen, uh, very quickly, um, because I, 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 I want to know. Yeah. Um, why did they not get you back to, to do Family Fortunes? Um, well, you know, there's a lot of stuff in the paper where it says that I turned it down. It's, it's not strictly true. What happened with the show was, um, when it went to daytime, I'd done 15, 16 years of the show and had, you know, I always said while, I was, while it was going well and mm. while I was loving it, I'd, I'd stay with it. And then it w they decided to move to daytime. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, you know, it's had its best time now. So I gave up then. Yeah. Um, but it now that it's coming back, they didn't ask me. But, you know... I think that it's great that Vernon's doing it. I think yeah. that he'll be absolutely brilliant. And I think they need to ring the changes with the show. If they'd have asked you to do it, would you have done it? Maybe. Maybe. Um, I don't know. They didn't ask, so I can't I reckon, really... I a, reckon you a would. hypothetical question. <laughs> because it, it must, you know, and, and you are, you know, I've met you a few times before, and you are a nice man. And I, and I know, because you're a pro as well, that you would go, Vernon will be good for that. I appreciate that. I understand that. And you will genuinely feel like that. Yeah. But when that first one goes out, well, you know, it's it will be like because um, I went on to the uh, Ant and Deck did a version of it. Yeah, right. And I went on at the end to present the prize because um, Carol won. Carol Vorderman's right. family won, and it was like it was like going into my own house and people were there. You yeah, know? it was like kind of like like there were burglars in. Nice. Les, you ready for a little bit more in a couple of records' time? A little bit more of what? Chris? Me. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, well, I don't know, I did, but I don't know what you've been having all morning. A little bit more of what? I'm ready bit, for a little bit more. A little bit more. Do little you bit always more. do it standing up? I always do it standing up, yeah, and, and uh, Dave always does it sitting down. Okay. But, well... Except bizarrely, I'm stood up at the moment. Yeah. Next to Les. Hello, Les. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dave. How did you find our news and sport? Watching them do it in real life, That was it? really, really yeah. great. Carrie's very <laughs> professional, isn't she? She's fantastic. There isn't so nothing good. she doesn't know about sport. She's got a name on the headphones, which is really, really... We all have. Well. It's like on Fortunes, they had name badges. Well, so I can't, you, we've got, got your names on it. I can. I know who you are. Yeah, we've got name headphones. I forget. Exactly. <laughs> we need to write Les on yours. Yeah, exactly. And hello on the other one. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, Les. Yeah. Right, we're going to play a game. And we're going to play a game which uh, Dave has uh, worked on, my good friend Comedy Dave here. Hello, Les. And hey, hello, Dave. <laughs> Les is going to be contestant number one. Dominic is going to be contestant number two. Hello, Les. Hello, everybody, and welcome... That'll do. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Family Fart Tunes, the show that quite literally puts the Family Fart Tunes into Family Fart Tunes. I'm your host, Chris Moyles. Oh, I've got a big one. Right, that's my catchphrase. That's a good one as well, isn't it? Oh, this, no, there is no script for this, by the way, Les. You may have realised that. That will work. That will, that will go down in, in catchphrase heaven. <laughs> yeah, I, I think one. so. Uh, I'll tell you, this will, be some, this will be as popular as Mad About Alice, this game. Right, here we go. <laughs> now, uh, let's meet our contestants. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> I have a big one. There you go. <laughs> I have a big penis. Right, so, uh, yes, when do you know the answer? We should have scripted this. We should, really. It's got a good catchphrase as well, you see. Well, I have a big penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used that for my audition for uh, Songs of Praise, didn't get the job. Didn't you? No. I wonder why that was. Oh, apparently, I'm just not old enough. I did. If it's up there, I'll give you the money myself. Well. <laughs> <laughs> if he's up there. <laughs> Oh, hang on, oh, relax. Dear. Get all carried away. If he's up there, I'll it's get a religious, a, do you know, it's a religious... Do you believe in God? That is, that's a show. With that us. is a yeah. show. We've got, we've got a format here. And you could do true or false things yeah. about religion. Yeah, yeah people absolutely. who believe on one side and people who don't believe on the other side. <laughs> if he's up there, I'll give what you the money myself. What would show? Um, Leap hello, of faith? Yeah, hello? <laughs> hello, God? If he's up there, I'll give you the money myself. Uh, it's genius. Get Brucey on there. God game, God game. <laughs> <laughs> right, jokes then. Here we do. Let's do some jokes. Uh, okay. I'm having such a laugh today. I hope, the, I hope people are still bloody listening. 
A uh, white horse walks into a pub. The landlord says, hey, there's a pub named after you. The horse says... Uh, the horse says, what, Eric? <laughs> and it's a drink, <laughs> isn't it? What, what it's Eric? It's a drink, no. not a pub. What? Usually, it used to be a... We'd, we'd go into the pub, the white well, horse yeah, and say, yeah, okay, can yeah. I have a whiskey? That's well, we've right. got... And the list of the whiskeys, yeah. we've even got one named after you. There you go. So, so, he, joke. so he does two <laughs> jokes. There you go. Eric. Two jokes for one. Why was the blonde staring at the orange juice carton? Ooh, um... Because I was about to drink out of it. No. <laughs> because it said concentrate. Ah. Yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> a brain walks into a pub. Yeah. Asks for a pint of lager. The barman says, I can't serve you. The brain says, why? The barman says... Why the long face? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You're out of your head. You're out of your head. Uh, why has Edward Woodward got so many Ds in his name? Edward... There used to be a joke about... What was it? Man with uh, three planks on his head. Ed Wood Woodward. That's right. So is it something to do with that? No, well, it's about him. Why has Ed Edward Woodward got so many D's in his name? Because if he didn't, he'd be called Iwa Wooa. Iwa Wooa. Like the oh, ambulance. Shit. And this is a great TV show. <laughs> yeah. mm. watch that. I could watch this on <laughs> five all night long. <laughs> Two oranges walks into a bar. One turns to the other and says... Uh, why don't you concentrate? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two oranges walk into a bar, one says to the other. How are you doing? Do you want a pint? No! <laughs> Two oranges walk into a bar, one, one says, says to the, the other. other. Hey, we're, 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 no. no! Eric. No. Eric. Jaffa. No. Fruit and punchline. No! Two oranges walk into a bar, one says to the other and says, Ouch. You're, you're round. Oh. You're round. Oh. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> after the show today, um, we are all going off to a big awards ceremony. Uh, this is the first time, this is the first awards ceremony we've all been to um, for the show. Mm. And it's a weird one because it's during the day, <clears throat> it's not a night time or anything, and it's the Television and Radio Industries Club. And then you find out who's hosting it, it's only Ainsley, will you come out the closet, Harriet? Oh, brilliant, I've always wanted to meet him. Is he salt and Percy Pepper? Yeah. <laughs> Can we drizzle with him? What? Can we drizzle with him? You can drizzle with whoever you want, Kerry. <laughs> Shizzle your drizzle. He says, welcome. <laughs> Have you noticed ah, the beginning welcome. of Ready, Steady, Cook? Welcome. A little bit of salt, a little yeah. bit of Sally Salt and, and Percy Pepper, and, oh, you know you don't like it in it too long. Oh, you know what I mean? Shove it in, shove it in the oven. Oh, make it hot. Oh, oh, make it hot. She's just like the guy's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him do that ever. He does, he does that. Have you ever seen him on uh, on whatever that show is that he does? Ready, Ready steady, cook. cook. Yeah, he goes like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and he starts it. touching his nipples and he just goes, oh, help me, oh. I really like that. It's nice, isn't it? Um, the new Embrace song, says Jan, is great, but don't you think the start sounds like a heart alone? Yes. What year was that? 80... Heart alone, 86, 87. Let me see if I've got it on my CD. But I think that it sounds like Robin Beck and the first time. All right. Let's have a listen, then. It's Embrace, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's that a, was that's, that's, that's all about Eve Martha's Harbour. You know, I hate it when somebody no. puts CD two in the CD one box. <laughs> doesn't sound anything like Martha's. It doesn't sound Harbour. like all about Eve at all, which is a beautiful Hang record, on, by see, the way. Start it again. Here we go. Wow. Jeez, I've done it again. I, you know, I've just taken it out and then put the same one back in. Martha's Harbour again. Oh. I'm going to do Heart Alone. The CD's not working, right? That's if this is the right CD. Mm. It's not dissimilar. See, now that's not a mini It's keyboard-based. I'm telling you, mine is the one. Really? Yeah. All right, yeah, well, Listen I'll to do... your heart. No. That's it. Nothing 
like it. First time. <laughs> Nothing like it. It is. There's nothing like it. First time. First time. No, you, no, you can't sing that over the what it is. <laughs> first time. Ready like this. First time. First place. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. No. <laughs> Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Oh, it sounds like Bill Haley. Or, or whoever sang that song. Bill Haley and the Comets, it was, 1956. Mm. Um, no. <laughs> I don't know. That's Embrace. Thank you. And that is Roxette. Listen now, to your Now, that harps. works. More the harpsichord. Carrie said it too. Yeah, Carrie did say it. First time. <laughs> Isn't that a drinks ad? Well, it was, but it was Robin Beck, first time. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I th so there's more in it. There's more of rock yeah. set in it, yeah. Very quickly, got to read some things out. International Radio 1. I just said, uh, I asked before the news, if you're pierced, let us know. And here's what's quite scary. Uh, lots of you are. I have my nipple pierced. I'm 28 and I'm executive for BT. <laughs> Male or female? So, if you, I didn't say. So, if you work with an executive of BT, just give their little chest area that extra glance today. Mm. Have a look. Remember, like that girl in our pub who we thought had an extra nipple, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was actually it was a button, wasn't it? Was, yeah. it? Like one of the staple. Look, I've got to say, though, we examined her for <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I tell you. There's lots of imitators trying to copy Chris's style. Excuse me, madame. <laughs> <laughs> they will never be <laughs> But we You're did. So Honestly, wrong. we used to go in there because we genuinely thought that she had three nipples. Three nipples. <laughs> and we would look at her intently as the night went on. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were so gutted when we found out it was just a bit sticking out of a bra. Good morning, Will. Morning, fella. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you, pal. What, uh, good, good. That's what, what we like. Well, that, that's what you like? Yeah, nice and bright and early on a Monday morning. Is that your uh, real voice? Of course it's my real voice. What do you think I sound like? I don't know. Blimey. Well, like that, a bumpkin. Not a pumpkin? What, what not, a, not, not a pumpkin! A bumpkin, <laughs> not a Sorry. pumpkin. It's all right, you just don't talk proper like what I do. That's why I have trouble understanding you. Like. Okay. That was just a noise, really. <laughs> so tired this morning. So tired. Now, I'm not one of them people who leaps out of bed. So this morning, I leap out of bed eventually. And I get up, go into the kitchen, and I decide I'm, I need to have a bowl of cereal. But I realise <clears throat> I'm so tired, I can't even see what I'm doing. And I'm about a minute, my, I'm, I'm a minute behind myself. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I'm just too quick. Just put the milk in there. Now I've opened the oven. I've opened the, I've opened the, fr I've opened the fridge. You know, like the most... Drunk man in the world. <laughs> Shall we tell everybody what the voice session is today, the secret voice session mm. that we're doing? Do you want to know some of the lyrics are? Yeah, go mm. on, yeah. Okay. Um, da -na -na, I can't get off my high horse and I just can't let go. Which is the first two lines for somebody else's guy. I can't get off my high horse and I just can't let go. My name is Jocelyn Brown and I'm on the Christmas show. I'm a singing partner and my name is Matt. All right, I'm pretty good on telly, but my singing's really rubbish. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. <laughs> that was Dave's first take. I felt like an artist, Carrie. Really? Proper, this, yeah. This is your second take, Dominic. I say you weren't as one take as Dave. No. In tune, kind of. Well, good morning, everybody. Time to start a brand new day. Because we're here to make you smile and help you get you on your way. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts my throat even thinking about that, actually. Oh, it's it's very high. It's quite high to sing up there. You need range. Mm. Mm. We weren't, we were fellow artists, but we weren't being treated like artists, were we, do you wow. think? No. And I just can't let go. <laughs> That's Dave. Oh, no. <laughs> On the Christmas show! <laughs> 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 oh, they don't, don't know what you're laughing oh, at, Dominic. <laughs> Start a brand new day. This is my favourite. Get you on your way. <laughs> <laughs> the Bee Gees. Radio 1. Right, 811 is our text number. 
Did you hear Vernon's show on Saturday? Brian Dowling said live on air that he would with you, says Lucy in Kent. Wow, well, what a compliment treat for you, yeah. isn't it? Um, here's another good email. Hi, Elliot. I don't think dog food can taste nice. If it was nice, why would dogs lick their own testicles? <laughs> <From> my <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, they're probably having the same debate on the, on yeah. the, the Today programme. But I'm like, hi, Elliot. Now, I'm really hoping this is another DJ and someone who flicks between the pair has just got our number in their head. Yeah. Failing that, why the hell is he texting his mate Elliot about dog food tasting nice? I have unedited Paul O'Grady. I can't play all of it to run, so we have to edit some of it out. But he listens to the show and is a massive fan of the show. Like, genuinely... This is, this is great. I've heard this already. This is really... This is, you know, when, when the, you know... It's one of these do the interview. Oh, would you just mind doing a jingle for Yeah, so it'd be like a drop. At the end of the interview, uh, Natalie Jameson, who was, was speaking to him, goes, do you mind just doing the celebrity time check? He goes, yeah, who's it for? Then he realises who it's for, and then, you know, he's your number one fan. But anyway, this is Chris Miles you listen to. <laughs> Oh, is this for Chris Miles? Yeah, I love Chris Miles' programme. I swear, he's so funny. He really is a great show. What do you want me to say to him? Uh, you, can, you can say what you like, but basically... Mind your language, you big... <laughs> please, there's children listening of a morning when I'm making me tea. I'm just coming down off me Valium and I listen to you kicking off. Play something classical. You don't get that off Wogan. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> what a great bloke. <laughs> you edited out the swear reference. Yes, I did, yeah. Yeah. He said, uh he goes, ah, oh, I heard him when he swore the other week. That oh, was so funny. I was making a cup of tea. I almost dropped it all over the floor. I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't funny, was it? Oh, dear. He's great, isn't he? What a good lad. So, yeah. the uh, Paul O'Grady show starts tonight on Channel 4. I take it it's 5 o'clock. I'm um, off the top of my head. Is it 5 o'clock? I should think so. I don't know. Hang on, do you want me to get paid? Yeah, There's a big ITV Channel 4 war about that, isn't there? Well, are ITV still showing old yes. Paul O'Grady? Yeah, which is really weird because they're, they were interviewing, like, the first or second series of uh, contestants for I'm a Celebrity. You know when, um... Right. Who was in there? I'll come over anyway. Yeah. So that means that Paula Grady's on ITV with an old show against yeah. Paula Grady's new show on Channel 4. Guys, we're going to take a commercial break. You can sit and watch the ads if you want, or turn over to ITV. Watch a minute of that, but make sure you come back. Tonight, Arsenal take on the mighty Juventus in the first leg of their Champions League quarter final. It marks the return of former Gunners captain Patrick Vieira. He says he's been surprised at Arsenal's season so far. They've got the quality and uh, the players to do better than what they're doing. But after all, I think it's quite a long season and um, it's not over yet. Come on, come <laughs> on! <laughs> Come on! Some chairs falling over. Who them. approved that bit of audio? See, that's not you. Please tell me it that's not you. It sounded better in there than in here. A, there's somebody falling down a flight of stairs, while B, somebody's holding the microphone in another room. They've got the quality and uh, the players to do better than what they're doing. But after oh, all, come I'm on! Looking forward to going to uh, <laughs> uh, go to Arsenal, and I hope that it gets all my friends. Very nice, thank you, please. <laughs> Right. We tell him to shut up outside. The fellow's got his orbital sander out. <laughs> There's a fella sanding Honestly, right outside the studio door. Pretty <laughs> great orbital sander going. So I said, <laughs> all over the floor, mate. Mm. So to the right, have you had a word? I've had a word. What, yeah. what was the word? Quiet. Shut up. There That's you go. Two, yes. Nice. What do you say, Alan? You're wearing a mask. I am a superhero. Which one? Uh, Zorro, idiot. He's got a Zorro mask on. <laughs> no, I am Fat Man. Does anybody else want to wear the uh, mask? You know, the, it's like the mask that goes over your eyes that automatically turns you into a Have a go, come here. Hero. Give it to Alad. Alad. I couldn't do a good voice. Yeah, you could. I don't have good voices. I you only have this one. You, do you know you, the butch voice I taught you? No. Yeah. What Are was you, that? The butch voice. Remind me? Like that. The oh, butch, yeah. voice. butch voice. What? Bush voice. Yeah, yeah, you're getting it a little bit deeper. Bush voice. Yeah, that's right, right. I just keep, keep thinking of that. Okay, so go with mask off. Okay, right, you ready? <laughs> but what superhero am I? I just come up with a name. Come up I with a name. I don't know a name. Right. Oh, Dave, you're the writer. Batty man. <laughs> Shut no. up. No. <laughs> you're so offensive sometimes. Super bright. <laughs> you go around and bright. No, 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 Batty man. <laughs> Me kicking you. <laughs> It's not right. funny, Dave. Rachel, ban him from the studio for yeah, being sick. <laughs> oh, dear. Someone else, please. Another name. I got Dave, I got Dave. I got Dave. <laughs> oh, God, I'm back in school. Would, would Batty Man's uh, sidekick be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not playing now. International Radio 1. Good morning, Britain.
It's nice to be back, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So what did you do while we were away, Dominic? I went to France. Mm. And... May we? Uh, uh, Bienvenue. May we? Bienvenue. Uh, qu'est-ce qu'il y a la bibliothèque? Dans la piscine. Yeah, there's not a library in the swimming pool, but... Mara, Carrie, what have you been up to? I've been to Scotland, mm-hmm. I've been to Cornwall, and I've been to Swansea, to Mumbles. You're on tour? A bit, yeah. Well, you're like on the run? <laughs> Status quo. <laughs> Dave, what did you do? Um, I went to Croatia. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. And I went to... Chappers, Bel- Chappers and Dave go all over the world. It wasn't a tour. Wow. It was on vacances, as they say in France. I went to Croatia, I went to Bosnia, then back to Croatia, and then back, back here again. Fabulous. It's good. Rachel, what did you do? I did the same as Carrie, but in reverse. I went to Cornwall, Scotland, but then I went to Kidderminster. Mm. Where did you go, go, Chris? (laughs) (laughs) Where did you go? I love that little song. (laughs) Anyone who asked me? I just, no, I I didn't. I wasn't doing that. I don't want to know about you. (laughs) I I just went to my secret location in the sun. Me, me. <laughs> this huge pause and you just stood there for the mic. I wasn't. I couldn't, I couldn't think what of how to move it on. about me? Dave, do you find it amazing how those two are so alike? Yeah. It's spooky. It's, I think anorak is the word. How, that's how DJs used to speak when we were starting out yeah. like eight years ago. Yeah, that's it. Now, also, it's, oh. it's DJs that speak really fast. You know the really wacky ones? Chris Moyles. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to my show. This is The Late Bit with Chris Moyles. And I'd like to start with a joke tonight that I heard. I was in the pub uh, earlier this afternoon and they were kind of like a business working lunch thing. Well, you know these business working lunches where you go to the pub and you have lunch with somebody that you kind of do business with and then you just get completely out of your tree. One of those lunches. And uh, he told me this joke. It was very, very funny. And he said, you can use that on your show. And, you know, you never, people say that to you all the time. You can use that on your show and you never do. So I thought, well, I would use it on the show. But unfortunately, it is a little bit too long. So just do the punchline because this is the bit which got me laughing. Ready? (laughs) No, they're the vicar's pants. Mine are the cleaners. <laughs> FM 103 Horizon. A better music mix. Just great songs from the yeah. 80s and 90s. you got to take a breath. Not shortly after that, I decided that that wasn't my best style. Particularly as we're repeating one of the tracks later. Sorry, that was Rachel's getting more and more irritating and tedious by the day. <laughs> corporate kiss acid. It's not a corporate one. I'm just saying we've got another one later. So if she has the radio on, she can hear it. Not next week, though. That's what I said. Clear your ears out, clothhead. They can have the radio on next week. Doesn't matter what we do. They have Gary Barlow naked, sticking his dick, his thing in jab. Doesn't matter. It's next week, not today. Listening to the Chris Moyle show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh, you're right. Right. Do you know, do you know I, th- I think you've peaked. Yeah. I think it's all downhill. It's you. all gone to my head. <laughs> so, Gary, now I've got an image of Gary Barlow. With yeah, with free preserves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here it is. It's the first play ever. This is Embrace and the England song for the World Cup 2006. This is World at Your Feet. <laughs> It's not too slow, it's perfect. Shut up and enjoy it. There you go. Now that's what it sounds like, you see? (laughs) Can you explain the last bit, please? (laughs) Okay. For those, for those that halfway through heard something that made no sense, the story is as follows. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> on, B- on BBC One, while that's playing out, there's a shot, right, from the BBC News of these people listening to the radio in Bristol. Yeah. Right, and they're in a bar. Yeah. And there's a local fellow from the local radio station and some other people. And they're trying to get their views on it. But we then realise that they're, they're listening to us. They're listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> and after one verse, this fellow goes, well, it's, it's a bit slow, isn't <laughs> it? You know, just and it's, the it's, first it's, verse. See what? The funniest thing was, the okay. woman, whoever that journalist is, as soon as it hit the chorus, as she went... hit the fast bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, have a, let's go around and uh, see what everybody thought of it. Well, I thought it was a bit slow. Just as it was kicking in, <laughs> well, it, was a bit, it could have been a bit faster. And then the second person said, yeah, it could have been a bit... And the third person said, could have, I thought it was going to be a bit faster. Which is why I went, it's not too slow, it's fine. So we can then see them on the telly, then laughing at us, saying it's fine, it's not too slow, in Bristol. Oh, very odd. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Me just anyway. Very, very oh, odd. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the audio? 
Yeah. All right, so this is what happened then uh, on Breakfast Television News Live this morning. Just hearing the chorus now. What do you think, Reese? You're the co-host of the local breakfast show. Do you think it's going to get Reece. people going? It's a bit slower than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. Um, could do have been a little bit faster. Um, just my opinion. Now, Paul, you're a local songwriter. You thought that local it's going to be really good this song. What do you think so far? Yeah, first hearing, uh, I agree. So it might be a little bit faster, but I'm sure it, it will be a grower. And, I mean, he's a great singer songwriter he is. Yeah, I, I think it's deceptive. I think there's quite a rousing chorus um, waiting to get out of the song, and uh, I think that'll be the thing that people remember and sing on the terraces. OK, well, let's have a, have a quick listen to a little bit more. It's not too slow, it's perfect. Shut up and enjoy it. Well, Chris Moyles thinks it's perfect, but I'm sure Embrace are a little bit nervous this morning trying to wonder what the nation will think about this song, because, of course, they have a lot to live up to. That is brilliant. I love that. It's a face. Perfect it? timing, isn't it? The face is when suddenly you start talking out the radio at them. I'm a singer-songwriter. Apparently, Tom Baker has to stop doing the voiceover for the text on BT, so uh, says uh, Carl from Herne Bay. They're gonna. Uh, they're going to a male and female Ooh, to adapt it to the sender. Hey, you could do. Apply. Yeah, you should apply, Rachel, with your tones. <laughs> right, I'll just. Turn, I'll turn it down because I don't want it to. Are these a bit yeah, more yeah. adult? There's, well, no, but I just remember there was some. I remember, and you know, we had a debate over whether it's a category C swear word mm. or. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say they're swear words. I'd say they're rude words. See, Rachel's cringing already. Any of them you can play? What? Is that all right? Yes, stick it on. All right. Here are some words to make you laugh. All right. You ready? Yep. Boobies. Boobies. Mm -hmm. Big willies. Mm -hmm. Spam. Titties. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't believe you loved it. It's just the way he says it. Children. Children. <laughs> Goodbye. Titties. Goodbye, Tom. Right, do you want to hear this remix, though, yeah. JK's? All right, here it is. Space sound effects in it. The spaceship, see? Oh, nice. Good luck. Well done. I hate this song. It'd be hard to dance to this, wouldn't it? Choo choo! There it is again. This is in space. I think you, you kind of get the idea. Mm. Is this it? Is this... It doesn't really go anywhere. This is just a... Is it like you filled up to a kind of... Well, here we go. Let's get into that chorus. Come on! No. No. It's just exactly uh. the same. But he stopped the choo-choos. Thank goodness for that. This bit isn't in space. <laughs> She's back on Earth now. Yeah, she is. Thank goodness, because they were getting annoying, those noises. Oh, there's a laser gun. Oh, they're back. they're back. This is the remix that Jason said yesterday. He was very proud of. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> He's just done laser noises over, isn't he? With a little Dion funny in a quasar. Yeah. <laughs> In there. I think that's on the original, like though. That's not yeah. him. It could be a lawsuit, Dave. It could be a lawsuit. Legal Eagles are on it now. Right, it's 11 minutes past seven. Good morning. Those of you who watch The Apprentice every week, am I the only one who's noticed? I'm such a nerd, right? You know when they leave, you're fired, right? Yeah. And then they leave the building, all of a sudden, all of a sudden they have an overcoat from nowhere. Yes. Right? You know they get in the cab. Yes. Right. That cabbie... Now, the thing is, they've obviously shot all of that in the same day. Yes. Right? It makes sense. Okay. 
So we've sh we've right at the beginning they film everybody leaving and getting in the cab. Yes. And just so they've got that shot done. That cabbie puts the meter on every single time. Does you he? see the little light go off? I tell you what else is good. Grumpy Old Men on BBC Two mm. is absolutely brilliant. Grumpy Old Men is basically a load of grumpy old celebrities, ma male celebrities, moaning about everything. Mm. It's so funny. They've also done Grumpy Old Women. Now, I'm not being sexist. Good. It doesn't work. No, it's not right? I'm sorry, but old women are not funny. <laughs> old men are. <laughs> Listen to you. No, but it's true though, isn't it? Grumpy old women doesn't work. Double one, double nine. Start your text with the word "sexist Dave." <laughs> disc one or disc two? Uh, disc two. Uh, track between one and eighty-four. Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Okay, you got to guess what it is. You ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carrie's got it! Carrie's got it! Is it... Anything, Dave? No. Dominic? Is it whiz bit? No, it's not. I think you'll find that's ha-ha this way. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Carrie, tell them what it was, please. Isn't it with our lovely friend Neil Buchanan and yeah. Art Attack? Art Attack! Oh, wow! Well. Right answer! Kids <laughs> Dave. Hello, welcome to Art Attack. Oh, it's, a, it's a scouser. No, that, that was me impression. The impression? Welcome to Art Attack. Right. Here's some sticky tape. Yeah, OK, leave it now. Uh, 9.56, Joe Wiley's here in three and a half minutes. Well done, congratulations, you won a prize. Do you know what you've won? What? Some trousers. Right, uh, I need to talk to... Celebrity Tarzan! Lots of prizes up for grabs. Some great albums. Richard Ashcroft's album, Pink's album, Editor's album, A Carbon Monoxide Alarm, an inflatable grommet. Inflatable? Inflatable. There's an inflatable grommet, I forgot. I do have an inflatable grommet. What, Brid? <laughs> Get me <laughs> leaks. Sorry. Off at the motor. Marty Watt. <laughs> what, Brid or Brown Brid? Off at the motor. <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. Eat me rigs. Pepsi Kins had late night shopping in a grocer's throat. Stroke these items. She has a biscuit with all her food in. <laughs> she got a biscuit. <laughs> what? No, all there's a there's a bit on there's, her There's a little bit of little weapon too. All of her food <laughs> is in a biscuit. Pepsi Kins had bumps into Mel Gibson. She has a biscuit in her hand with a load of shopping in it. <laughs> well, she's shopping, late night Basket. shopping. Yes. Biscuit. I'm like, I'm saying a biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, you have any idea what we're talking about? Not really, no. <laughs> lethal, lethal Weapon 2, go and buy it today. It'll be cheap. One of the best films of all time. I'm going to play the end of that record, and I want you to do your Camp Westwood right. DJ thing. Uh -huh. Saying what? Matt will listen up all night. Um, blast off, baby. Okay. Right, OK. And then go, this is Camp Westwood in the house. Right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Matt Willis, up all night, blasting off. This is Camp Westwood. Aye! Or something. <laughs> Aye! What's that, though? Aye! Aye! I don't know, I don't know what Aye oh, is sorry, meant to be. What is Aye meant to be? <laughs> And David Blaine has started his latest stunt, spending seven days in a goldfish bowl full of water in the middle of New York. At the end of it, he'll try and hold his breath for longer than eight minutes, 58 seconds. Basically, besides just holding my breath for about nine minutes, hopefully, I'll have to escape from all these chains, and if not, I will drown, and the world will see something pretty insane. One. My name is David Blaine. I'm going to hold my breath for 20 seconds whilst hopping on one leg, and the world will watch him all. He's a strange fish, isn't, isn't he? he? Do you remember we had him on the show once? And then when we have guests in, you oh. tend to go off for, you know, a little break halfway through, and you left me in the studio with this weirdo. <laughs> I mean, normally you, you, you can try... Can you just show your card trick? But normally you try and make polite conversation with guests oh, when they come yeah. up, how long you've been in the UK, you know, how's your schedule, when you're going back, blah, 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 all the same sort of questions, and he just stares at you, and then mm. he drew, a, drew like, a, an eye on his hand and pointed it at me. No, he didn't do that. Something weird like you're, that. You're confusing that incident with you with an incident which happened to somebody else. Am I? Yeah. It's so weird. No, he did a card trick with you. 
Because she didn't want to talk to you. Because we were like, how's it all going then, David? You all right? <clears throat> Watch. Well, you just took some cards out. At that point, I went, I'm off for a fag. Oh, that's See you in ten minutes. I don't even like wow. cards. You should have drawn a nose on your hand. Mm. Go check that out, Blaney. I just, don't, I just don't get it, though. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If you do a card trick with me, and, and I write on a card, and then you put it in there, and you shuffle them all up, and then it rises to the top of the pack, and then... Mm. Now, that's a trick. I get that. Mm. But I don't get these... If you do a trick that no one understands, what's the trick? Yeah. Like that whole living in a box thing. Mm. I'm a living right? in a box. I don't, I don't get it, so I'm not impressed by it, because I don't get... What was it? Because obviously he didn't just live in a box. Well, he did, didn't he? He, he lived in a box suspended from a ridiculous. crane. Above the Thames. And he lost loads of weight, and mm. he, he ate through a straw or something. Maybe I should give it a go. I went to the unveiling of him coming out of the box as well, and he did look awful. Really? Yeah. Mm. I'm not surprised. Mm. It's just a tourist attraction, though, for a while, wasn't it? A bit yeah. like the London Eye. But people kept teeing off on the bridge and whacking ball golf balls at him and stuff, didn't they? He didn't like that. I know somebody that was responsible for... Acting silly like that as well. Really? Yeah, with a paintball gun. It's so childish. Hey, David! Who was that? No, I don't know. Dogger. I forgot. <laughs> no, it wasn't Dogger. Hello, Radio 1. Hello. Hello, right, what's your name? It's Mark. Mark, where are you from? Belfast. Turn your radio off. Golf. Soft. <laughs> soft. Soft. That's off. Hey, you soft. Oh! You are kidding me. Can I just say what's happened? Huh? Right? The engineer has just walked in and unplugged the phones in the studio. <laughs> I thought that was you. I thought that was brilliant comedy time. Yeah, clunk. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have the piece to do that, but it wasn't me. He just pulled the plug out of the phone. Pulled the plug out of the phone. Live on the air. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Bear with us. Yeah. If you listen to Don't me. dance, you moron. He just took the collar off the air, you pillock. Guy's dancing like blooming knobby at the world. Fuck me, the V's. Man, you unplugged the collar, dude. <laughs> Wrap the phone around your head. Yeah, Fix that. <clears throat> right, should we continue as if nothing else mm. has happened? Yeah, I will be able to. Okay. What, what was that, Dominic? <laughs> sorry. You know you're on the air? I know, sorry. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't hear that, but when Dominic makes Liz's throat, he sounds like a klaxon going off. <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was doing really quietly. Now, he spent the last week submerged in a human goldfish bowl in New York, and before he comes out later, David Blaine says he's going to hold his breath for nine minutes as he escapes from nearly 70 kilos of metal chains. But it may be harder for him than first planned, because the skin on his hands is now peeling off. It is dangerous, but it's also what I drive on. It's the excitement of that adrenaline rush. I guess it's like a heightened sense of awareness that you get when you push yourself further than you normally can or would. That was the sound of David Whoa. Blaine in a goldfish bowl. What's that? That's him because he's talking through an oxygen thing, isn't he? So <sighs> that Darth Vader sound was him breathing. We interviewed him in a bowl. I, well, I don't get it. Why? Well, how come we can hear it? How can he open his mouth? Because he's he's got a big glass bowl around his head to stop all the water go going in, and he's also got an oxygen thing. Oh, in right, there. around his head. Around his head. So his head isn't in the water. Well, it is, but it's in... Yeah, but it's sort of dry. Right. Yeah, and he's got an oxygen thing in his mouth to help him breathe, obviously. <laughs> but he's got, there must be a little microphone wired up somewhere as well, so that's why you can hear him. Let me, let me hear it again. <laughs> Dave, we laughed at <laughs> It is dangerous, but it's also what I drive on. It's the excitement of that adrenaline rush. I guess it's like a heightened sense of awareness that you get when you push yourself through. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. Uh, there must be a microphone in there, do you reckon? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how do to reckon? do it. So, yeah, he's in a bowl. We don't speak to people in a bowl every day. Why, to him, why is it exciting? Why surely, it surely he must be bored by now. Yeah. I oh, it's oh, so exciting. I've had a long bath before, but eventually you get bored and have to get out. Not for nine days, though, have you, with a well, microphone? No. Yeah. But when it, once you've been in the bath for an hour, you're ready to get out. One. And Dominic is well known for his impressions. Yeah. And he has a new one. <laughs> does he? Yes, he does. Now, of course, regular listeners to the show will know his uh, impression of Ronnie Corbett. Yep. Ardo, Ardo, Ardo. Th th there it was there. Mm -hmm. Dominic's impression of um, Jim, the Jim, Jim, Brennan. Jim, Jim Brennan from EastEnders. Hardolfo, Hardolfo. 
Again. Yeah. Rachel, by the way, you can't hear her laughing because mm -hmm. she's laughing on the inside. Yeah. His new one is Jules Holland. Hello, anyway, over there, over here. That's it, monkey. There you go. That was it. Thanks very much. Dominic Byrne, ladies and gentlemen. You have to move your hands as well. Okay. Let me hear it again. Okay. Well, any band? Any? Any, well, do um, do take oh. that. Okay. Right. Over there, over here. <laughs> over there and over yeah, here. Yeah, because yeah. Right. Over here. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't work on T bands. <clears throat> so no, okay, no Taylor. Uh, it's, uh, oh, the Chiefs. <laughs> the Kaiser Chiefs. Do the Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, the Kaiser Chiefs. Oh, he's, uh, it's exactly the same, right? Yeah. That's brilliant. Give it a go at home. Can you do the lineup for uh, <laughs> yeah. Radio One's big weekend? <laughs> Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Where is the li the list? Can you do that? You yeah, sure. All right. Radio One's big weekend. Big weekend. Dundee. Over there, there, the feeling. And the ordinary boys! <laughs> Later on in the sugar babes! <laughs> yeah, do you know what hurts? <clears throat> you, make, you make him sound literally <laughs> like one of the books. Rage, don't put your head in your hands. This is brilliant. Pink! <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> Keen! Keen! I say it hurts a bit too much. But you get the gist. Yeah, we do. Yeah, it's brilliant. If you enjoyed his impression, why not text in brilliant to 81119? If you didn't, text in loser slaphead boy. International Radio 1. Good morning, Britain. Hello. Here we are, live in Fundy. It's good, isn't it? What? Fundy? Fundy? Yep. Sunny Dundee? I arrived here yesterday after my six hour train journey. You can fly to Miami in six hours. Mm. And let me just tell you, from what I gather, I'm no meteorologist, but I think it's warmer there than it is here. Right, now, so, here we are then, uh, live at uh, whatever the time it is in the morning. It's, what, ten to nine? And we're on a buggy. Michael's driving the buggy. Hello, Michael. Hello. Seriously? Oh, hello, son. Maybe that... Oh! Can, do, you, do you drive in real life? No. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling. <laughs> Dave's behind me in buggy number two. Hello! Uh, and who's driving you? Uh, I don't know. What's your name, sir? Stuart. Stuart is driving me, and I think Stuart has driven buggies before, so I'm in safe hands. Hey, you come a cropper here, Mikey. How are you going to get out of this? We can't get out. <laughs> We're stuck. Do you know how I might get out and walk? Okay. You know, he's not going to get through there, Ben, is he? Hang on, let me just let me just guide him through. It's a width restriction. Do you know where we are trying to drive through? You know the pegs that hold the blooming tent up? We're driving between them. It's all right, now, it's fine. I'm, I'm no expert, but are oh, you going to get under here? Oh, look at that. <laughs> do you want me to lift that up? Hey, do you know what that's like? It's like kickstart. Hang, hang, hang on a second, I'm going to get out. Hang on. I'm going to get out because we're backing up. We're backing up, Dave. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I can't look. If, Dave, have we knocked these pegs out? The whole tent collapses. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Mikey. You, you, you've, got a, you've got a peg, a bit of peg action. Do you know what, Mikey? That peg, we... You're lucky that peg's not attached to anything. Well, not anymore. It was. Shall we do the rest on foot? In a, in a big blue tent next to it. Dave, you got to see a picture of this. That's the funny. He's... Yeah, I'd take a left, Mikey. You know what I mean? That's probably the best thing to do. Hang on a sec, Mikey. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> right, I'm going to get out here. No offence. Thank you very much. Say hello. Hello. Go. I think our insurance has just run out. All right. I'm sorry. You, are you having a laugh, Dave? I'm not allowed to drive that for insurance reasons, and they've got they've got him there, Stevie Wonder driving. <laughs> so that is basically what it looks like. Uh, I hope you've got a nice idea of if you if you get offered a buggy ride, uh, don't take it. Then they end up the tent looking with you. Well, uh, here comes Reese with breakfast. Bottle of Stella, Dave. <laughs> Reese, <laughs> you're not helping, are you? <laughs> That's what you want in the morning. Five point two percent. Bingo. Good morning. Nobody needs that at this time. Hey, God, I tell you, someone in Scotland explained this to me uh, uh, as if it's a normal thing that we're actually down in the hotel having breakfast with everybody else. And it's all nice and lovely. Maybe if you fancy a bit of fruit, you're being healthy. There's your little fruit option there. Tuck in, lovely. Or how about the cereal table, which consisted of muesli, cornflakes, special K, semi-skimmed and whole-fat milk, mm -hmm. and whiskey? 
A bottle of whiskey st sat on the... And by the way, half-empty whiskey. At first, I thought that that was a mistake. I thought that some drunk from the night before, because you see, the breakfast area also doubles as a bar. Yeah. And so I thought that maybe somebody had staggered out the night before and had just randomly left it there and no one had moved it. However, it's there the next day. But who the Seriously? Who wakes up in the morning? I mean, do, do you... I mean... Who, who wakes up in the morning and goes, Oh, I fancy me some special K and whiskey. Let's go. Oh, look at Richard R. Richard. He sticks his hand up straight away. Look at that. That's because you've got a drink problem. You've only got two hands and one mouth. <laughs> That's just very random. Can I say hello? It's Lydia. It's Lydia. Has Jules Holland walked in? Is he dumb? Is that Is that Is that It's a It's a belter. <laughs> See, I don't think you've given it time to breathe. Listen to this. This is the funniest <laughs> thing, right? I know it's just telling lots of stories, but they are funny. Long man, right? I've told him before, he shouldn't drink. He really shouldn't drink. I introduced him to Westwood. <laughs> Westwood was just, you know... And then after that, long man just kept shouting randomly in the hotel bar, <laughs> You baby! <laughs> but the thing was, he sounds more like Austin Powers when he you does it. Baby! Than you baby! There's a match made in heaven. But Westwood he, and Longman. But the thing was, he was doing this sort of Westwood impression to all sorts of other stuff. He was talking about the car park passes going, Validate my parking! <laughs> <laughs> And just randomly shouting out, Club Sandwich Baby, in the bar last night. I see Coxie last night. She's really tired. She's done great form. She's really tired. She, we sit down and we uh, we just have a li literally like a couple of drinks. And I, she goes, Oh, by the way, I met your mate Longman earlier. And I said, Oh, was he well behaved? She went, He just walked up to me and went, I'm Longman, and then went, You baby! In my face. <laughs> 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 Hey, that, that, that wasn't me. That What's that? New, that's my new favourite bit of audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That's me trying to drink vinegar, so to drink enough so you could guess what it was. Brilliant. We and need to was, talk about that. From the Big Brother house. We were in the Big Brother house last night. We stayed the night in the Big Brother house. We had to do a task and we had to eat smelly food then breathe on everybody, and they had to guess what, we, what we'd eaten by our breath. <laughs> uh, um, and everybody uh, wrongly guessed mine as a packet of Marlboro Lights and some tenant slugger <laughs> from the weekend. <laughs> and this is Carrie uh, drinking vinegar. That's not even human. That's an amazing like noise. Like an alien. <laughs> There's someone there who's going, ah, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> How do you even make that noise? Oh. Um. <laughs> I don't know. You try and drink vinegar. Let's see what Don't be stupid. I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> right. Get. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it really hurt. It was literally burning all the way down your throat. Foul. But they said drink a little funny. bit. Funny. Very funny. I meant to tell you yesterday, by the way, the big weekend, I bumped into uh, the original one and only big dog, Tim Westwood. All right. Uh, Darren Brown turned up as well. We bumped into Darren Brown, which was quite exciting, and he went to the casino. What? I remember what? hearing about this, and I didn't believe anyone. Do you not know about this? No. Darren Brown turned up. He's he... not allowed in casinos, is he? Well, I don't know. He is on tour. Uh, I think, uh, in fact, I think last night, I think he played, no, Sunday night, I think he played Aberdeen. Then I think he was playing Dundee last night. So text in if you know where he is, but he's certainly on tour. Random. Eight double one double nine. So I bumped into uh, Darren Brown. First of all, I saw him, uh, I was outside and he was walking in. So I went, Darren! And he did that kind of look round and acknowledge me, but he's too famous to stop. <laughs> Do you know one of them? Yeah. And I went, it's Chris Moyles. He went, oh, right. he came over and said hello. And, uh, hello. And had a couple of guys with him. So I said, are you staying up for a drink? Are you going to bed? And one of the guys went, we're going to go to the casino. And I went, all right. And Darren just looked at me and went, they need my help. Who need, oh, I see. But um, I don't think he lasted long in there. And he came out an hour later going, I told you, it's just an act for the telly. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> so if Darren Brown was that good at magic, he'd be able to make some uh, hair appear to cover up his ball patch on the back of his head. <laughs> If he was that good at magic. <sighs> Let's get ready to rumble!
Have you heard this? Yeah. Shocking. There's some music police in the background. How the hell is this representing the UK? How the hell did this happen? Mind you, it's so bad that maybe all them droopy countries will vote for it. The Europeans like rubbish music, yeah. don't they? From back when I was young Thinking of my school days and trying to write this song Classroom schemes and dreams Now they couldn't save me Cause my days were numbered when I signed down on AV Teenage kids running out, what could we do? I still show respect to my boys who made it through And getting told on Mr. T how my life would be They're giving him a signal so everyone can see Sunshine and shade, those girls are serenade Thinking of those six from chicks that misbehave Hoping that those days would go on and on forever Every day something new, just friends <laughs> it's not a real gun, it's a sound effect. I still don't like it, though. Rachel. That's opening a door, though, isn't it? Actually, that's a really bad edit. <laughs> that doesn't work. No. It's like I only cocked it once. Mm, one cock. Check it. Oh, God, sorry, Alan, you all right? I'm not going to shot him. Let me hear your uh, Jay Goody impression, Dom. Right, play the first one then. Hey, dancing. Um, <laughs> are you asking? <laughs> hey, dancing. Are you asking? Right, I got it. Okay. Then he goes. Right, yeah, I'm asking. Right, ready? Yeah. Hey, dancing. Are you asking? No. Oh well. Oh, that's it. Yeah, you're wrong. Right. Yeah. Are you dancing. Are you asking? Hang on. <laughs> Someone kill me. <laughs> are you asking? <laughs> hey, dancing. Are you asking? I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> no, no, I'm dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. Jade, you uh, obviously have done very well since you left the <laughs> brother. And now you're going to be on with Joe Wiley. Are you a fan of Joe Wiley's? Are you asking? Yeah, I am asking. Then I'm dancing. No, I'm not asking if you're dancing. Oh. Are you a fan of Joe Wiley's? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, ask you asking? I am asking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, have, now, have you met Joe before? Um, no. You haven't? You looking forward to meeting her? Are you asking? Yes. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Right, what's her name? Uh, shoot me now! <laughs> Thank you. Your face. You put on a no, face. No, no, I want to keep. Got to into roll. I want to keep this going. It's like you and Cam Westwood. You know, you got to believe. <laughs> Dominic, I want you to be Jay for longer. Hey, Joe Ellis, giving you evils. Uh, Jay, no, no, she, is, no, she's bringing in more ammunition. It's an audio tribute to Jade. Though. Jade. Yeah. All right. Your personal life has been all over the. Uh, sure. Sure, sure. All over the newspapers. Are you in a happy place at the moment? Are yeah? you asking? I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, I am in a happy right. place at the moment, yeah. Right. Now, Jo obviously plays a lot of new music on the show. Oh, she, yes, she does. She yeah. loves it. Are you into your music? Yes, I am. Are you asking I'm me? I'm asking you what, yes, I am. what kind of bands are you into? I like all sorts of bands. Yep, yeah, do you like all <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you like all the new stuff? Yes. Who are you some of your favourite new bands? Ah, the Kooks. The Kooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, kooks. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else you like? I like all sorts. All sorts. All right. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> How's uh, your your? Did you have like a hairdresser? Are you asking? Yes, I am. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, it's going to be a very interesting interview. Oh, then. yes, it will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you be Jade for the uh, nine thirty news? Yeah. What for the whole news? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Way. Are there any stories in there that, you, that Jay could read out? No. No, he's not one. Not one. There must be one. The weather? Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> you want it? Yeah. You want the weather? Yeah. Oh, this oh, 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 it's now. It's now. Oh, it's now going into my brain. Oh, it it's no. good to get that out. That's a nice release. Can we have the, uh, can we do that? Can we have the weather with, um. Go on. Uh, okay, yeah. Hang on a sec. Here's Jay Cuddy with the weather. Jay! <laughs> For most places this morning, some sunny space. Yeah. And then the rain coming back later on tonight. <laughs> it's 8.39. Yeah. That's really a uh, uh. By the way, are you asking? No, not now. Okay, <laughs> fair enough then. Hello, I'm Ricky Martin, and I want to be on Bank Holiday Monday because Joe Wiley... She don't like my pot mark face. Oh, 
Shibaz, Shibaz. What's the line here? You blow me off. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you that. Blow me off. I love it. Hey, uh, <laughs> do you like that, Jay Goody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have fun with Jay, by the way. Looking forward to it. Mm, it's going to be a now. interesting show. Uh, yeah, very interesting show. <laughs> Robbie Williams, sin, sin, sin. What does this sound like, the beginning of Robbie Williams' song? <laughs> you know, you might be right, actually, Rachel. This is Rachel, Rachel's view. Dominic, any <laughs> ideas? What does this sound like? Oh, oh hang on, I'm going to There's already been some Stop. debate about the fact that it sounds like um, Harold Faltermeyer, I think. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, right. You're hearing Going for Gold, says mm, uh, Dominic. Interesting. This is what Rachel says. It sounds like they're recapping the numbers of the old lottery music. <laughs> it's not, not far off. It's not a million miles away. Sin. Sin. Ah. Oh, they'll love that. I'm bleeding. Are you? Yeah. It's under my armpit, on my right arm. So I'm trying not to close my right arm because I don't want to get blood on me, on my mm. shirt. Sorry, I know this is a bit first thing, you know, but... So if you think I'm walking a bit weird, like, almost like some kind of... Is it a bit like camp? if you had, had your arm around somebody but they're not there? It's almost like I'm cuddling a small, fat dwarf. Mm. <laughs> This music, which we all love, but we'll all be bored of in about 11 weeks' time. 13. Big, Big Brother starts tonight on TV. So we went into the house the other day, and we all had to go in and eat different things. Hello. Hello, Joss. Hi. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Joss is so... <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Joss. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely. Joss, Big Brother has provided you with a tin of Spam. Mm hmm You must eat the Spam. Okay. You kind of know I'm vegetarian, right? Silence. Joss, Big Brother can provide something else for you to eat if you do not want to eat the Spam. <laughs> it kind of throws a spanner in the works, I guess. I'm not one of those vegetarians that don't, yeah, just don't eat meat generally. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not one of those vegetarians that doesn't eat meat. What, what kind of vegetarian are you? I'm, you know, I'm one of those lazy vegetarians where if there's a salad on the go, I'll have it, but, you know, if it's a meat feast, I'll tuck in. <laughs> uh, one more person then to go in. Hello, Rachel. Hello there. So on the diary room table uh, mm -hmm. is your plaque. She's straight away, Rachel. <laughs> Shall I just do this? You know, don't mess around. <laughs> just relax. Hello, Rachel. Hello there. So on the diary room table mm -hmm. is your plat du jour. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please Yours. remove the lid. <laughs> Yours. <laughs> now, this is when I got called in and given my secret task. Oh, yeah. Chris, your secret mission is to pretend you have street cred. OK. In order to convincingly display some street cred, you must successfully drop street slang into everyday conversation with your fellow housemates. OK. Right, so then I go out, and none of you know that I've done this, and we right. get, we're going to get a treat if we... Uh, we've got a takeaway something, which we would have won earlier from the other thing, so it's it was a cold takeaway. <laughs> so I'm trying to shoehorn these words in. They lull you into a false sense of whatever the word is yeah. about giving you beer and then just knock you down like a... Have you failed a task? 
No, um, they just went... That panicked me. When you, uh, you're the first person I spoke to, you went, have you failed a task? And I'm going, what? <laughs> Jeez, I haven't even said the words yet. <laughs> and then I look out, and the rest of the team are all uh, sitting by the pool, um, paddling their feet. It was just general chit-chat. All right. Okay. And then... So I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Can I have some beer? No. Well, not no, but Big Brother will get back to you. Yeah, these are your housemates, and they've decided to go for a dip in the pool while they're in the in the diary room. That is whack. Whack? <laughs> <laughs> Straight away, and you went, you went whack? I'm going to shut up. <laughs> You're going to ruin it. <laughs> that was great. You house. know when you sit at home and you watch them do these tasks, and you go, this is so easy. What's wrong with these numpties? <laughs> As, you know, I'm thinking, I can do this easy. I'll just say, you know, that's whack. And you go, whack? <laughs> I know. <laughs> So I, th I thought I'd definitely get away with Dave and I'll get definitely get away with Dominic. I thought those two wouldn't pick up on anything. Is it warm? Oh, I'm not a Jocelyn. Oh, I'm not going to push you, you in. One, You're my lady. I would not push you with the pool. <laughs> How the hell is that going to stop you falling in? You're my lady. <laughs> You're my lady. You're my... I do like Friend. the idea of somebody in that bunny You're my dog. Just start <laughs> <in> the <garden>. <laughs> <laughs> Straight over the head. Yeah. I want to go home, Karen. I want to go home. Do you want to come and sit in the middle? I want to go to... Gracelands. Come and sit in, please. That's, that's what I call. Nice that's what I call my. That's what I call my house. See. My crib <laughs> is called Gracelands. <laughs> what the hell am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> my crib is called Gracelands. That's C R I B in context. <laughs> but the, the hardest thing is, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'll say to, I'll say to Dominic something like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's whack, you know. So to lead into that, I'll start being a bit like that, so you won't pick up on it. I'll go, yeah, yeah. How's the pool? You go, yeah, it's not bad, actually. And I'm thinking, right, I'll say, you know, pad, you know, that pool is whack. That's what I'll say. How's the pool? Yeah, yeah. And Dom goes, yeah, it's fine. So I'm like, yeah. And that's what I'd say. He'll go, by the way, the, and change the subject completely. <laughs> and he can't go back. <laughs> so, uh, did you see the 7 o'clock news the other night? Yeah, it was whack. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? That's right, this Daz Samson record. Mm, yes. We have a theory that the kids on the beginning of it aren't school kids. But it's Daz's voice pitched mm. up, which sounds like this. Sing. What did you learn at school today? That's what the teachers used to say. But they don't know, don't understand, do you like? I think that's him. I agree. Yeah. I have information on this. And here we go. I have slowed it down using the BBC computer. Wow. What, the computer? Yeah, the one not, that not people, the old one. The ones that people used to have at school. Yeah, you play Jet Set Willy on and stuff. This is, that song... Can I just say, down. by the way, to any any people of a certain age, that used to be a very early computer game. That wasn't anything dodgy that Dominic was into. Oh, Jet no. Set Willy. Jet <laughs> Set Willy. Everybody had a bit of Jet Set Willy action yeah. when they were younger. Absolutely. All right, so you slowed it down, let's hear it. Yeah. It was good, Jet Set Willy. Right, yeah, you ready? I'll just play it. Yes! Did you learn Dave, high five. Today? That's what the teachers used to say. He's a liar. But they don't know, don't understand. Do they? Why? Do they always be the What did you learn at school today? We sussed it. Do. Sounds rubbish when the drums mm, come sounds in. Sounds rubbish the other way. Sounds rubbish <laughs> anyway, to be honest. <laughs> right, Slims 2 or Tango, what do you want to do? What do you want to do the uh, subject to be? Subjects on the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out, but I'll give you a helping hand. Uh, Dave can go first. Sister, I hate you. <laughs> my mum is my brother. <laughs> you, me, dad and a stranger. I just don't know what to do. My wife loves my brother and I love him. I love my dog in a weird way. <laughs> I'm white, he's black, are we brothers? <laughs> That's true. I stub my toe and now I'm pregnant. One night with Jeremy Kyle and now I'm pregnant. I'm Boutros, Boutros, Garley and I will take a lie detector test. Ten men, who's the dad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm expecting kittens. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one. It was good, wasn't it? My head hurts. I need a DNA test. I am the father of your chicken. <laughs> 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 
if you look at me in that way again, my head will blow off. The whole world, I hate you. Oh, that's deep. Mm, Psychologists will have a field day with you. Yeah. I'm proud of my daughter's Asbo. <laughs> I hate your guinea pig. It's only porn and I'm a grandma. I can do what I want. I'm Jeff, I'm 47 and I'm pregnant. PVC's great. <laughs> I've given up now. <laughs> I don't know, it's ridiculous. Isn't That's it? a good one for the pub, actually. That's a good pub game. The song weirdly always reminds me of Darina McCall because I remember when it was out, she rang me one day, kind of out of the blue, and said, What's that song that Radio One play about the woman watching porn in a dressing gown? And I'm like, <laughs> What? She goes, Oh, it's a really beautiful song, and you're playing it. We're playing a beautiful song about a woman watching porn in a dressing gown. Are you serious? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's this song. You know that? I don't get it, though. It's one of the lines at the beginning of the song. She's singing, I'm watching porn in my dressing gown. How many times have you heard the song? Loads. But that's the thing. Her vocals are really nice, but you can't really understand mm. what she's saying. I lie awake, I've gone to ground, right? Did you get that? It does sound oh, yeah. like I'm watching porn in it my It is. Head. No, it, and that's what she's singing. So where is he then? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a good question because it's not wholly unusual for him to be not around at this time. Yeah. Okay? But normally, we've spoken to him before now. We can't get hold of him. Ooh. This is what you need to know. We've tried ringing his phone for the last hour. Nothing. Okay. Dead. Off. So, your guess is as good as mine in terms of how this all pans out. To be fair, <laughs> if I was Chris Moores right now, mm. I wouldn't have come in. No. It's like that time where, let's say you used to get picked on at school mm -hmm. and Monday morning came. I thought, do you know what? I don't really want to go I've to school. I've got a headache. Yeah, I've got a headache. Mum, seriously, I've got a poorly tummy. Feel my temperature. Seriously, I'm, I'm not too good. I would have done exactly the same. Now, I don't know whether this is an elaborate gag. He's having fun with us. Maybe he has gone missing. Have you, have you checked the smoking room? Right there. <laughs> have a look next. No, he's not. Hang on, there's a big fat bloke crying in there. <laughs> it's not. That's a cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the honest truth is that we don't know where he is. He was last seen heading for Cardiff. <laughs> I saw him on Friday in the pub, and um, he was made to go home by his missus. Oh, was he? Yeah. It was that good, was it? He got a text message, uh, and I said, um, are you uh, are you uh, being made to go? No, 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 no. Yes, I am, yeah. Well, I, I texted him yesterday before the game to, to wish him luck and to enjoy his day with his family and friends. Um, I didn't text him afterwards because I felt that any contact from me would have been seen as Mickey-taking. Yes. Um, and that is really it. Rachel, you've heard nothing, have you? No. So, um... What are you oh, doing for the next hour? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a fry up waiting next door, right? But um, we'll play a record, see what happens. All right. Right, okay. If, if you've seen him, by the way. That's what we call organic radio. Is that it? Mm. Love it. Never get to be, never get to have it, never get to cool you stop paying the tears. Yeah! Is this how it's supposed to be? So there's me then, bacon, eggs, sausage, beans, tomatoes, fry bread, toast, and a big pot of coffee, waiting for me next door in the cafe. You fat git, was that just for you? That was just for me, yeah. So, um, if you just tuned in, by the way, hello, it's uh, 12 minutes past seven. Uh, I'm Joel, that's JK, this is Rachel. Morning. And this is Dave. Hello, now if you've just, you know, got up and you're not quite sure what's happening, here's the story. Yesterday was the championship playoff final in Cardiff between Leeds United and Watford. Final score, Leeds United nil, Watford three. Oops. Chris Moyles was last seen by you. I think you were the last person to see him, weren't you, on Friday night? I saw him Friday night in the, in the pub about whew, half seven, something like that. And right. uh, he was forced to go home by his missus. At half seven. Mm. Because the thing is, I texted him uh, yesterday before the game, wishing him all the best and wishing him a happy day and all that kind of stuff. I've heard nothing from him since then. Rachel's heard nothing. Carrie and Dom, likewise, we've all sent him texts. We've, this morning, been trying to ring him for, what are we now, quarter past seven? We've been trying to ring him for the last hour and a half. 
taxi driver be sat outside his house this morning going, mm. come on, where are you? Come on. So I was going to say, has anyone phoned Reese, the uh, the executive producer of this no, show? I was thinking I'd better do that. Well, and also, on. I'm going to go and check my messages as well. Hang he's, on, but he's a Leeds fan. Reese was uh, with him, uh -huh. you see? So this could be mm. the key to where he is, because Reese was with Chris yesterday in Cardiff. They both went together. I could, I could really do without this today. Yeah. yeah. So, You're struggling. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, really? <laughs> you could reach. Oh, that's <laughs> really nice. <laughs> bacon, egg, sausage, beans, tomatoes, fried there you bread. Go. I've had a busy coffee. weekend. Uh, so it's JK and Joel, Dave and Rachel, in for Chris Evans. Sorry, Chris Moyles. <laughs> Are you all right with the desk, by the way? Wait, because it's, it's all, all the buttons are slightly different. They're Chris's settings. Oh, it's the savior settings. Is it like driving somebody else's car? Yeah. Hello, Paul. Hello, how are you? I'm all right, are you? Yeah, good, thanks. I saw him last night. Where? In a hotel bar in Abing Card. It was about midnight. Right. Uh, he was with a few of the Leeds players. Was he now? Yeah, down in his sorrows. Kind into his beer, he was. What, what state did he look at? Oh, he, he wasn't, wasn't too bad, but he was getting messy. Do you know if he went to bed after that, around about midnight, or did he stay up? Well, I didn't. I bailed out at that point because I had a long drive this morning, but um, <laughs> yeah, they were like there for the duration. OK, so we know that he was in a hotel bar in Cardiff, draining his sorrows with the Leeds United players. Yeah, that was right. Right, then. What's it is like Cluedo on the radio, this, isn't it? Is, it is, yeah. So we've got the facts. We've got Cardiff, Leeds United players. See, I could understand more if they'd won, which obviously was his hope an intention. Mm. If they'd won yesterday, then you can imagine him going out on the lash. But the fact that it'd be a bit of a damp squid, wouldn't it? The fact that they got battered 3-0. I'm thinking about this. I would have gone... Well, think about it. If, you, if you're a Leeds fan like Chris is, and Watford, obviously, they won 3-0, I probably wouldn't have turned up anyway. Also, if Leeds would have won, I still wouldn't have turned up. So you're in a, you're in a catch-22 yeah. situation. But either way, it looks like you're missing your breakfast, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's, that's one thing you don't want to do to me. Well, miss your breakfast. Yeah, I tell you. Do you get ratty with no food? Oh, it's so awesome. Yeah. It's untrue, yeah. When was the last time you ate? <laughs> Five past four. <laughs> Good three and a half hours, I tell you. See that boy just about another day. Have you noticed, by the way, that the primary concern this morning is not actually the whereabouts of the host of the show. It's the fact that Joel hasn't eaten now for four and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and this is there's almost panic on his face. Now, can, don't I mean, do what my mum does. If you don't eat for a bit and you get giddy, yeah. do you know what I mean? You start wobbling a bit. Giddy. Don't get giddy. If anybody knows anything, feel free to shut me up right now. But obviously he's a massive Big Brother fan. He's off today. Has anyone checked like E4? He's not going to the Big Brother house. He's off for 13 weeks, is he? <laughs> no, no, no. But you know when they put somebody else in? And uh, he's like that with Davina. Dave? I That's not I mean, I can't no. fully dis discount the theory, Joel, but I think it's unlikely. All right. I think he's probably just had too much to drink last night in Cardiff. Yeah. He should have been. But I don't know when he was, when he was planning to come back, because ordinarily he should have been back last night. When was the last time you had text contact with him? I've not heard anything from him all weekend. Joe no was the last one to see him on Friday. No one dare. I had a text yesterday. Carrie. Before Ooh. the match. Oh. Only before the match, because I, I said a good luck, and I got one back saying, I'm very nervous, thank you. And that was at, like, half two, and that was it. Can I just ask one question? How did he get to the game? Anyone know that? Anyone? Did he drive? Well, he'll probably he... say wet in the bus, but I think it'll be a helicopter. Okay. He didn't get a helicopter. Did he drive? I did don't he... know. Right, I think he, he got the... Did he try? I don't know, because I heard him on Vernon, and he was talking about a minibus. <laughs> and his parents had gone in their executive travel, and he was waiting for the minibus. He wouldn't have got a minibus. That's how civilians travel. That's what, I, that's what I heard. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the plot thickens. <laughs> the Chris Moyle Show. International Radio 1. Read the silver, touch me on Radio 1. 7.45, the Chris Moyles Breakfast Show, without Chris Moyles today. It's like the Chris Moyles treasure hunt, isn't it, really? Yeah. Where is he? Where is he? There's some conspiracy theories coming in. You, your one was about the Big Brother house, wasn't it? Well, there's two that I thought of this morning, about quarter past seven. Number yeah. one, he's not here, yeah. right? He's like that with Davina McCall. He wants to be on Big Brother desperately. He loves it. I think they'll probably put him in the house this morning. Be kind of E4 on that bloody table. Maybe he won a golden ticket. <laughs> that, oh. He's been stuffing himself with chocolate. And he didn't tell us. He's got the golden ticket. He's going in. They did that Wonka style, didn't they? Yeah. They were sort of sending them out, and then the winner of that is the... Is it the 14th person or 15th? I don't know. Anyway, the, the next person to go in is the ticket. Also, he did tell me on Friday as well. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it should be, um, he told me on Friday that he had been invited to Posh and Bex do. Yeah. 
But that, that was a secret, was... though, wasn't it? Yeah, hang on a minute. Yeah. Hang on a minute. That was last night. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. It, it, it doesn't match. These theories don't match. Well, it does, because... Well, I thought that that was classified information, but you said it now anyway. So, <laughs> if indeed... He... Am I not going to say that? No, that was top secret. Right. Uh, but if indeed he was there at, at said do, which we all know took place last night and was star-studded, even Shane Ward was there, you know. There was pictures <laughs> of him before, arriving in a Rolls Royce. If he was there last night, then maybe he's got lost there. But according to someone that we had on the phone, he wasn't there last night because he was in a hotel bar. Ah, oh, that's very true. At midnight, so he couldn't have gone. Yeah. And the great thing, because he hasn't turned <laughs> up, it's a perfect opportunity, opportunity for us to play. Oh, your game. game. You're going to do it. Yeah, we're going to do it right now. Now, we're going to explain to you, first of all, this is the perfect listener game game. It's a bit bitchy because me and JK play it in the car. You can't really play it in the morning if you want to drink alcohol with it, but you can drink anything, obviously, for this game. Tea, coffee, orange juice, always good. So every time one of these phrases is mentioned, mm -hmm. you've got to take a gulp of your tea, coffee, or orange juice. Okay, so it's like a drinking game, yeah, but yeah. For, for the daytime. Yeah. The first one is, God love them. God love them. So you have to take a sip or down whatever you are doing. Okay. And, and that can be, God love them, or God love him, or God love her. Yep. You've got to take a sip of your drink then. Okay. Next one, Joel. Unbelievable. 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 Yeah. Okay. Again, you've got to take a, a sip every time Miles You're mentions this. asking for trouble here. Wait for it, mate. Next one. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling, telling you now. You. I'm telling you. If he says I'm telling you, you drink some drink. Yeah. I'm telling you. Can I guess that one of the other ones is random? Random is one of them? Yes, it is, Dave. Well done. Another two, one. Two more, yeah. Is dude. Dude, dude, which he admits he says too much well, nowadays. The thing is, actually, Rachel's put, uh, picked up on this before, is that me and Chris both use the phrase dude about each other. And actually, it's something that isn't normally Where's my used. car, dude? Where's dude, my, where's my car, car, dude? Where's my coffee? Yeah, anything like that. So we do say dude. Don't worry, the Comedy Dave unofficial drinking oh, game coming go. up tomorrow on Early Breakfast. Do I have stock phrases as well? You do, yeah. And, and finally, seriously. 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 Right, so read those back to us, Dave. So we have, in no particular order, God love them. Unbelievable, I'm telling you, random, dude, and seriously. Every one of those, you take a sip. And finally, if you get more than three records in half an hour, you've got to pour the drink over your mate's head. <laughs> and you get a bonus if you get three in, <laughs> in half an hour. The Chris Moyle Show. Performance pay. International radio. So then, Dave, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm nervous. Got the echo working. <laughs> You've done it wrong. You've done it wrong. Idiot. <laughs> 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 right, take the echo off a minute. Okay, that's Thank back God, to normal. Now, what you do is you say, it's, it's that time when Dave likes to say, and then when I go, <gasps> then you put the echo on. Okay. So what's your big lead in then? What do we say? Uh, what do we normally say? It's that point in the show where Dave likes to say... Okay, Joel, have you got that? It's that point where... Oh, come on, it's not difficult, man. It's that point in no, the no, show... No, 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 you say, hang on, hang on. You, you go, it's half-time on the show, it's that point where Dave likes to say... It's half-time point in the show, it's where Dave likes to say... <gasps> no! No, 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 man! <laughs> when no. he says ramble, hit it then. No, actually, no, no, turn, turn the echo off. What you do is you hit it, <laughs> don't you hit it on the bull of Ramble? Yes! Okay, so I'll cue you, I'll cue you. Right, it's half-time part of the show. Uh, it's where Dave likes to say... <gasps> Let's get ready to Ramble! you start. Do not start with me. Regardless, if it was five hours of heaven or hell, I was up at three o'clock this morning. I did not want to still be here at 9.46. Do 
Shut up, Harry boy. Listen, it's great experience for you, filling in for a legend. Dave, That's I'll, um, look at it. I'll pass over to you now. You sound awful, mate. I sound, do you know, I sound as bad as Lisa United played yesterday. Commiserations, by the way. We were rubbish. Well, the thing is, it's a sh because we had all, the whole thing set up, we had all the music and everything for you yeah. for this morning. So did I. Five to I seven. It, I, I had it all set up, a three-hour show, celebrating Leeds because of the Premiership, and when we got beat yesterday, stuffed. So I you thought, thought you're not coming in? I left a message for Rachel saying I'm not coming in, so I'm in the clear, technically. Rachel? Didn't get it. Saying I'm not coming in. You didn't call my mobile, though, did you? No, I called your work phone. Yeah, but I haven't got that. I, I know you spoke to us first. Have you spoke to anyone upstairs yet? Well, on the, on the floors above. Well, I think you'll be fine with Reese, uh, your executive producer, because he's a Leeds fan. So he's probably with you. He's, I don't know. He's probably still in the hotel. That's where I am. Now, um, I'm still in Cardiff. Have you spoke to um, Mr. Parfit or Mr. No. Cooper? Listen, I'm not worried. I, t I left a message saying I'm not coming in, right? And um, as I saved Radio 1 from annihilation... Oh, we've killed it again, don't worry. Well, do you know, I've got to say, actually, though, you say that, Jason, but, you know, I've, I've got to be honest, in a, in a serious moment of, of, uh, of seriousness, because um, I, I, I am still a bit delicate, um, there are times when I doubt myself, and there are times when I, uh, I, I as an individual, look at myself and, and just wonder... Um, if I'm doing the right things, or I'm making the right choices, am I, am I, am I doing the right decisions? And I, I, I try to often look inside and find out, you know, what, you know, am, am I right? Am I wrong? I don't know. And when, when my confidence is really lacking, it's really difficult to kind of pull yourself back up. However, listening to you two I this morning, this I'm a genius. Yes. I'm an absolute genius. So then, your excuse is you actually called Rachel, therefore you're in the clear. You, you were, were definitely getting today off. Yeah, I yeah, bank holiday Monday. Well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being funny, but you I know, know bank holidays. I'm not being funny, but right, the management upstairs are going to slag you off today, right? But but you know you've got them over a barrel, and they'll just come along and go, oh, Chris, it don't matter, it happens sometimes. Uh, I, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, right, I mean, quick, quick one before we let you uh, go back to bed. Where's everyone else? Where's the rest of the team? We're here. They're all here. Hello, Hello Carrie. Uh, Hi, hi. Oh, Carrie, you look lovely today. I can't, oh. Do you know what? You've been listening in bed, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, you've been listening. You've been worried. <clears throat> for the last ten minutes, you've yeah. You've been cacking yourself. Yeah, literally. cacking myself up for the uh, pre-organised phone call. But I've thoroughly enjoyed every bit of the show this morning. Oh, I'm bored. Bye. Of him. <laughs> just, sorry, I just got really bored of him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the deal is then, he actually knew he was getting today off, apparently, according to him. No. Now, Rachel, you were supposed to get a call. Did you get haven't, a call? No, haven't heard the message yet. Dave, I did don't you think get that's an excuse. I have nothing, no. Dave, are you are you angry or are you just disappointed? Um, I've actually had quite a laugh this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, in, in all seriousness, I've actually had quite a nice morning. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. It's too, nice, yeah. you know. A change is as good as a rest. They say, and it's yeah. been fun with you two. Fortunately for you, Joe Wiley's here. Otherwise, you miss out on lunch as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Wiley. Thank God you're here, Joe. Oh, I really can't turn your mic on there. Bung that mic up just there. There it is. I was smooth. Yeah, you can you can do it yourself here. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, yeah, I nearly went back home because you were doing such a good job. Yeah. They're obviously enjoying themselves. Mm. We've like... had a laugh. Have you? It's yeah. been fun. It's been what, fun. How would you compare and contrast? Well, the thing is, working with it's Joel? just a bit different because it's like when your teacher doesn't turn up when you're at school. And yeah. it's like that we've been put in charge of our own radio station for the day. <laughs> Anarchic. It's we sort fun, of won yeah. it in a competition or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it, will it? We're quite looking forward to giving it back to you. <laughs> At ten o'clock. Oh, if I catch it, all right. You know. Right, ladies and gentlemen, cheer right, for Joe Wiley. Yeah. She's on a ten. Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. I know I can count. So we finally got the love from Chris Moyles this morning. Sounding very tired and emotional. Sounded like knackered, didn't he, in his hotel somewhere in Cardiff. Um, can I just say, on behalf of all of us at the Chris Moore Show, thank you very much for, for staying behind and missing your breakfast, Joel. Uh, Jason, thank you very much as well. It's a pleasure, Dave. I really enjoyed it. God or Steve Wright and clapping for no reason. <laughs> There's the old lady. Yeah. Oh. Don't look at Joe Wiley when you say that. Uh, thank you, Dominic. Yay! Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, thank you Rachel. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, JK. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. Right, so he's back tomorrow morning at 7. Goodbye. How are you?
I'm all right. So, you, the new Chris Evans, then, you know, yes, for Monday's off. No, you're all right. No, yeah, well, no. But, well, I'd have Monday's off in a, in a similar Chris Evans style, but unlike him, I'm not a complete arse. Yes. But, um, <clears throat> thank you for the, uh, for filling in yesterday. It's all right. So, it's all to do with the guy from Big Brother who, um, God love him, his, uh, what's his name? Pete. Pete. Yes. Pete, who does this? Yeah, hey, baby, this is you. And this. Wow. This is clunk. Right. <laughs> right. And this is, and this is <laughs> a similarity. Wow. Uh, there you go. It's not a million miles away, is right. it? Right. Now. I never knew, mate, but clunk was the first ever cartoon character with Tourette's. Yeah, I don't, th yeah, I don't think he did have Tourette's. It was just, <laughs> right. And, but this is another one. Now, this is interesting to yeah. me. If you play that last one of Pete where he goes, wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And just play it once more while this is <laughs> loading up. Okay. Right. You ready? Yeah. R two D two. We said that before, haven't we? R two D two. Wow. It's there, isn't it? And apparently, R two D two also occasionally does go as well. <coughs> what? Twenty four countries. Yeah. Twenty four beautiful songs. Yeah. But millions of judges who will decide the one and only winner of tonight's final. Can I just say, Terry Wogan is f so funny, mm. and the re the reason Terry Wogan is the best TV he does is because it's it's like, for him it's like being on the radio. And uh, I just love the fact that he gets <laughs> he gets so hacked off with the thing. I'm amazed he does it every year. I reckon he probably hates doing it, but uh, all his mates talk him into doing it. Athens. Athens. Hello, Athens. Hello, Maria and Sakis. You. See, now, by the time it comes to by the time it comes to voting, I swear, I, I, this is what I believe. I reckon that Terry is plastered. Athens. Athens. Hello, Athens. Hello. <laughs> Just Let's give us the score, you Egypt. <laughs> He's brilliant. Give us a score, you Egypt. Do you want me to do the barrel thing now? Yeah. <clears throat> Was this quite serious? Yep. All right. Let me find some, um, serious music. Radio One's Bear All campaign kicked off on the Sunday surgery with Weston and Dr. Mark Hamilton this weekend. It's all about safer sex. We've launched what could be the UK's biggest ever young people's sex survey, and we'd like you to take part in the survey, that is, not the sex. You can get to the site through Radio One online. Oh, and by the way, you're not just telling us your secrets, though. Oh, no, no. Visit the site and you can win loads of money can't buy prizes. So, tell us how many times you fiddle a day and we might send you a pink CD. What? Violin. Pink violin. Are we giving, are we giving away violins? I didn't know that. We can also win musical instruments. <laughs> That's like, random. Like an oboe. <laughs> From pink. Ow, brilliant. They have um, gold and platinum discs and blah, 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 blah. I want, uh, do you know what? I want to do the survey. Let's have a look. No. It won't take long. Yeah, of course I can do it. Age. 24. Sex. Yes, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I put on an application form for our price job. I didn't get it. <laughs> you did, did you? I did. I thought, <laughs> I, was, I thought I was hilarious. Uh, how many sexual partners have you had? What, one time? <laughs> Do you know what? Hang on, let me think. One, two, two. <laughs> <laughs> which method of contraception do you prefer to use? Um, blah, blah, blah. Which method of contraception does your partner use? No, headache. <laughs> Have you ever had a one-night stand? Yes, once. Yes, a few. No, I would never. No, but I might in the future. I love that. I'm That's planning no, on it. No, but I'd love one. <laughs> planning on it. I wish. Is it coming? <laughs> Click I wish. Do you always use a condom with a new partner? Yeah, when uh, Tash joined the show, she was a new mm. partner to the show. <laughs> we just walked around the office holding one. Uh, if not, why not? Uh, do you find it difficult to discuss contraception with your partner? Not a problem, a bit embarrassing, really difficult. I never discuss contraception with my partner. Um, what do you go... Who do you go to for advice and information about sex? Dominic Byrne. Mm -hmm. Which of the following would you rather have sex with? Chris, Dave, Rachel, Dom, Carrie, Alad, Jocelyn. None of the above. All of the above. 
Joel. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he's wearing his German glasses. <laughs> to make the lovemaking act last longer, who do you think of? <laughs> J.K., Joel, Nicholas Witchell, Alan Partridge... <laughs> I'm making some of these Michelle up. Michelle McManus. <laughs> <laughs> Please think from the following the issues that worries you most about sex. Getting pregnant, getting caught, <laughs> what your mates will think of you. Oh, uh, okay. And then it goes on and on and on. Are we handling this in the right way, Rachel? Oh, I think so. Yeah, good. Right. Does it give you a score at the end? No, there's no score. So how good you are. Mostly bees. There's no there's no <laughs> score. You might win a prize. Yeah, but you might win a prize. So tell us, if, are you worried about are you worried about catching gentle warts? Uh, and do you want to win a pink CD? This is the survey for you. Signed. What? Might be signed. What the gentle warts? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Shall I go through the quiz with you? Let's let's start it off with you, Dom. A right. Age. Thirty four this year. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Sex. Male. Oh Se yes, please. That's all. <laughs> Sexuality. Male again. <laughs> so I think you meant that. so, uh, so homosexual. All oh, right, no heterosexual. Right. Okay. How many sexual partners have you had? Okay, you don't embarrass me. Let's work no, this. I swear, this well, is the question. My wife's listening and stuff. Since so what's war? What's uh, more worrying is my child is listening. Yeah, but he won't be. He wouldn't understand. No, no, but it's a bit of a weird subject. All right, fine. Okay. Daddy's talking about right. how many. How... <coughs> no, no. Question seven. How long do you normally last in bed? That's not a question. Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah, it is. A, a, like hours. An hour, half an hour, during the first hour break of Corrie. That's not a question. It is. This, this A. Right. <laughs> when was the last time your wife shouted your name out in bed? A, when you were blocking the TV set. A. <laughs> B, when you were eating biscuits and crumbs had gone onto the... <laughs> <laughs> Hold it together. Um, do you always use a condom with a new partner? Well, no, because I'm married. Right. So we don't have new partners. By the way, I've... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was glad you added that final bit there. It's like, no, because I'm married, so therefore... <laughs> it's fine. What if you have a new business partner? Would you use a card on that? <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. Safety first. A firm handshake and, yeah, absolutely. You, you and Toby today are doing the news together. Yeah. Have you used a condom? Pretty much, yeah. Right. For, for the eighth Toby's so. wearing one now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving. <laughs> Without his hand. Do you ever fantasise about <laughs> colleagues at work? <laughs> Sorry, say again. Do you ever fantasise about colleagues at work? Um, if so, can you name them? Uh, Rachel, but that's that's it. Right. Thank you. Luckily, we didn't giggle about sex there. Yeah. I thought we handled it very well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> International Radio 1. Pick a member of the team, Carrie. Dave. Come on, the rep. Uh, no, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, no. I'm quite particular about my underpants. I like boys. <laughs> Dave, name a, name a member of the team. I'm going to name Dominic. Welcome back. I hate that accent, don't what? you? Touching Ray Stubbs. I'm not touching Ray Stubbs. I don't get it. Craig, get off me, man. Stop touching me in that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Dominic. Off that. Uh, I'll say Rachel. Rachel. It's just open to men. Oh, if I have to have a nibble. <laughs> Try them. One. They're juicy. Rachel. Alex. Alex. Oh, God. Ah! You're going to have to have a special shoe. <laughs> <laughs> a shoe. shoe. So Dominic reckons that, uh, well, tell the, tell the nations. Well, it's either the start of this track or it's the German entry in the Eurovision Song Contest. Reminds me of a Radiohead song called Paranoid Android. What, it's either this track, what, Corinne Bailey Ray? Yeah, I don't think it's... Play the German one. Have you got the German? No, it's not that one. Radiohead. No, it, no. No, play. If you can play the beginning, Karim Bailey Ray. I just not that either. It's is not it? that one either. What have I just heard then? God knows. It's late. Are you seriously? Oh my lord! I'm, I'm losing. Have you got? Have you got Paranoid Android there? Not this. No. You played something that good. News and jingle. Now, 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 now. This morning. Yeah, this. No. It's not that. Sorry, I've obviously just lost the plot totally. Christina Milian. Did we play that? Or did we no, drop it? no, we dropped, dropped it. it. Could be the French. Oh my God! Would you? No, listen. You wait. There'll be good conclusion. Q8? What? Q8 entry. They're not. They're, they're not, not in Europe. Europe. They're, they're not, not even in Europe. All right. Well, do you want me to play it? Yeah, go on. Okay. Yes. Now, if you queue up Paranoid Android, it sounds very similar at the beginning. No, hang on. This bit. 
Thank you. Yes, it does. You've got it vaguely. Like the music from The Apprentice, actually, that French one. Oh, oh. Now, see, now we're getting really confusing. Oh, that's, I'm just so musical. You're an idiot. <laughs> Not that one. This is Radiohead and <laughs> Paranoid Android. A French entry sounds like Paranoid Android. Check you out, Double Deck. Music really is a universal language, isn't it? Yeah, and... Uh, Which is proof. You're fluent and effluent. Thank you. Dave, you're scratching your ass. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear it, man. Can't hear it. Do it again. You can hear it from here. Yeah, she bomb. Oh, Dave. What? I'll be in double war with a bullet. Loaded guy, corpex, cock it and bullet. That's awful. I'd love to hear what Joe Wiley said off the back of that. Oh, God, absolutely amazing. That was, oh, that was brilliant. Bye-bye. Interview over. Even Dominic turned around halfway through that and just looked at me with a bemused look on his face. Cock it and pull it. <laughs> oh, dear. Fallout boy. That was awful. Mm. <laughs> Let's anyway. not play that again. Did anyone, did anyone, why did they give us that to replay? It's not good enough to play once. Right. Play it again? But I still can't understand what he's saying. He makes even less sense when it's just him and a guitar. But the track's good. Yeah, the track's good, but it proves... What? It proves how clever you can be in a studio and making people sound good. Play it. Brace yourself. Am I more than you bargained for yet? No, straight. What the hell is he singing? Mm. Are you more than you bargained for? He's I can not understand that. that. Yes, he is. No way. Yes, he is. He ain't saying that. It's not happening. <laughs> Go on then. Am I more than you bargained for yet? It's a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> Am I more than you bargained for yet? I've been dying to tell you anything right. you want to hear. Yeah. Cause that's just who I am this week. Lying in the grass right. next to the mausoleum. Next to the mausoleum. The miles is what? Snot in your bed. Hang on. It's a snot it's in your bed. <laughs> He's lying in bed miles. next to Miles and Liam. Snot in your bed. Snot in your bed. <laughs> Miles and Liam. Lie in the grass next to the mausoleum. Miles and Liam. Snot in your bedpost, but you're just a lord in a song. Snot in your bedpost, but you're still writing a song. Judas, I think it's that. Snot in your bedpost, but you're just a lord in a song. But Judas is learning a song. Double horn. Double, Double horn. Break your nails. Break your nails. We're slipping in the rotty. Some people liked it. And yeah, said, a lot of people don't like it. Not many, though. The rest of the band were in the bed. In, in the bed? In the bill? Yeah, they should, have, they should have been in jail. Oh. Sausage and mash. <laughs> I think you're being overly cruel. I don't think we are. I think you are. I think you're Joe, being overly corporate. I think Joe Wise's think life is always great. As producer of the year, you should go to whoever scheduled that and slap them in the face in the <laughs> office when they get into work. <laughs> what do they expect me to play that? Come off the back of it and go, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, crap!
Danny Furtado and Manny to Radio 1. Uh, lovely, lovely. George Michael on the show with uh, Joe Wiley after midday today. There's news from Dominic and Spoff and Kai. 9.30. Bush and Blair admit mistakes in Iraq. Can I just mean because I forgot something I had to bring it? <laughs> <laughs> and England loose. Don't, don't do it now. You're just cruel. You all right? I'll teach you to laugh at my friend Dave while he's doing a bit of dancing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was funny. It was if a man dances, never laugh at him. I can't help it if I've got natural rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> are you all right? How are you, how's you breathing? Fine, thanks. Big breath? <sighs> yeah, they certainly are. <laughs> Can I move your sack, by the way? Uh, <laughs> that's, like. Like, that's Carrie's bag. Mm. Today's show is very random today. X Factor yesterday, we're, there's James, myself, and Matt, the rugby player, sharing the dressing room. And it's about an hour and a quarter before the show starts. It's about quarter to eight. So I've gone, I fancy going across the road and having a pint, if anybody fancies that. And James goes, do, do you fancy a drink? And I went, I could do with a drink, yeah. To which he pulls out the biggest hip flask I have ever seen, right? It's about it's ten, like, like ten a thermos. inches long. It's huge, right? So me and Matt start laughing. And what's he got in it? Only James Stewart would have a hip flask containing sherry. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love it. I have a little sherry before I go. It calms my nerves. Anyway, right, I'll show about it now. 7.43, let's get back to the hits. What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. You're not doing that, are you? Oh, yes! <laughs> the Louis Walsh ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to give it a go tonight. What do you reckon? That'd be good. Are you really? Yeah. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Oh. That's a nice song. Oh, I think now, I'm in two minds whether I'm going to sing it as me or oh. as Louis Armstrong. Sing as Louis Walsh. Go on. Not Lou <laughs> Louis Walsh. Or AC. I like it, the trees of green. <laughs> I like Theresa Green. Red <laughs> roses, too. She's lovely. And a tink to me myself. Say. What a wonderful life! <laughs> it's world, Louis. Oh yeah. <laughs> BB Allard. Morning. Morning. Is it Glenn, the Welsh guy? Yes. Is there something wrong with him? I mean, I can't do his voice. He's really Welsh, and he he's always seems Welsh. like he's a little bit drunk and a little bit stupid, and he looks a little bit, you know, as if he comes from a classroom of 30 kids, but they've only got two surnames, if you know what I mean, and he's just a little bit, you know, like, he's, he's in the diarism chair, and it's all a little bit like that, and all that, that. What the hell are you talking it's about? It's not just because he's Welsh, is it? Oh, gosh, no. No, I'm glad he stayed in the house, because he's going to... I think he's going to be good. He's got better already. Well, I don't know. If he's going to be good, he's just a little bit weird, and that, you know, like some toilet roll and some fondant fancies and a tyre to sit in, and I'd like some bananas, and I'd like some tarmac. You know, they've got a camera in the pool. Mm. Yeah. And people, they often show the view from the camera, and people diving under the water and waving at the camera. Yeah. So they show Pete, and he's under the water, and he's waving at the camera, and he's mouthing something to the camera and giving it the thumbs up. And he floats back underneath underneath the water, and he's looking right into the camera like this, holding his breath, and all of a sudden he just went... <laughs> and he did one of his outbursts. <laughs> and he, he had his, one of his little... What, what, was the, what was the word? The... Tick. Tick. Is that, is that the... Right, because yeah. I, I don't want to be offensive. I don't know what the word is, but... Tick. And he had one of his little outbursts and swore under the water. <laughs> he was in a poor man, not even under water, is he safe? Let's get ready to rumble! Do it again, because no I had you know, to change it to Echo, man. Right, man. God's sake. Give, give, me, give me a name. Any name you can think of. Um, Thomas Barley. Thomas Barley? That's a nice name. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Good morning. Good morning. What name, please? Thomas Barley. Calling Sumit Bazaz. No. <laughs> it's not even no, close, not. is it? He's sitting, a... sitting next what to him. Sumit Bazaz. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. It's not him. Give me the name of anybody famous. Here. Boris Becker. Right, do you want to do that? All right. Good morning. Right. What name, please? Boris Becker. Calling Parish Budia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a chat with him anyway, do you know what I think?
Where's the uh, la, 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 where's the line from that you liked from um, do we have it from James Hewitt? Whoa! <laughs> go go! <laughs> go go! <laughs> right. The thing, the, thing, the thing with James Hewitt is, oh. if you were to do an impression of Michael Jackson, right? I'm going to ask you very quickly. I'm, when I say go, I want you to all do what you would do. Mm. Okay. I want a quick impression of Michael Jackson. What would he do? Go. Ow! Ow. There you go. So you all pretty much say the same thing. Mm. He obviously has no idea what Michael Jackson does. He thinks Michael Jackson goes woohoo like that. <laughs> Whoa ho! Hey! It's like he's trying to slow down a horse. <laughs> Whoa ho! <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny. It's so funny. Uh. Michael Jackson on a, at a rodeo. That's what it is. <laughs> Whoa ho! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, he's going to get his own show, isn't he, James Stewart? I think. He should. Uh, he should. The guy's hilarious. Mm. Whoa ho! <laughs> <laughs> What's that last one? <laughs> <laughs> you did it twice. Huh? Pretty baby with your hands on. You give me fever. Go, go. Hey! Hey, pretty baby with your hands on. The oh. Will Hay is one of my funniest things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good ringtone, actually. Hey. <laughs> That's his version of Michael Jackson going, hee hee. Mm. But he, he obviously doesn't know that. Will Hay. So it was always said to him, you know, do about the old Michael Jackson. Wee -hee. Uh, what's wee -hee? What was that? Wee -hee. No problem. Yeah. And he's forgotten he's gone. Yeah. That's what he's done. Whoa. <laughs> Go -go. Dominic. Hi. Teach them how to do an impression. All right. Um, Jules Holland, okay? Mm -hmm. Any band, doesn't matter. Let's say the Kaiser Chiefs, sure. Okay, you ready? Um, over there, over here, the Kaiser Chiefs! <laughs> <laughs> That's an impression. Yeah, but the thing is, though, what you, what you miss by being next door is that you can't see his got... turnaround and finger point. I'm coming come, in. Come here, come here, come here. Right, this, what... this is very visual. Right, okay. okay. Watch this. Okay, now, Joel, you're staying in the Hello, studio. You, right, you might not find this as funny. Okay. Okay. Watch okay. It. Look, name, I'm watching, I'm watching. name the band, Jace. Okay. Any band. Um, Beautiful South. The Beautiful South. A good choice, actually, because it's yeah. two words, which sounds better. Out of the way, <laughs> carry the swing. So, yeah. he does this, he'll say... Hey. You're listening to Radio 1. From over there to over here. The car! <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm obsessed with the Kaiser chair. <laughs> <laughs> this is there. recorded, this show. Here we go. Over there to over here, the beautiful sound. <laughs> and you swing your hand and uh, talk as if you've got problems with your throat. Come over here to over there, it's a cosmetic. Brilliant. Right, eight double one number nine. Then uh, it's performing dog time with John Coleshaw. Uh, shout out the name, and he will do the voice. Right, so people are texting in names for you to do voices of John. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and make this as random as possible. Okay. Relax. Okay. Um, now, for this link. Obviously, we're going to keep Dominic Byrne here. As, do as you know, Dominic is desperate to be an impressionist. Are you really? I'm oh, working sorry. on Jules Holland at the moment, John. Have you oh, not heard his Jules Holland? No, no. Right, name any band. Uh, Razorlight. Any, any, anything which has got a couple of names in. That's better, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, a couple of names is good, like Kaiser Chiefs or... OK. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs, Morrissey and Razorlight. Introduce them. OK. Oh, OK. Um, <coughs> um, yeah. You see, he's From over there to over here, and then you have to do this. Over there to over here, Morrissey! <laughs> do you like that? Sort of like a bad Chris Evans. Is this? That's not good, is it? No. But you're in the right sort of post. Hi, the Chiefs! Because <laughs> he does that and then w wheels himself away. That's a drunk half asleep. Can you teach me how to do that, please? You say all the way from behind that door over there. All the way from behind that door over there. The brilliant. The brilliant. Uh, what? What? Kaiser Chiefs. Kaiser Chiefs! <laughs> Have you heard Dominic's Jade Goody impression? Let's get fit and get dancing. <laughs> Dominic? Let's get fit and get dancing! Right. That's, you two uh, could have a conversation as Jade. How irritating would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Jade, are you a fan of John Coleshaw? Yes, huge. What do you What do you like about him? Everything. Everything. Who, who are the fav your favourite voices? Sven. Sven. I like a yeah. lot. Right, you when like a lot. Right. Who else do you like, Jade? I like Tony Blair. Tony Blair. Is he just an impression of Tony Blair? Ozzy. Ozzy. And yeah. Robbie. 
And Robbie, Robbie Williams. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> do, you, do you do impressions, Jade? No. Ronnie Corbett. So, good evening. So, Dominic Byrne was speaking in a very, very, very high-pitched voice indeed. Okay, now, That's this is Dominic's good. Ronnie Corbett. I do, I do, I do. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> he thinks that's good. I think it's all right, no? Can't well, believe you haven't heard these before. John's was better, again, I've got to say. I think you've got to find a, a more Ronnie Corbett catchphrase, like, so I said to the producer, no, I didn't, yes, I did. And then I said to my wife... <laughs> <laughs> OK, now do Jade again. You're good at this, John. Dominic, you should do this for a living. Do Jade again. Uh, hello? All right, now do Ronnie Corbett. So I said to the producer... No, uh, <laughs> why, have you, why have you made Ronnie Cobb a drunken pot? He sounds like James Hewitt. You're a ding dong. It's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, why have you done that? You've, you've turned him into uh, James yeah. Hewitt. Uh, Mike Tyson. Oh, I am absolutely, mo mo most, most, I'm, I'm the baddest man on the planet, Wannox Lewis, I'm going to knock him white out. OK, now here, let's hear yours, Dominic. I'm the baddest man. <laughs> Ronnie <Cobb. laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, it's uh, it's Radio 1, um, it's pff, 10 to 10. Uh, this is the drunk 2 o'clock in the morning pub version of Chris. Whatever. <coughs> Take over. <laughs> <laughs> you do rub your face like that. I know it's highly visual. That's very good. I don't get that impression at all. You do, oh, you Every, do? And, and John, the worst t time that John does it is in the pub when I'm like that. And I don't know I'm like that. It's and not. everybody around the table but me laughs. <laughs> And I've been known to go, I don't, I don't say anything like that. That's spot on, actually. You do, you do me. So I think when he does me, I hear that Ooh. as a rubbish Tommy Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> now, do, you, you Wogan, can you do Ken Bruce? Um, Rob Bryden can. He does a fantastic Ken Bruce. They're similar, though, aren't they? In technique, they're sort of, they, they've got a similar vocal style. Well, I suppose Terry Wogan is that sort of rhythm there. Mm. Well, yo, Ken Bruce is, I don't know, slightly a bit more clear, a bit more yeah. uh, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> but I don't really do it. So you don't need to actually say any words. No, you know, yeah, I know that. There's quite a few impressions where you don't need to say any words. Such as? Ronnie Corbett's on. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> similarly, Ken Bruce. Um, I can't think of any more at the moment. The Vernon K has texted me saying, can you do him? It's really easy to do real Vernon. Mm. Because real Vernon... As this Grinch just goes up like that, like that, when he rings, if he ever rings me, if he's in a good mood, he'll go, Hello, Big Ron! <laughs> I say, Mrs! <laughs> Unless he's had a row with Tess and she's kicked him out because she can smell alcohol in his breath. And he'll ring and I'll go to the phone and go, Hello, mate! And he'll go, Oh, yeah, all right. Like that. Very subdued Vernon. Hang on, Vernon's ringing now. Vernon, what do you want? You're on the air. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired this morning. <clears throat> I'm good. I feel awake, but I feel tired at the same time. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, this is like when you get to the office at work and you just spend the first half hour doing nothing and yawning. Mm. That's 7 to 7.30. <laughs> this morning it's been 7 till 9.30. But um, I can yawn with my Strange. mouth closed, which is great fun. What would you, you know the Sony Award? What was that for? Entertainment. Oh, entertainment award. If you notice, though, you're not, your nose yawns if you close your mouth and try and yawn. Your nose yawns for it. What it's are you funny. talking about? There's not much to it today. We're just kind of playing records and talking. Yeah. It's my favourite type of show. And then we go on holiday. I'm just not a holiday. It's not a holiday. Going, it's work, Germany. not a holiday. Right? Yep. Work, 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 work. By the way, I've bought an inflatable dolphin for the pool. One, two, three. International Radio 1. Auf Wiedersehen, Pets. Guten Tag. Um, and other German words. We're here, then. Yes. Good morning, everybody. And welcome to Germany. So, uh, we got here yesterday. Um, nice, safe flight. Everything was all great and groovy, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. And we are now in a... Like, it's like a holiday camp of chalets. So far, we're the only people here. I haven't seen anybody else. We are staying upstairs. The only bathroom is downstairs. So if you want a, you know, Jimmy in the middle of the night, mm. you've got to fill in a BBC risk assessment form <laughs> before you leave your bed so as to be fully insured in case of any accidents. It would be easier to get a hose pipe and just attach it to outside. It's, it's a tiny room with two beds 
uh, a settee and six chairs, right? <laughs> I've never seen so much furniture in all my life. It's like a viewing gallery. It's like the woman who's robbed Ikea in 1972. <laughs> I'm sure she hasn't. But then across the hallway from me, and when I say across the hallway, right, if, if I, you know... If he farts too loudly, he'll yeah. open our door. <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. But this way, if Dave walks, uh, wakes up with a bit of morning glory, when he opens my door, he'll open uh, you know. the window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, seriously, what a, what a beautiful image. But it's true. Oh. Yeah. So in there is Chappers and Dave, yeah. right, because Chappers is out here doing they, some work. They've got form, those two. They sleep together quite and a then, bit, yeah. And then downstairs is our um, our new friend, uh, Ben, Ben number two, right? Right. But what we haven't covered here is, as well on the whole Chappers issue is we are in beds which are clearly designed for no one over the age of nine. Um, <laughs> so he's kind of wedged in with his head against the wall and his feet against the backboard. Nice. Uh, with, a, with a child's dinosaur duvet cover. It's hard time to show. It's about where Dave's going to say. <sighs> Went up my nose. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 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 nice little sigh from you there, you're right. Yeah, I've been outside playing in the sun. Playing with what? Playing with myself. <laughs> and, playing with and the football. Right, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. You get better at those. Thank you. I'm finding it tough to hear them. <laughs> morning, Fat Boy Slim. Good morning. Morning. Yay! It's I can't normal. believe you woke me up just to give me abuse about my greatest hit. Hey, it's, it's not hey, abuse. It's not abuse. And it's I love the, the, the way how you... Not many people would get me up this Sunday morning. Well, I'm sure just me and, and Zoe. Just, just, just because I like you, I've got up this early. Nothing to say is, right, here we go. Uh, uh, the first game we had a p Paraguayan chicken stew. Right. The, uh, oh, what's the second one? We Trinidad. had jerk, jerk chicken and rice and peas, and we're having meatballs. Do you know, I've got to take him off. I have no idea what the bloody hell he's talking about. I just think we should eject while we can. While we can still see some land, I've pulled the ejector seat, and we're off, Dave. It's 7.19. In time. Every time I play that, <laughs> you know what you think of that? No. One moment in time by uh, Whitney. <gasps> Houston! <laughs> Houston, we have a problem. Yeah.